Mm. I got my notes up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey now, it's your boy PSA Sitch here for another Tuesday Tuesday stream with everyone's favorite driver of problematic cars, <laughs> Adam Friended. What's up? How you doing, Sitch? How is everyone? Good. Good. So we're joined today by two very special guests, Organized Chaos and Actual Fandom. Is, that, is it? It's Actual Fandom, right, Dan? Yeah, that's it. Okay. And well, uh, we're gonna, well, Organized Chaos' his name is Bob, and Actual Fandom's name is Dane. So right. So we're probably going to call him Bob and Dane. And I told them before the stream mm -hmm. got started that this, you know, we're going to try to have a good faith debate here. We're not going to try to own each other on the internet. Um, I have put together three questions and i just i want to ask you guys uh three questions they're not difficult questions we're happy to answer the questions too and i know you guys probably have questions for us you know obviously we're both content creators and and i i think we are more towards the um anti-woke side and you guys are maybe closer to the woke side and i i you know i don't want to get bogged down in terms at the moment uh, but we can, we can work those out. I just, I mute, I'm muting, I think Dane, because I think you got some background noise going Dane, but we'll, uh, we'll let you fix that up and then we'll get started. So well, I guess we need to sit. Do you want to say anything before we, before we get started, before I ask question one, maybe, uh, yeah. you, maybe you guys I do want to say something. Okay. Go ahead. I want to thank our surrogate father, daddy J Mac for giving us a hundred gifted memberships before the stream even started. Thank you so much, Jay. Incredibly generous. Yeah, That's Dane, Dane, you've got a lot of background noise. Yeah, I, don't I just, know. it's something outside the building here and I don't know. I mean, it's like a, I don't know, AC or something. Hopefully it'll go away pretty soon. Um, okay. If you could just, I can do. if you could just mute yourself while you're not talking, that'd be great. And Bob, yeah. I asked you to unmute yourself. Dane, do you want to, do you want to like introduce yourself or anything or was that that enough of an introduction for you? Um, yeah, uh, I kind of missed what you were saying because I was looking for what was the noise was, but uh, <laughs> okay, well, just yeah, I, give I'm Dane with Channel's actual fandom. Uh, talk about you know lifelong comics fan, film fan. Uh, I like to get into the uh, creation of that stuff, and and I also really like to uh, dispel myths and and false narratives. Okay, awesome. cool. And Bob, you want to say something? Oh yeah, no the the channel is organized chaos. I. Used to specialize, well, I, I still kind of do, specialize in comic book movies, doing lots of, uh, you know, movie verses, you know, fun stuff. And then I just kind of uh, stumbled into this uh, uh, fandom menace uh, comic skate stuff, and it's a lot of what I do now. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're happy to answer questions about that. I, like I said, I have three questions. I, I'll just start off with the first question here, and I direct it to both of you, okay? Are owls birds? uh bob <laughs> i'm don't even know what the point is uh yeah sure yeah oh okay good that's we don't want to give it away for, if dane doesn't know dane uh they, they technically are it's just like a different type of bird oh, okay. I forget, the, forget the type uh but i have learned about that at one great point. excellent yes what? okay fantastic so that's one you guys already look and we're all we're all in agreement here we all agree owls are birds okay yes we some people in the chat we don't need to name names. You know, you know who you are. Okay. Doomer. Uh, <laughs> so uh, question number two is, so is there any legitimate criticism against wokeness that doesn't automatically get you labeled a racist, sexist transphobe? So, and, and this is like in the context of movies and television. So it, if if you want to criticize a movie for what you would perceive as wokeness, is there is there any way to do that without getting labeled racist? Well, uh, first we we we're getting into terms now. Mm -hmm. What would you define as wokeness? Okay, uh, Sitch, do you want to read the definition of wokeness that we have? Do you want me to read uh, Helen's? Yeah, I think Helen's works. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if I agree with it hundred percent. If you want to get, why don't you, you can give her, or actually I should read it cause you can't read. Yeah. That'd probably be helpful. So, uh, 
So Helen but Pluckrose's where, where definition we, of wokeness. You disagree, wherever you disagree with it, yeah. you can go ahead and chime in. How about that? Well, it's kind of long, but mm -hmm. basically she says wokeness is the belief system which holds that all society is permeated by systems of power and privilege like white supremacy, patriarchy, imperialism, hetero, hetero cis normativity, fat phobia, fat phobia, ableism, but that most people cannot see these systems. This is the belief system that insists we are all unavoidably socialized into holding racist, sexist, homophobic beliefs as unconscious bias. It asserts that we need to be trained to see them, affirm our own complicity in them, and commit to dismantling them using the methods that people call themselves social justice activists or diversity, equity, and inclusion trainers. It does not generally focus very much on issues of socioeconomic class unless it is compounded factor in the oppression of people who are not straight white men. Now, I would sort of I, I agree with all that, um, but the way that I the kind of the shortened way that I look at wokeness and define it is essentially it's the idea that the principles of liberalism and uh, universal individual rights will not solve the problems of racism, sexism, transphobia in our society. And so we need to discard these liberal ideas and approach a more leftist approach to society. That's how I define wokeness. So uh, do away with individual freedom. Uh, well, individual in a... rights, individual liberty, right. um, things okay. of that nature. Is that, I mean, what uh, do you have a definition of wokeness that you use? Uh, no, because it's not a term I use. Uh, I, I, li I am literally just calling out things like bigotry when I see it. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. I don't see it as a wokeness thing because wokeness has become such a confused term. Even that huge definition right there, you went over so much stuff. It's like, what are we even talking about anymore? Like practically everything could be called woke under that definition. Um, um, so okay. this I, well, uh, I, we can specify I mean, a bit more. Can you give me an example of something you'd call woke? Well, I was going to say that like, I mean, even in, if you want to, you know, I, I don't really think that that's... <laughs> Uh, because woke originally uh, just meant a pretty specific thing in re in regards to the African American mm -hmm. community. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been around since like at least you know the early twentieth century. It was in a blues song, um, and, and like Bob, I don't use the word. Like the only time I end up saying it is whenever there's other people that you know accusing me of being woke because I said, "Hey, that's racist" mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, you know, and, and it gets thrown around to such a de degree that it. it I don't think most people are using it in the way that you're uh, talking. And even if, mm -hmm. like, if you're, we're talking about in a movie or a TV show, what you just described, a lot of it was a belief system. Um, and how how are we going to determine that something in a movie has a belief system and isn't just, you know, I don't know, treating individuals with respect? Right. Uh, and you talk no, about right. losing individual liberty and freedom, and it's like I I feel like it's the opposite of that. I feel like right. you're uh, by treating people with you know, respect and, and not like labeling with a broad brush and, or whatever that, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that actually gives more people uh, liberty. Yeah. I, I mean, you bring up an interesting point, which is like, yeah, originally the term woke from the early 1900s, it was really a, a term in the black community that meant to be aware of the dangers of racism. Very often it would be like, oh, if you're, you know, it's the early 1900s, and you're black and you're walking through an air like an like a neighborhood that was you know more of a white neighborhood it's like stay awoke stay woke you know be aware that like you know some white person come over and like try to hassle you or attack you or something um and then that kind of recently i think it's been kind of hijacked and evolved into this sort of anti-liberal uh ideology or this idea but i guess maybe a better question to ask then is so if you guys don't really have like a, a strong feeling what the term means what do you think other people mean when they say woke? Because I guess, you know, I have my definition of woke, but I think generally when everyone else uses it, they mean, they just mean like a general political correctness or an attitude of political correctness. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like I said, it gets thrown around so much that it, 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 I think it kind of destroys any point that somebody might have. Like, do I think that there are people on the internet who take, you know, uh, you know, positions of, of being against racism or whatever, like, to an absurd degree, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm also a white dude, so I don't know what it's like. Uh, but generally, I, I, I cringe at a lot of shit uh, that I see that I just, I don't think it's as harmful or as much of a, a threat as some of the uh, stuff coming from the right that I see, um, the far right, so to speak. And then, you know, I was always confused as to what people meant by woke until pretty recently when we covered this on, on stream, uh, when DeSantis had to actually legally define it. And uh, it really it just came off like, it's just basically anything that's not 
on the on the party line of kind of the GOP. Anything you know to the left of that mm -hmm. is wokeness, and they're trying to ban that. So it just kind of seems like a a catch-all buzzword to label everything that your you know political opponents believe under that, and and let's get get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see it used for typically online. Well, it's interesting if you read the um, the actual Stop Woke Act bill that they passed in Florida. If you read the the language of it, it basically aligns with, with my definition of woke being uh, advocating for anti-liberal principles. Because I don't know if you've ever read it. That just like I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to read unless you really want me to. But there's eight principles of things that can't be taught, and they're all just you know things that you would presumably agree with, like mm -hmm. you know members of one race, color, sex, or national origin. Uh, you can't teach this, by the way. You can't teach that one member of a race, color, sex, or national origin are morally superior to another race, color, sex, or national origin. Yeah, I don't, oh, I don't, when when is it being taught they're superior? Well, I don't know. I would hope not. That's the point, right? Yeah. Well, well I mean, when is that even happening? Like you're addressing something that, that's not even really happening, except maybe in fringe cases. Well, what, what's okay. being taught is actually that whites are inferior. So they're... Well, These not other people are. But yeah, where's, where's, I mean, I would really need to see. Yeah, a yeah I, I missed that class. Where, where, look, man, I'm where white. did that happen? If I started hearing that, I'd get nervous. You well, know the, con I mean? the, con yeah. the concept of whiteness means that, you know, white people are inherently racist. And in our society, racism is obviously whoa, whoa. evil. Wait, the concept of whiteness is inherently racist? What, what is this? No, I've the concept never of, heard this The before. concept of whiteness means that white people are inherently racist. So it basically creates a stereotype of white people that they are racist. And I, I hope you agree that in our society, being labeled a racist is a terrible thing. Um, it is. I mean, it can be a terrible thing, sure. But I think, did you say the word evil a minute ago? Um, that's something that I've, I've no, addressed. I, I didn't, uh, no, I didn't say evil. I said. Okay. I'm, I misunderstood then. But I mean, I, well, I have talked to race, some people. Ra I said racism is evil. Yes. Do we right. disagree on that? Uh, yeah, I disagree that racism is evil. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I, and I've I, talked about okay. this before, like, you know, bigotry, racism, all these things are just collection of biases. For example, I grew up in the deep South mm -hmm. uh, in a very again, racist culture mm -hmm. uh, where like the N words thrown around in my household pretty, you know, regularly and stuff. Um, I had some pretty cringe views and, and uh, it's definitely said racist shit in the past. If, if racism was evil, then I would just be forever evil and there's nothing I can do about it. But no, it's a collection of biases that once you become aware of them and you can, you go, oh shit, I, you know, didn't have the, the frame of reference or context to understand things from this point of view, I can work on that. And, and, you know, it really is just a matter of self-improvement. Um, that's, well, that's I, I, you know, I think people can, can be racist and then, you know, get past it and then not be racist. I said racism itself is evil. Oh, so, I absolutely. You know. Acting on, look, it depends on if we're talking about a, like if I held a bunch of views on race uh, being racist, which I did, and I never acted on them, then I mean, it was just me having some shitty thoughts in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I were to act on them, or if somebody were to explain to me, hey, this is actually, uh, you know, these types of things are, are uh, uh, harmful, just to, uh, to people that you, you don't understand their lived experience, then I continued to do it and even more so if I just like arrogantly remained ignorant and just defiant against that information yeah it'd be kind of shitty of me and it's I just think evil is a word that, that throws this whole thing out of whack and you know puts some kind of metaphysical mm -hmm. judgment on it that's not quantifiable and we well, should just right. mm -hmm. you just what? mean Adam when you say evil you just mean it's an immoral action yeah it's something that you shouldn't do it's wrong right um so you know let's get back to the question and we can differ on the definition of of woke. Obviously, we wanted to give you the definition that we are using, and I understand that other people use the de the word differently. But I think just you know for the purposes of a debate, it's important to know how we are using well, it, and other people how other people use it is not necessarily important. Go ahead. Maybe Sid. maybe a way to ask the question would be. You know, when because there's a, you know there's a lot of YouTube content where people complain about movies and TV shows being woke, you know, obviously, and is is like levying that criticism of as something being woke. Does that automatically make the criticism you know racist or sexist or transphobic criticism, or can that criticism be levied in a way that's actually legitimate? Yeah. So if you like, let's say you're uh, criticizing She-Hulk and you don't use the word woke, but obviously you're you're criticizing it in a way that is uh 
You know, how, how do you criticize that without being charged of being anti-woke? Well, all you have to do is criticize, you know, maybe, uh, you know, story points you dislike, um, writing. There's all, like, it's standard film critique stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you can criticize She-Hulk all you want. But, like, if you're throwing just words out, like, woke, it, it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. Like, well, uh, he said without using the word woke, though. So, I mean, I think uh, what you're saying is, yeah, like, if yeah, you're, but, you're just saying that um, if, the, if the show... Like I don't like the this this stylization of She Hulk compared to the old one or whatever. Um, I mean, yeah, there's there's it's valid to criticize basically anything, I guess, if it's substantiated Absolutely. and and uh, you know and you're you're able to talk about it with. But at the same time, like there's a lot of people that are going to throw woke around as like a defense for stuff, even though they you know it's it's the internet. There's a, an example mm -hmm. of dumb people saying dumb shit on all sides. Um, and so, like, if you're just mm -hmm. expecting to never hear woke thrown at you, then uh, as a, or, or I'm sorry, as being bigoted uh, for whatever, then uh, I don't know, man. Uh, don't do it because I've gotten some shit thrown at me, some bizarre shit that has nothing to do with anything I've said or done, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from the right. And and I just kind of had to grin and bear it, man. Just, well, just oh, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, so like, you know, when, when someone says like a show is what, like, obviously, there's something like She Hulk, you know, you can point out a lot of you know story beats uh structural things that about the story that you don't like etc 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 um but usually when someone says something is woke the implication is that the story or the movie is embedding some kind of political message in it that uh, you know the person making the video finds you know distasteful or doesn't agree with so they just but, it's just okay but that's an interesting uh, issue, uh, thing though issue, like huh? Well, here's a question I have for you. What is what is then the political message behind She-Hulk? So I think when people were saying She-Hulk was woke, it was the sense that it seemed to be uh, an anti, have like an anti-male uh, ideas within the show. But would you consider that a valid criticism? Because there's plenty of positive male role models in that show. Like who? Like Daredevil, like Hulk, like a Pug, her co-worker. There's plenty. Well, I think... Daredevil is the only one I can agree with you. Hulk. So there's like the a lot of people like maybe, yeah. Well, I was going to say like in the first episode, which I think is what turned a lot of people off, you know, they have the whole scene where, you know, Bruce Banner, who's had to deal with, you know, this being the Hulk for 10 years so far in this mm -hmm. show and has to deal with all his anger issues, all this stuff. You know, he's trying to teach her how to basically be Hulk. And yeah. she basically given the ability to control it right off the bat and the excuse the show gives for that ability is the fact that by nature of being a woman and having to live in a sexist society, she's been able to control her anger where a man doesn't have to control his anger. Yeah. And, and so yeah. the thing about that in particular is seen is, you know, cause this is a common thing that I've, I've heard about that. And like when it happened, you know, I was watching and, and then I saw people getting upset about it. Like, Oh, she's, Oh, she can just automatically control her anger better. And I'm like, do you guys, not realize that at some point in this season she's going to you know this is going to be proven as hubris her mm -hmm. her being which that is exactly what happened her, which is exactly what I, like the left next to last episode she fucking hulked out and went nuts and it's like it's you know it which is bizarre to me because like tony stark is al allowed to be you know to be overconfident and arrogant mm -hmm. and then have his arrogance bite him in his ass and that's like just a character mm -hmm. uh a trait i suppose but when it comes to her it's uh, nope, not allowed. And but another thing on the, uh, the uh, Tony the Stark is thing. his arrogance. Though is he's not saying like all men can do this kind of thing. He's saying I am, you know, I am great at doing this type of thing. Well, she Hulk is literally well, saying yeah, like, but... all women have to, you know, control their anger in this way. Okay. So it's a much more well, political I mean, message. But, but the That's, show, the, moral, though, the, the point of the show was that she was wrong in that moment. She didn't have all under control, and she needed to listen to Bruce a bit more. That's the point of that moment. And I also just reject the idea that a, that a woman's perspective is political. Um, well, no, it, w it wouldn't be the because she's a woman, the perspective is political. It'd be by making it based on, like, all women have X quality and all yeah. men have X quality. That would be the well, I mean, I don't think it was making such a, uh, you know, declarative, like, uh, statement in, in that way. That well, it's... I mean, she framed it that way in that scene. Um, but but the, it's interesting that you said that you think that that the audience is supposed to take that as her being, you know, egotistical or having yeah, hubris that's, because that's exactly how it was supposed to be taken I don't, because it's the beginning well, of her arc. Mm -hmm. 
See, but I, I would that would be see if that was the case. I think that would be interesting for her character. I don't agree that that was the intention of the scene. Um, because then why why did why did it show? So it was just written, and they they forgot they wrote that scene, so that whenever it, later on she did Hulk out and go nuts in public. Yeah, but she, that would... Well, when you say Hulk out, so let's compare. You know, you're talking about an episode was a nine, I forget, where she like punches the TV uh, eight, screen. That's what you're talking about, yeah. right? Yeah, she yeah. scared everybody so, out of the thing. Right. So I think there's a substantial difference between like. You know, she gets angry because someone's going to, you know, post a revenge porn uh, video of her and she punches the TV screen and kind of loses control for a couple, you know, seconds or a minute. And you compare that to like the Hulk who before he was, you know, merged with Bruce Banner, he was just like literally couldn't really even talk or barely talk, would attack friend and foe, was completely blinded by rage. And was just like this rage monster to me. I mean, these are two completely different things. Well, they they are, so, but not for but for other reasons. Because for one thing, she didn't have nearly the gamma dose that he did. I mean, maybe you know, I don't know if I think it mentions this kind of offhand, but like I'm a, a old school comics fan, so it mm -hmm. comes off clear to me. Like he he got blasted with a, a huge dose of gamma, and she got a blood or a little bit of blood. Right. Uh, another thing is that like the trauma thing you mentioned about her everything he'd been through. It's so, uh, you know, I've got some experience in, uh, you know, trauma recovery, trauma counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's weird when people try to like measure trauma. Like it's really bizarre to me because, you know, two people can have the exact same thing happen and, and one of them take it one way and the other take it right. the other. And it can be much more debilitating for one or the other. Um, so it's like it, it was weird to me when people saying that just because he'd had certain things happen or or whatever that he was just inherently going to have more pro i don't know it, it's just a bunch of weird claims that weren't made in the but text that was her claim though, uh -huh. in the scene that was literally her claim that well, the trauma the, the of being a woman that, granted her control but again we're talking about the beginning of her arc we're not and it was also She's not, not the trauma right. it was not the trauma it was the fact that she had to do she's Look. had to deal with repressing uh you know certain and you talk to women man i've, I've mm -hmm. talked to several of them they mm -hmm. said yeah that's that's similar to you Look, know they've, they've I, been sexually uh, harassed a lot and you know what i mean it's it is something yeah, that you I look, look i have a i have a question crazy woman. you have to look, kind of I, push I have a question for you so sure. she do, like a clear way to see that it's political is that she's espousing a belief like she's espousing a belief that the world is a certain way and treats women a certain way. Like if mm -hmm. the scene played out where she said, listen, I'm used to dealing with anger because I'm a Christian and Christians always face massive amount of anger and hatred in society. You would obviously say that's a, like, that's a political statement, right? No, well, I mean, why, why, I would not use why are we equating a way a person is born to a belief a person chooses? Right. Well, also, I just don't know why, like, where this 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 default mode of like political bad, uh, as if their politics well, that's didn't a, exist that's a completely in media different, prior to a few. That's years a ago. completely <laughs> different argument. Yeah, right. We weren't saying political. Well, we hadn't got to the point of whether polit political messaging in TV shows was was good or bad. It was just I said originally that kind of got us on the sidetrack was. When people said she hulk was woke they were talking about what they perceived as politics that they disagree with ingrained in the show right as, as the same way as you know if, if somebody forced you know christianity into the show the hulk you would have a bunch of people online going oh my god the christians are trying to convert people the christians I mean, are I'm trying sure that to like would be but i personally yeah. would be like this has nothing to do with anything in the comics that has mm -hmm. come before and i don't like this because of that whereas like the show Pretty much nailed it. Uh, it's one of the most accurate adaptations uh, well, in the MCU. May maybe because the the politics are kind of invisible to you in the same way that they're, you know they're not invisible. I mean, not in the way I just think that they're not invisible. I just I see what you are describing as politics, and I just mm -hmm. see it as something. Uh, it's a different perspective that's not historically been uh, front and center in in popular media, and that's really the distinction uh, that's being called political, in my view. Um, and, and somehow that's a bad thing. So. I guess the question is, is it fair then? So if someone says, you know, I don't like that scene in She-Hulk um, where she gives that, you know, quote unquote feminist speech to Bruce about why she's able to control her anger, which first of all, I would disagree with factually. It doesn't even make sense because men have to, men literally as the view, as people view men as being the ones that commit uh, dangerous acts, physical violence, have to learn to control their anger. I believe far more than women do. But so putting that all aside, um, 
is it legitimate or fair for someone to criticize that scene as being a woke scene? Well, uh, that, um, we haven't even agreed to a definition of woke yet. Right. So uh, and it's just we're not. Yeah. Like, well, we, we, don't, hold is... on. we don't need to <laughs> agree to a definition of woke. You have a brain. You're using it. You sure. know our definition of woke. When well, we so say my, woke, my, you my know what we mean. My thing on that is that I think that if you, regardless of whether it is woke or isn't woke, mm -hmm. we all know that the, we're, the reason we're even debating the word is because it's a very loaded and, and uh, you know, uh, disagreed upon definitions so well, like using we don't, that word we don't need okay, to get, so we don't need to debate the definition of the word that's not the point i'm making that's not the point so so using so that word woke. and expecting people to just kind of understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. and to not get any kind of you know uh, pushback on it is it's undermining your own attempt at criticism so just using it is not wise honestly well, well okay but there's a difference between like so if someone's talking about she hulk and they say oh the scene is woke you know they say that and then they explain their problem with it and then you say, well, I think they shouldn't use the term woke because, you know, it's too broad a term. It means too many things. It kind of uh, undermines their criticism, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, OK, I mean, you can that's fine. You can say that argument. I don't I agree to an extent that woke the term is very broadly used and is used to mean, you know, a lot of different things. Um, but I guess I guess the, the what we're getting at here is it seems like just by calling something woke or by criticizing a scene like that. You get labeled as a sexist or a bigot just for calling something out that's political that you don't agree with or like. Well, because well, there he, are pretty he, terrible people that that are obviously, you know, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that you saying it's woke is going to make. I don't personally jump to just accusing anybody of that. I do tend to look at the mm -hmm. supporting information that they offer if they say something like that. But when it's become so ubiquitous with certain people that are very clearly, you know, uh, pushing a uh, you know anti-woman. Uh, uh, agenda, so to speak, or or whatever it is, then then yeah, it's it's easy to understand why it would get uh, some you know less less considered uh, minds uh, you know kind of reacting poorly to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know that's why I say just like yeah. why even use the word if you're going to make a criticism about it being you know something about the the way that she you know portrays women's struggles or whatever, then just talk about that. In my opinion, like yeah. uh, and that's fine. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Uh, uh, to to quote Dane quite literally, woke is not a valid criticism. If you have a criticism, you know, give me your criticism. But if you just say woke, it, it, again, it doesn't mean anything because it's just become this blanket term that just means whatever we don't like. Well, I mean, I mean if we're going to get I, into like whether or not it's okay to say a certain person using it, uh, it w followed by nuanced, uh, you know, supporting information. Well, I would need an example because at that point we're just like kind of. Sure. Phantoms. But I, I mean, I would argue that calling someone in today's in today's world, unfortunately, I'd argue that calling someone bigoted or racist is basically as useless as calling something woke in terms of that the term. Yeah, been so I mean, it's gotten it's it's, it's kind of like mm -hmm. that. It's also uh, but not always uh, it, it. It's unfortunate, right? Like it's unfortunate that our discourse has gotten to this point when words that, you know, criticisms that are valid. Uh, maybe there is some heavy handed, you know, political or, you know, social messaging in some piece of media. I'm sure mm -hmm. I would agree that there is somewhere. Um, but like it's to the point where we can't even really have these these discussions about these things because of the way that these words have been weaponized. Another one, you know, this is really fucking fucked up. Sorry. I hope it's OK to cuss. You can cuss. Um, like groomer. Oh, fuck. I don't, oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you got people using that shit left and right just for mm -hmm. whoever does something they don't like when it's like. That undermines. You're not a groomer, right? <laughs> no, no, uh, man. Just, uh, just to, you know, you know. I don't think uh, anybody sure. would. Uh, yeah, but no. Uh, point being that uh, uh, it, it undermines people's uh, that are actually fighting against legitimate, you know, sexual exploitation. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it it sucks. We don't. I mean, I don't randomly call people groomer. So I didn't say you did. Yeah. The, I, I, mean, I just kind of just we're, we're, brought it up as if. <laughs> well, you, no, you brought it up. What are you talking about? You, no, you said you asked that, me if I. No, you asked me if I was a groomer. Which well, you know. yeah, because you brought it up, and I just wanted to make sure you know that we're. Well, that's all, what I mean. You proved my point. I can't even sure talk no about the, the the situation without well, someone is, bringing it up as like a suggested accusation. Well, you, but right. you brought it up. You're the one that brought it. I didn't bring it up. Like I like. Well, it, it, it was just an example. Just and, ask somebody. Yeah, and people look. People people are mean to other people on the internet. I get that. I just, huh. we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, Sitch and I might want to do some reviews of some movies that we think, you know, have a feminist agenda in them. And I'm wondering how we do that 
without getting labeled an instaphobe, right? A, a transphobe, a, a sexist, a, a racist. You probably a don't, because you know it doesn't well, matter it, how it, well your arguments are, you just, are formed or how sourced yeah. your information is. There's going to be some dipshits on either side, all sides, that's going to accuse you of something. So, like, if you're just looking to never, well, yeah, but we're ta we're like talking to, to you. we're talking to well, you. We're t we're trying to f determine when. You know, the switch flips for you and you say, OK, this person is definitely a racist. Like what? I would need what has happened? It's it's repeated patterns of behavior. It's yeah. what I see. OK, like what? There's some just... obvious examples, like calling it the MCU, for example. Mm -hmm. But like right. for the most part, just repeat behaviors. Well, hold, hold on a my, second. My radar if, goes off. Hold, hold, hold on one second on the MC, on the MCU about something thing. That they're talking one, about. one on the MCU thing. Do do you acknowledge that feminism is like an ideology? What uh, no, okay, what really. do you mean by ideology even? I well, believe men and women Christi should be treated look, equally. Christianity is an ideology. Uh, you know, Judaism so is are an you, ideology. Are you arguing uh, feminism is a religion because if you are then absolutely not, I disagree. Well, communism is an ideology and that's not a religion. Socialism is an ideology. Idealism is an ideology. Is, is feminism an ideology? Is it a set of beliefs that somebody, uh, you know, believes and it, it, it changes how they interpret the world? Yeah, Look, sure, if, I would agree with that. You, you agree core, with like, it. Here's the definition. Uh, at its core, feminism is the belief that full social, economic, and political equality for women, you know, should, should happen. Uh, and I agree with that. I, I, that to me just seems like a, a pretty well. The, the, no brainer, hold hold on. Know, the difference they're... the difference of opinion is where we're at in that struggle. That's that's where the difference of opinion comes in. Obviously, like well, wait, 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 wait. There's actually a, a more important difference, which is that you know your the definition that you just levied, uh, you know, laid out for feminism. That's kind of like the second wave liberal definition of feminism, like the more you know intersectional woke third wave fourth wave feminism is more about the idea that you know we live in a society that was constructed by males specifically white males for white males and that there's all these like you know subconscious implicit uh patriarchal sexist tendencies embedded in our society that are basically invisible or impossible to essentially root out and that's kind of where you know well, feminism the, is today was it not created by white men yeah. Uh, that's, that's well, what I hold on. Let's yes, not. But wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Let me finish. Okay. Yeah, obviously, but that doesn't mean that there is some sort of implicit bias in favor of white men rooted into all aspects of society or the law. No, I don't think that the the fact that it was built by them is is it implies that it was. But I think that you know, just a, a thorough analysis can show that there's. Look, I can point out how I've benefited from just being a white dude. In, you know, like whether it's legally or or just socially or whatever it's it's uh it seems pretty clear to me but yeah, but that's fine you can disagree with sort of you know modern intersectional feminism mm -hmm. but that's that's their belief system yeah well, here, we're just me. we're just saying look i'm just asking you to accept that it's an ideology if there's a christian movie i'm sure you've seen mm -hmm. movies like left behind which obviously have a christian message they have an ideology that's affixed to the movie do you do okay. you agree with that well let's let's clear up some stuff okay so my view of that feminism is simply the idea that men and women should be treated equally and that's it that's it period okay mm -hmm. what do you is there anything there you disagree with no no not at all of course not. yeah okay we're in agreement fantastic um yeah, but the, the, so the like idea that maybe out, a movie but as sitch pointed out there's a different ideology that's this third wave feminism ideology that views the world as if men are oppressing women today okay. i mean okay, but i i not don't men care are about that. Women. i already told you my ideology look the, the, uh, and the well, I mean, what we're trying to get to is the mcu right that's what we're getting at yeah, like, the, the MC, show, MC. this is why somebody this, look, this is, is why somebody might call it the mcu in the same way that if marvel started making christian movies they might call it the m christ you well but the, the, well, do you need to point, can you point out how how we know that this this ideology is what is driving you know uh, uh, having more women front and center in the MCU or whatever that like that there's a big leap there from this specific ideology that you just described to just 
uh, the Black Widow movie or to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Ant-Man and the Wasp or whatever. Well, yeah, I think, um, so I, I think, I think a lot of the, well, the MCU stuff, I think that started kind of obviously with Captain Marvel and I think it kind of continued the view of it continued with, uh, uh, WandaVision, um, which, um, well, actually before I get into that, I, I want to ask you a question, Bob, but let's put a pin in that cause I want to come sure. back to that for a second, which is that when you were kind of laying out your definition of feminism and how you define it, um, mm -hmm. which I mean, we, uh, I agree with that, not defining fem feminism currently that way, but I agree with the concept that you're laying out that men and women should be mm -hmm. treated equally. I think part of the problem in these conversations is that, you know, someone on somewhere in the internet says, you know, feminism is bad and they mean something completely different than what you mean when you say, you know, feminism is good. Okay. And do you think that's happening? And so like, so then you, you see someone, I'm about sure feminism there are, and there's and probably plenty. Like, there's probably plenty of instances where people, you know, take feminism too far or, you know, take it to a place I disagree with. I'm literally telling you my, how I view it. Is, and, uh, Bob, is it simply okay? men and women should be treated equally? Right. Mm -hmm. And we we agree with that. But is it do you agree mm -hmm. with the other ideology that Sitch laid out? Would you criticize that ideology? The the fact that um, men are today oppressing women? Well, it's more complicated than that. Uh, I, I would disagree I with mean, the framing of it that way. Like the Yeah, it's a weird framing. Sitch read it. There's sure. it's <laughs> talking about a social system. Uh, as you're saying it, it's just men are replaced or oppressed. And it's like I'm not literally mindfully. I'm sure you're not either. You guys seem like nice guys. It's Valentine's Day. We don't want to oppress any women today, anyway. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're not like this is going out of, of our way to, <laughs> uh, to oppress any women. But like, you know, mm -hmm. our our systems set up in a certain way. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, so you there's... don't you? It sounds like you don't agree with that ideology either. No, Dan, no, Dan, wait, no, no, no. So I guess the question is, do you uh, do you agree that society is currently set up in a way to oppress women? Do I agree? What I'm sorry, say it again. Do you, do you agree that society, or do you believe that society is currently set up in a systematic systematic way to oppress women? No, I don't agree with that. Because the way you're describing it is that that's the intention. Is it set yeah. up? Too? And I'm saying like, no, I don't think that was why it was set up. I just think that it is an effect of having been established, as you guys agreed with, by you know men, and then just kind of played out that way for so, centuries. And now here we are, and we're able to look and go and go. So, wait a second. so it's not intent. So you don't think it's intentional, but you think it's incidental. Yeah, essentially. Okay. Oh, absolutely. So, so, but, okay, so you agree with that, Bob? Because that is a big component yeah. of you know uh, what I would call woke intersectional fe uh, feminism, is that these systems are in place, whether intentional or not. True. Okay. All right. Um, well, well, yeah, we're just, we, I mean, we, were, yeah. we were talking about the MCU. Can you yes. can you give oh, me yeah, examples just, where right. somehow feminism is like taking yeah, over the MCU? Right. So so I think mm. with uh, WandaVision, to me is kind of a, a good example. Um, and I obviously, I think this is part of the problem with the political discourse is that, you know, everyone becomes very sensitive towards either, you know, wokeness or they become very sensitive to racism. And so they kind of look for it everywhere. I mean, it's kind of this, you know, obviously this started with, you know, I hate to, I hate to hearken back to the dark days of the internet and, and name, she who should now be named, uh, Anita Sarkeesian saying, you know, every, there's uh, racism and sexism everywhere and our job is to, you know, find it. I think people kind of have that lens when it comes to looking for racism, looking for wokeness and everything. And so it can uh, cloud people's uh, views. But I think Captain, not Captain, I think uh, WandaVision uh, is, an, is a good example of people seeing wokeness in it. Because, you know, they would look at the show and they'd say, okay, you have a show where basically the male characters who are more stereotypically masculine are portrayed as evil you know you have the evil masculine uh, military general guy even though he's technically doing the right thing he's trying to stop uh you know wanda who's basically being completely evil and then the men that are considered more good are classically i hate to use these terms but are more stereotypically you know passive or or female in terms of kind of their uh, characteristics and the the way that the show basically coddled uh wanda and they even had like a character, I forget her name, it was uh, uh, the Captain Marvel character's daughter, uh, you know, enter in the show and basically make excuses for the fact that Wanda is, you know, basically being a horrible villain, mind controlling, you know, all these people and inflicting horrible pain on them. And when this is called out by the show, the show gives this excuse in the dialogue of like, well, you don't know how much Wanda has lost 
you know, as an excuse. And it seems like there's like just this weird attitude towards, you know, gender roles in some of the MCU properties that I think people are picking up on. I, I would kind of disagree with a lot of that. Read. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a weird read of one of which I've actually never heard that read before. So it's, I, I have a little a bit, I, I mean, I, I kind of got into it with somebody about it, but like the, the idea that, you know, it, no, I don't think that the show excuses what she's done. It, the show, and very clearly no. when you follow up with Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness, it, that was just the beginning of this arc where she's, going you know she's losing it she lost it dude like she is the villain in doctor strange that was yeah, just kind I'm, of the I'm not saying with that obviously but that's a different um, writer different director but i mean it was the but plan it, it was the plan from the I mean beginning. wandavision like, was pretty much set up to be like her villain origin story almost right and, and also it, you know it's like to, to say it's evil i don't you know if you want to call it that that's that's a way to judge well, it well i know you don't like, like the word evil but immoral you know whatever word you want it's definitely immoral definitely immoral oh, definitely yeah. fucked up. i don't think the show at all or anybody is excusing that she mind controlled a bunch of people and stuff like that i think it, what it was doing was approaching it with a sense of empathy for her uh mental state which is different than if she was just was literally evil it like evil and deciding i'm gonna fucking do this evil shit you know what i mean like there's there wasn't like a villainous intent it was she didn't fully understand what she was doing and then once she did she was just kind of so lost in it and like i think that that's actually a reflection of how sometimes people with mental health issues are treated in the real world i think that's more what it was commenting on than any kind of gender thing uh and also vision you know vision he, he was kind of just moping around a lot when he was in the show but at the end he had a badass fight with the other vision so I, I don't. I don't agree that he was just like uh, not doing anything manly or whatever. But he's a robot, so maybe it shouldn't apply. I don't know. Well, uh, yeah. Well, so it's interesting because I feel like what happens is, you know, they have the, you know they had the line that uh, Monica's character, uh, you know, gave kind of defending Wanda, which seems very bizarre to me. It seemed very bizarre to a lot of people watching the show. And then we sure. kind of had the situation with She Hulk, where she gives the line. And it's interesting because you guys see this as like, maybe She-Hulk's a better example. You guys see it very clearly as the writers saying, you know, She-Hulk is wrong to say this line about she doesn't need to learn to control her anger because of, you know, being a woman and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And the show's going to prove it wrong where, you know, I don't see it that way. I think the person, I think when they wrote that line, they literally believed that line. And the first is part, part, I think, is true. Well, what, what what does that matter? Because the show is literally like the part of her arc is that she was wrong. So what does it I matter what a writer really intended? I mean, I wouldn't classify. I, maybe we have a difference of how we look at arcs. I would define arcs generally as like a it has to span the entirety of the season. This is like the problem that the character is dealing with. Where with her, I mean, she really only had some anger problem in like literally the second to last episode. Is, well, is the problems me... that she dealt with were different, were throughout the, I mean, it's not the it's problem. That was then, one that right? was kind of planted narratively. I'm a writer, so I can speak mm -hmm. a little bit to this. Like, it was a, a thing that was planted to kind of just be under the surface until it happened later on while she was dealing mm -hmm. with all kinds of these other yeah, problems. That's not a, but well, well, see, to me, that's not an arc. That's, and I don't even see that how that is like a part of Well, I mean, arc. right it's now we're arc. talking about, like, TV series and movies, which there mm -hmm. is a difference. Uh, She-Hulk was told is more, uh, it wasn't as much serialized as we've gotten used to TV series being. But, it was more episodic. While there well, before, were elements spread throughout, we it was much more the, episodic. Before we move on from the particular scene that we're using as an example, is is your criticism of She-Hulk as, you know, this was a foreshadowing of her future arc and Sitch's criticism of She-Hulk that this was the writers inserting their own political ideology into the screenplay, is, is his... Uh, criticism sexist and your criticism is not sexist i wouldn't say that i would say yeah i, mean, I won't say that I'm, either I'm, mm -hmm. I'm weird on this stuff like I, I tend to you know get called woke and all this mm -hmm. stuff but like i approach it from a, uh, more of a, a fact-based like i have the only evidence that i have on what the intention of that was is what i understand about narrative what i understand about the comics what i understand about you know uh, what happened on the screen, right? So, I think so that making his, a claim so, about, can I, mm -hmm. can I finish my point? Making a claim about uh, what the intentions of the writers are, unless mm -hmm. we have them saying, this is what our intentions were, is to push this agenda or whatever, then I, I just think that's a kind of How, okay, okay, so that is, so you're saying that is not legitimate criticism. It's not legitimate for a, a film critic to postulate 
that the writers were inserting their own political ideology into the movie. I wouldn't say it's not valid. I just well, I don't agree with it. That's all. Well, if again, if you're uh, critiquing a piece of art, you critique that piece of art. Uh, honestly, what the writers intended, like it might be a fun Easter egg, but at the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter. You're critiquing well, it comes the up art. all the time, though. I mean, obviously, in film criticism, everyone always critiques, you know, the intentions of the writer and whether or not they succeeded. Uh, like that's standard mm -hmm. film criticism. Well, I would say regarding the scene, whether. Well, you... I mean, but when you're talking about whether or not they succeeded, you're talking about the art overall as a piece. Well, right. I, and so I in the end, when you're talking about something like that, you're talking about the art. We're right. just so trying I've... to find out what film criticism, like, inspires you to label people racist, sexist, homophobe. That's what we're trying to get to. That's a really. It wouldn't be any here. one thing. Like just one example from somebody would not. Uh, yeah, I personally wouldn't. But I mean, if you're asking us to just defend the general left, well, and if, these, if yeah, we're not going to do that, if the criticism is that an ideology that you agree with and like being in various movies like Christians like their ideology in movies um if if other people are disagreeing with that ideology and criticizing the movies based on that ideology they're going to do it over and over and over again because it's a persistent problem so th therefore you're going to label so, them racists okay so you're talking about like i've already we've already laid out and we've agreed uh my point of view of feminism is that men and women should be treated equally, and we've agreed that's good. So what part of that ideology do you have an issue with being in media? We don't. Yeah, not okay, that then, one. Okay, then give me an example where it's anything else. Well, I, I did. It was a She-Hulk example. Yeah, men, men are oppressing but, but there's women. plenty of positive examples of men in she-hulk no, i understand there, okay but no, you said give, not, the example but... was the scene this example was the scene of her saying the, the explanation of why she can control mm -hmm. her powers yeah and, and that's not have the beginning to of her arc well okay but we disagree on that this is an arc because to me as i said an arc is something that exists throughout a season not something that is happens well, in episode thing, one though. and then half episode this is more episode wait wait wait, wait, wait and then completely disappears from the show. She never has anger issues until one episode where she has an anger issue, and then it doesn't ever okay. come up so or even resolved at, by the character at, at the end it, of the that's season. That's just her arc. Then yeah, that's that's not doesn't make any sense. It's part of several things that were set up yeah. as far as like does she want to be an Avenger? Uh, is she in control of this? Like there were several things that the the first and maybe second episodes established that she was going to be juggling throughout the season so it's like just zeroing in on that one as if that her was her entire arc isn't you know isn't uh, accurate yeah and also like uh why is it still we still haven't gotten why it's the mcu because i mean you kind of yeah. walk back i i explained it i totally explained it I, wait 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 we're giving examples. What do you mean? I don't right, but I'm just saying MCU that. would imply that it's like a big problem all over the place, and it's like every movie or whatever, and it's like this. I'm just well, not seeing I, I that. Think, I think I think the ideology the is an ideology that you agree with, and therefore it's invisible to you. And other people who disagree with the ideology are pointing it out because it's being I, used to basically indoctrinate people. I don't agree with the ideology. But, I agree with perspectives like, being part of story, man. And these are perspectives. Characters are, uh, you know, perspectives, and they should be. They always have been. A writer puts their perspective or a team of writers has their perspective, you know, filtered through a character and then that plays out, you know, how it plays out or whatever. But like if, if uh, it's just more noticeable, I think, lately, because there has been more effort to, you know, have women uh, writers and, and focus women characters, which historically hasn't been, you know, a priority for a lot of uh, Hollywood. Sure. There's nothing wrong with uh, wanting to have women writers or directors. I don't think that's I mean, that's not an issue that I'm talking about. It would be the yeah, in putting great. in. It would be putting in politics that I disagree with, which is why we were heavily focusing on the uh, She-Hulk scene, which... Well, I mean, is everything is politics, man. Like, you know, everything is, is connected to politics in some way. Like, just the Avengers as an, as a, uh, an idea is political. Uh, you know, it's just... Right. Yes, but, but it's connected to a broader political ideology of liberalism. And when I say liberalism, I mean like, you know, John Locke, liberal, classical liberalism, not like, you know, Democrats, um, that America kind of exists under and we all sort of agree, well, not every one of us, you know, obviously fascists and socialists don't agree with liberalism, but that the general public agrees with. And it's when you start implementing political ideas that are outside the norm, which I would consider kind of the intersectional feminist approach, I would say it is anti-liberal, 
that's when I sort of go, hmm, I don't think we should be putting this in our media. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily know for sure that that's right, that yeah. like the majority of people so, would disagree. I think the so majority you, of people think... would disagree. One second, Bob, I'm sorry. I think most people okay. would disagree yeah. with the way these things are often framed. Mm -hmm. But I think if you laid out the, you know, the terms, it, how they are, and ex explained them to people, and they were actually paid attention and listened, they go, oh, yeah, that's actually not a big deal. But this stuff has been like built up to be some kind of social demon uh in a lot of ways and a lot of you know there's leftists that make it look real fucking bad too don't get me wrong but mm -hmm. uh generally i think so, it's really just about respecting people's fucking lived experience and their you know and hey I, I respect who you are it doesn't take a lot of effort for me to uh you know to uh, kind of just start with a base of respect and then if you lose that respect that's on you but yeah go ahead bob sorry well, Sitch, I just had mm -hmm. to address this because you brought up how that you know maybe certain things shouldn't be in media. So, are you arguing a pro censorship stance right now? Uh, yeah, I don't think like if the if there was a Marvel movie that was like pro Nazism, I would not be in favor of that. Well, yeah, there's not been a Marvel movie that's pro Nazism. I know. We're I'm saying. About, I'm saying. Yeah. So, we're th would that make me in about, favor of censorship? Like, yeah, if there was, then like I guess an it animal. would. If that was, you know, an example. So, <laughs> so I think what the we're talking about between. Uh, Stuff that's harmful and stuff that's not, and I don't think that I'm not that, a free, yeah. I'm not a free speech absolutist. I don't think anyone is. I think it's a I think it's a fantasy position. So I'll like, no one's going to be yeah, in favor right. of you know Marvel movie coming out in favor of like you know pedophilia or something. So yeah, right. I, I'm fine with you yeah. know certain levels. Of well, censorship. I mean, but this, that's different. Look, we can't just throw really, the things are different. Yeah, than other I mean, things. you're like, conflating pedophilia and being a Nazi is not the same as like a woman saying that hey, you know. I never said they. Wait, wait, wait. I never said that. The question was, am I taking well, you're a pro censorship the is position? Like, yeah. That's, well, that you're arguing question. that you would you're arguing that you would censor uh, look, Jen just no, espousing he's, he's, a woman's look, point of view. I'm getting my point across. You're dude. the one. You're the one. Wait, 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 wait. I want to hear. I want to hear Bob's full argument. Okay. Well, you're arguing that they shouldn't have Jen essentially just espousing her point of view as a woman. That they shouldn't have that. That's what you're okay. arguing. So, well, first of all, we have to remember this is a, a fictional character. So it's not it's not her yeah. point of view. It's the writer's point of view. Okay. And That's secondly, all any character is, is I, I understand. I'm yeah. just saying the, the way I'm just I'm taking a little quibbling with like kind of the way you phrased it. But um, I and I have, I have a problem with you phrasing it like I don't want there to be a woman's perspective. Right. That's a very loaded language. Like if there was a woman. I mean, who that's what you're just an, arguing, though. Well, no, it's not. I'm, I, have a, I have a problem with intersectional. Then why, why are you arguing? OK, why are you arguing that the gen scene shouldn't be in She-Hulk then? Well, he, he's and I he's just, not wait, arguing wait, wait, for wait, wait, censoring wait, wait, it. Wait, he's arguing wait, to critique me, it. Wait a minute. Well, first of all, no, yeah. he said it shouldn't be wait, in media. Wait, please. Okay. First of all, okay. we're talking okay. about, we were originally talking about like whether this was seen was given an example of whether there was politics in the show or not. Okay. That's the original thread that brought us down to this point that we were talking about. And, as I, and I was explaining the political ideology behind it. And you seem to be uh, disagreeing with whether it was political. And then we kind of went off into well, whether everything is political or not. And then whether everything political should be involved in the show. And then you said what I want to focus on, which I think is very important, is that am I saying that there shouldn't be a woman's experience be allowed in the show? And why, And so my question to that is, why do you think that women all have some sort of unifying experience that is being voiced in that uh, scene right there? Um. I mean, I don't oh, think well, that I'm... they do. Have, I don't think every single woman does. No, well, no, like but that's that is what Bob would. is implying when, when he asked me that question. All, all I am saying, listen, uh, Jen Walters is a woman. We can agree to this, correct? Sure. Hypothetically, we can we can she can say her life experience then. And it might be based on some woman's writer's life experience, but mm -hmm. she can, you know, do you have any problem with her expressing her issues? Uh, no, but I think it's sexist the way she expresses it. I, it's oh. important too, such to separate. Like he's making the implication that you want that censored out of the movie. No, you just want to be able to criticize well, it without being called a sexist. He, well, like I would that's prefer giantly that different. Be in media. I I would prefer if we didn't have intersectional world politics in Marvel and stuff. Yeah. Well, I don't know that. How how do you, how are you t taking the leap of that being intersectional woke politics from just her saying this is what women deal with when, like a lot of times, you know, you can. It's pretty easy to find women that that will tell you that that reflects some of their experience. You know what I mean? And even if not, even if not, why why can a woman in a character in a in a movie not have like a flawed perspective, right? Like, and I'm not. Well, wait a minute. That. She if, 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 like a, she could want if if that if what she said 
if the show is saying this is a flawed perspective, then I would applaud the show. Okay. And I don't, but I, it's the problem. I don't think it was supposed to so be. So you wanted to just hold your hand and like tell you what to think about things that it's saying? I don't know. That's kind of. Mm -hmm. The show, I, mean, I, I believe the show confirmed that as the perspective that is the, you know, the right way to then, think well, about Well, I mean, so, you're allowed to have that read. I, I completely disagree with that read, but you're allowed to have that read. Do you think that if most people had the read that it was, that you were supposed to realize that what she's saying is flawed? Don't you think that there'd be all this criticism against the show from the left? Probably. I'm just, I was just, that was more of a devil's, devil's advocate argument. My, I mean, mm -hmm. my question now is like, why are you're like assuming, I guess, that having so wait, a you, show. But you accept that it, that's not the read that most people interpreted from the show, including people on the left. I'm right? sorry. Repeat, repeat what you, it is. You because... accept that most people who watch that scene and watch Seahawk, so, whether they're on the left or the right politically or in the center, they interpreted that writing of the scene to be you are supposed to agree with Jen in that scene. I don't know that that's true. No, I don't. I can't so, speak for most people. And that's kind of the problem with this argument that we've had so far, in my opinion, is that we're mm -hmm. like kind of just being asked to to, to defend, like, like to tell you how you can criticize stuff without ever being called woke. And it's no, like, man, without yeah. you calling us woke. Well, not woke. I mean, racist, I'm sorry, not woke. Or anti -woke. Yeah. Yeah. Without right, you calling us racist. Without look, this is your personal experience. We're not asking you to tell us what other, the guy down the street thinks. We're asking you. Well, it depends if you if you mean uh, would I call you sexist or would I maybe say that this is like uh, you know an attitude that contributes to sexist ideas? You know, there, I, I yeah, tend but, to speak but, with a little bit more nuance than that. So yeah, but may, yeah, but here's the problem. Maybe maybe uh, you do, Dane, but. I, the way that Bob worded his question to me was very bad faith, was to say, why do you have a problem with a woman's experience? That yeah. implies that I'm have, committing a sexism. Yeah. It's probably not worded well, but I don't know if it's bad faith. I just like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Generally, I see where I you're mean, coming I'm, from. I'm... That like, if, it, it, I mean, I kind of agree, just let me think I had to phrase it. Like, why is it such a bad thing to have one woman character in a show express a uh, perspective like that? And is does that imply that you think that just having that exist is going to turn children into feminists or what? So um, uh, I don't think that having one character explain that in one you, show is going to turn the world into feminists. What's the problem? Hold, really hold, on, hold, on, the hold problem? on, hold on. We need to stop the, right here. We need to stop right no, here. But, no, but wait, no. Sitch, I, one second, a, one second. Because okay, the, 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 the accusation that you're making here is that you know, putting this kind of material out there could possibly turn people into feminist. Is that is that you're thinking for the reason to put it in the movies? No, no, I no, think the I reason think is just to I think the reason is to Jennifer's tell a story with characters yeah. that relate to people's perspectives. Maybe some women relate to that. Uh, and I'm sure I know a lot do, and I know that a lot don't, and that's okay. That's basically any movie, any show is going to have that. So you don't Character you don't think the writers are putting their politics into the movie to make people be more feminist? No. So let let me ask you this: What's like you keep on using the word politics? Can you explain the exact politics so, into mm -hmm. a woman explaining her point of view? Right, but we'll, what makes that inherently? I, I wanted political? to answer. I'll answer that, but I wanted to answer Dane's previous question before that, um, which was that. You know why I have a problem with the scene? I assume I'd be the same thing if if there was a scene where there was a male superhero who basically espoused some ideology that was basically you know some Andrew Tatian ideology about you know how women's places in the kitchen or you know whatever, and somehow this related to his you know life experiences and being a superhero, and the show never either implicitly or explicitly you know states that that's the wrong view, and it actually seems to imply that that's the correct view. I mean, I think you'd criticize that show. I'd criticize that well, show. Yeah, let so, me, Bob, if um, I may, I think the difference here is that um, for me personally, I think Bob as well, and a, and a lot of people on the left, whether or not they, you know, fucking do a good job of saying, I definitely don't think so that they do. I'm not really associated with a lot of lefties for that reason, but like, mm -hmm. um, I, I approach from a point of harm. And is this harmful, potentially harmful, proven to be harmful? And yeah, so Andrew Tate type uh, rhetoric and shit like that is pretty obviously gross and harmful. Um, and, and so to have that just espoused without being challenged in a piece of media, I would damn sure criticize it. I don't think that a woman expressing what She-Hulk expresses in that scene uh, is harming anybody. So I don't think we, that it can harm anybody. So if we had like a history, hypothetically, if we had like a history of, you know, in America or in the world, you know, women were the the sex that had controlled everything and had subjugated men, you would then say, well, 
then what she was saying would be bad because you have a, a higher likelihood to generate harm in the world. In, in that, in that, uh, I mean, you know, in, yeah, I guess in that, uh, well, first of all, I disagree with the premise of like, subjugating it's a hypothetical, it's a hypothetical like that, like, I understand. But... I, I don't know. It's a hypothetical. So there's a whole lot of context I would need to really, yeah, I'm not going to answer yeah, it. I, I it's just kind of a trap. Yeah, we're talking what about like so, weird well, you... alternate reality crap. <laughs> well, why not? Because it, the whole point of the, the thought experiment is to try to figure out what is the specific thing. That's not the world we thing. live in, Sitch? I can't, what, the whole, the whole women, point of the thought experiment. We're not subjugated by women? Is that what you're trying yep, to say? That's what oh. I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. The whole point of the thought experiment is to try to pick out and try to exa exactly understand what is the specific thing that's affecting the thought or the behavior or the ideology. And when I'm trying to figure out what you mean when you say cause harm in the world. Are you kind of levying a P plus P equals R argument or are you levying something different? That's power. You know what P plus P equals R is? Me? No. Yeah. The the idea that like, so power it's plus like if, if a white person racism. is, if yeah, if a, if a white person is racist against a black person, it's very bad because of the more, you're saying that there's going to be a higher likelihood that that racism, you believe there's a higher likelihood that that racism will be enacted because we live in a society, quote unquote, dominated by whites or has a history of white oppression. Where if a black person is racist against a white person, since they don't have, you know, quote unquote, institutional power, it's less egregious because it's not really going to, or you or someone who would say this wouldn't believe it would manifest in the world. It sounded like that's what you were saying. You didn't have a problem with what Jen is saying. But you know, what I, what I mean, my perspective on it is just that generally I do believe that we have to roll back certain, you know, uh, we have to start kind of, I guess, consciously dismantling certain things that have been you know taken for granted and have caused harm historically do i think that you saying uh she hulk saying this is harmful or that it contributes to a greater degree of harm no no i mean no i don't think so do i think that you're a piece of shit if you say that no um it, it's just that generally i think it's important for us as people you know who live in a society to consider how we can uh you know work to improve it i mean i don't even think it's that controversial to say that mm -hmm. we can um you know look at things that have how things have not been done the best in the past it's what we've always done is try to improve and and it's weird that th this day and age has become such a sticking point where for like any kind of progress is, and mm -hmm. attempt at analyzing you know systemic faults is now woke and therefore bad and 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 yeah it's it, it I, I don't think it's directly harmful is the point I just think that it's uh, could contribute to reducing harm in the future. It could contribute to, uh, you know, creating a, a better fucking society if we Sitch. just started to. And Sitch, I'll let you wrap I, up, but we we just passed like the one hour mark, and we haven't even gotten to question two. We only have well, three it. questions, so well, I mean, <laughs> I would, well, well, what are you gonna say, Bob? I was just gonna say, uh, just to go back to the She-Hulk example, even though we've we've been preaching on it for a while. Like, you know, the whole defense has been from our end that's been a character arc. But I think even within that episode, isolated by itself, throughout that episode, we essentially see Jen acting like a brat. You know, she's throwing the rock and showing off and mm -hmm. she's not, you know, being responsible. And I think even within the context of that episode, we are not seeing her behaving at her best. And I think that's very hmm. clear in that episode specifically. Right. Well, I think to me, I mean, it's very interesting you say that because to me, I agree with you that she is behaving like a brat. And she's, I, I think this, maybe this is where the disconnect is. I think a lot of people that complain about the episode being woke, they, like you, perceived her as being wrong, as her being a brat. But they, but the difference is they perceive that the show is celebrating that. And you're perceiving it like, no, the show is saying she's wrong. And if I look at the over arc of season one, I don't, to my mind, to my perspective, I don't see the show ever criticizing Jen for her behavior in episode one at any point. Um, I mean, I just, I, I'd have to watch True. the show. I didn't know we were talking about She-Hulk yeah. or I might well, have watched I didn't know either. Yeah. Um, just um, but like, just as a, it, it, you mentioned throwing the rock, Bob, that reminds me that you, and you mentioned such a minute ago or a little while ago that mm -hmm. people go into stuff looking for whether it's woke or racism or, right. you know, or mm -hmm. right. whatever it is. And, um, and I think that this is, She-Hulk is kind of an example of that in particular, the rock scene. I remember when mm -hmm. the trailers are coming out and, uh, you know, Hulk throws a rock and then she throws it further. And that's where the, the trailer ended. And I saw a bunch of people flipping the fuck out because, oh, she's stronger than him or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the show comes out and then he throws another rock out of his space. fucking orbit. Yeah. 
Right. And it's like, okay, but where are the people that were freaking out about the trailer saying, oh, I was wrong? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think there was a lot of that going mm-hmm. into that from people, anti-woke folks. Since, uh, you, since you feel like you got an answer to question number well, two. Well, well, I, I don't want to move on yet. Number I think this is important, okay. um, which is that, yeah, there's the scene immediately after where he does throw a rock into space. Um, but the entire sequence is her basically showing him up easily or at least showing, look, I can easily do what you're trying to do. I don't really need your help. And mm-hmm. and acting like a brat about it. And acting exactly, and acting like a brat about it. And that's kind of what people interpret it like, wow, this is that's why people interpret it as like kind of woke. Because they're like, oh, this is the the woman can do anything that the man can do uh better with no training, no experience, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then the only I, I explanation that the show well, let me just finish with men let me just finish. Doing... And then the only example, the only explanation that the show gives for this behavior about why she has such control over her powers is literally the political answer. So that's where people were very upset by that episode and seeing the political ideology, you know, within it. I think that the the, the it's pretty clear that she didn't get the same, you know, dose of, of gamma. So it's like, you know, just she didn't have to deal with the mindless aspect of it that Bruce did because she didn't have the same exact thing happen to her. And mm-hmm. I think that people are focusing kind of on the wrong thing by, by point zeroing in on that as the reason. Yeah, um, but see, this like, is she's just she's just a regular woman, except kind of like extra strong now so yeah, she just had to yeah. if see like if the scene was basically she said her whole tirade about being a woman and then it immediately cuts to bruce saying well actually i looked at the numbers and you just got a lower dose of gamma radiation then that would have completely subverted well, you know the woke aspect of it and, well, the, the, and you could have said like talking oh, about well, what she's go. able to do i mean with do you need powers, everything not... spelled out for you <sighs> And also, well, we're we need something spelled out for me and powers, the show. Not what, uh, what, you know, if you want to talk about the her being better at controlling her anger, that's one thing. But what she can do with the powers is not the same subject. And it's, it's weird to kind of extrapolate from that that that's the reason that it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it, controlling well, her anger I mean, and then being able when, to be graceful and well, do like of, handstands mm-hmm. and shit is, is different stuff. Okay. So, well, to so first address um, what Bob said. I don't I don't think you could say like, oh, do you need to be spelled out to you? It's like, yeah, because the show's spelling out to you the political aspect of it. You're trying to interpret or you are interpreting through some sort of like, you know, deeper reading, which I don't even think is there, mm-hmm. that she is supposed to be wrong in the scene. And not only do I not think it's there, I mean, well, it wasn't just anti-woke people that saw the, the scene as woke. All the fucking woke people saw the scene as woke and they were cheering it on. So Unless like everyone who's interpreting this, but you is wrong so, in how they interpret this this episode. I've seen I've t- oh. talked to a lot of people that s- saw it the same exact way that we're even after that first episode. Like, why are they acting like this isn't setting something up for down the road? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah no. I mean, what what I saw overwhelmingly was people on the uh, anti woke side mm-hmm. screaming bloody murder over it, freaking out over it, and then uh, essentially people on the other side saying. Um, why are you people freaking out? Essentially, what yeah, what is inherently they agree wrong with, with this scene? Yeah, right. They agree with the politics. They they don't have okay, the position that even you if, had, Bob. Well, let's say even if even if uh you know uh, if, where were the same people that were calling it woke from that first episode after the what episode eight or nine or whatever? Mm-hmm. Even if they don't agree that it was done well, like you're saying, you don't agree that it was like executed well or that it was really even there. They, nobody even talked about it. Nobody even said, oh mm-hmm. yeah, this follows up on. You know that that what was set up in the first uh, episode, and and no, I don't think it did a good job executing it or whatever, but or it was kind of flimsy. But like nobody even had that discussion, and that's where I come from too. Is like it it it, it I measure how much someone's actually engaging with what's really happening in the media, as well as what they're calling woke, because th- there's more to it that you could have a conversation about, but that wasn't mm-hmm. a conversation anymore. Well, okay, really but had. so but here's the here's the problem is that well, first of all. If that scene, if other, if other people, if the majority of people interpreted that scene as her being wrong as a brat, then it would that then She Hulk would have been panned critically uh, by the mainstream audience and attacked for it, which it wasn't. Why? I don't think so. Because the mainstream accepts kind of the woke narrative, at least pub, at least the well, uh, mainstream. No, I mean, I think, I think the mainstream and, actually recognized it was an arc. No, yeah, they did not. Recognized no, that they, she was acting like a brat yeah, in that first no, episode. No, they did not. They. First of all, I don't buy. I don't agree with that interpretation, and I don't. I don't believe that anyone. Else, I don't believe that the majority of people saw that as an arc whatsoever. And this is even further compounded by the fact, I like mean, the main villain of the show are literally, you know, anti-feminist trolls man, on the internet. Yes. 
yeah. for, who are yeah, uh, who true. are angry yeah. at her for the existence of quote being a woman. So the, I, to me, this is like a mm -hmm. very silly that you're trying to say. Well, no, the whole point was you know she was being too bratty and woke in that. I first think that there were layers to wrong. it, man. I think that just like saying it's one or the other is is kind of like I don't know. Bad Such, read this is like a side quest and we're not really okay. going to get to the bottom well here. i mean but it's the thing is that any conversation about this is going to inevitably get bogged down in specifics because you say well someone's sexist for you know calling xyz you know uh bad or mcu or whatever and then you have to talk about look specifics, but right? the, i think it's safe for me to say that they will call you a racist, sexist, or a transphobe if you criticize the ideology of the movie. And the ideology mm -hmm. is the... Well, are you you say mean, they, you're the talking about ideology. me and Bob would do that? Yeah, we're talking well, about you guys. Well, uh, there's a difference between calling someone racist and then saying that this thing is a racist idea. I, I have racist ideas. I but have we're, sexist we're, ideas. Look, we can look uh, at this and going that's, that's forward. That's something that's often no... not distinguished between the anti with the anti woke people. Is like, mm -hmm. are they saying that I am just an evil bigot, or are they saying that this is uh, some language I could you know do better mm -hmm. on? Or something I, I've like I've made my declaration. Going forward, we can we can watch your critique of others, uh, movie analysis. It's a pretty absurd declaration, see. Adam. Well, <laughs> I think well, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, ask, but it I matches ask, reality. I want to ask a no, question. No, it doesn't, man. I think no, you no. created a straw, man. And you're, you, after all that conversation we just had, you're zeroing in. I, I want to on, ask on, a question. And they're like kind of just on. blowing it off and saying that they're, they're going to call you a racist if you don't which like is, their ideology, which is a fucking absurd thing to state, man. So, going, so I just want to ask a question to kind of wrap up the, the She Hulk thing, which is that, you know, if, if, I mean, I don't know if you're going to levy death of the author here, but if the writers, if you talk to the writers and you said, you know, is Jen supposed to be a brat in that scene? Is this supposed to be an arc about controlling their anger? And they said, no, she's not supposed to be a brat. What she said is true and legitimate, and that's why she has control of her powers. Does Would you then say, hmm, well, I guess the people complaining about it were correct? Or would it not be? No, because that's one person. You're talking about, yeah. you know... <laughs> I'm saying, well, the entire, I mean, say the entire writing staff is like, you know, 10 people. They oh, all say, I'm no, sorry. No, no. I missed that part. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would be shocked if they said that because if you mm -hmm. look at the entire context of that episode, it's clear she's supposed to be a brat. Yeah. She is acting like it's, a brat. Like okay. that's I just, I just, insane for them to say. Yeah. Sure. I think okay. it says more about the person making the claim that like they have mm -hmm. a sensitivity to, uh, you know, hearing, uh, I guess, stuff like that. It's, it's weird to me to get upset about it hmm. um, in that way. Okay. I just, I just, I, to me, it's fascinating because it means very obviously. From my perspective, very obviously, the show is is promoting that. Well, I know. I mean, you're, you're rap, yeah. That, there's so, that, that culture know. online it's that's uh, you know presented right. these things as a certain thing and and therefore bad and yeah. Question two unanswered. Uh, question three: How should society respond to racism, sexism, and transphobia? Well, wow, I'll, just start, I'll, let, I'll let Bob go if he wants to, but I just want to start off by saying that a lot of the ways that people respond to it online, that's not it. Mm -hmm. What? So what are, what are those ways? What's the wrong way? Maybe we can do process elimination. You know, dogpiling and just like, uh, you know, um, well, let's just say. So cancel culture. It sounds like you're not in favor of cancel culture. I don't believe in cancel culture. Okay, yeah, that's cancel good. Culture. No, I don't, okay. I don't believe really that it exists is what yeah. I'm saying. I don't oh, believe oh okay. Well, that's, different. that's pretty <laughs> yeah. massively different, but okay. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, no, I'm, I mean, for, uh, first of all, the question okay. once again is very broad. And so asking what, us what is, how what to... What is dogpiling if it's not cancel culture? Uh, it's... A, okay. So the, what, the thing that people call cancel culture is often just social consequences, which have always existed for saying things that are unpopular in mm -hmm. society. Right. Like so, um, so, you you would fr you would frame it as accountability culture. Sometimes I hear people say, "I, I mean, I, I've heard, yeah, I don't know. It depends. So, it's a case so by if, case basis because if, the thing that well, how would you describe cancel culture? What is the universal well, dog pile? Uh, that's the a good start right there. Of I would say uh, cancel culture is trying to get someone uh, fired from their job and some sort of uh, financial harm to them. Try to mm -hmm. destroy some aspect of their life based on a political opinion that they have." Uh, I mean, our cultural opinion. Yeah. So if I work at Burger King mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, in, in my capacity as a representative of Burger King, I go around, you know, uh, saying, you know, calling uh, trans women slurs, calling black people mm -hmm. slurs or whatever. Uh, and 
and Burger King hears about it, like I, I would be fired. I don't understand why it's like there's this weird protective coat around entertainers, entertainers often, well, uh, well, and public what, figures. Well, what the if they, should... what if they fire you though for making a a critic a critical video of She Hulk? Uh, was I doing that in my capacity as a what? public figure in in representation uh, in representing uh, the company or? Well, you're not saying Burger King endorses this message. You just happen to work for Burger King, right? Well, I mean, it's a different thing in that regard mm-hmm. because we're talking about public plus, figures who, yeah. who are associated with certain brands, and we're talking about brands here, typically. Well, no, no, but, I, I'm saying, like, well, say say the internet decides that you've made a critical She-Hulk video, and they brand you a sexist. The internet is not a, it's not an agency. People, and a, and a dog pile gets going, and all of a sudden everyone's calling your work and saying that you're a rape apologist, and you lose your job. Oh, Okay. Uh, I mean, that would be shitty. I, I like to think that most, you know, companies would do any kind of diligence at all to find out the details of that. But like, can no, you? Sh- when is it happening? Yeah, this is like a- such. This is such an ambiguous example. Right. It's like I work at Burger King. I made a video critical of what She-Hulk, and I got fired just- for being critical. Have, have you well, guys? I'll give you a real, I'll give you a real example. Mm. I'll, give you, I'll give you a real example. There's a guy uh, named David Shore, uh, who was he worked for a polling agency, and this was during uh, BOM. And he he had looked at the data and he said, historically, this had to do, I think, with uh, Nixon winning the presidency. He said, uh, historically, when there has been a lot of riots, especially riots related to race issues in certain neighborhoods and certain areas of the country, those areas of the country will uh, reactively vote Republican. And so maybe the people should kind of try to keep that in mind during the BLM protest. Uh, he said that he had data to back up his claim, and he was immediately fired from his job for being racist. Uh, well, I mean, was he misrepresenting the data? Can you can have data, and then you can kind of uh, I don't, you know but use I it don't for believe specific. He was, but. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we you know we don't know. This is it's a pretty, but uh, even if this guy, I mean, definitely mm-hmm. people have lost jobs for reasons they fucking mm-hmm. shouldn't have. You know, well, I isn't can agree that that's cancel culture? People said this guy no, no. should well, be well because that happened. That has always happened. That said. has always happened. It's not like it's new. And so what I'm, I'm the can the cancel culture part is what I have a problem with. Considering people like Dave Chappelle, uh, you know, who who all's been canceled? Can, like Louis C.K. has made a comeback. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Well, just because you can come back from it doesn't mean you're going to Freaking Bill right? Cosby is putting together some right. new stuff. Yeah, dude, out they, it's Bring like in. you gain a whole new cultish audience now whenever you're quote-unquote canceled. You get a whole bunch of people like yeah, new but fans. You're, you're not a Bill Cosby fan, are you? It seems to be beneficial, honestly. Well, okay, but wait a minute. Just because if someone gets – so if, if someone gets fired from their job because of a very terminally online political community that's generally on uh, the far left – just because they're able to then revitalize their career either by appealing to the right or just by you know going into hiding for you know five ten years and coming back, that doesn't mean cancel culture doesn't exist. It just means it maybe is not terminally permanent. Um, well, I mean, and then there's also just the fact that people have not been canceled despite cancel culture being levied. Like Dave Chappelle, Netflix literally mm-hmm. refused to like do anything about you know all that mm-hmm. shit, and like he's not the only example. Um, I mean. <laughs> yeah, he 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 survives. So, but so not doesn't, survive, doesn't exist. Doing I, mean, great. I don't understand. He's doing Just because one person survives yeah. doesn't right. mean they all do. Uh, but the question was, how should <laughs> society respond to racism, sexism, and transphobia? So, um, I mean, you you bring up an interesting point because you bring up cancel culture, but you don't think it actually exists. But you acknowledge that you know people are being accused of racism, sexism, and transphobia and suffering the consequences of that by being canceled. So it seems like you're not no, calling the, the cancel last culture. Part, well, the last wait. part I disagree with. The last part I disagree with. What is being canceled, man? It's, it's, it just seems like a so, way yeah. for people. But, but, so being public fired, to, being fired yeah. for, or having financial People harm have always for. been fired for saying dumb shit. I mean, I don't, I don't get okay, it. Okay, so is that how society right? should respond to transphobia? I don't know. I mean, should not, they be depend, should they be fired? Like, what is the transphobia? Well, I you're, mean, you're asking these very are... vague, broad, general questions, and yeah. you're expecting us to give you a specific well, answer. I, well, and I think wait, wait, that wait, that's wait, 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 wait. Un- when you say, like, when you can when you... you and other people, let me just say, when you and other people say like that's what's always been happening, that basically implies that you're saying that this is an acceptable thing to happen. Yeah, it totally does. Oh, I mean, that, it, I'm answering broadly provide... to something that was asked broadly. 
Um, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, like, so you, can you yeah. give a specific example of some so-called victim of cancel culture? Because the only one I can think of is maybe like Harvey Weinstein, who's in prison right now, as he should be. Um, the Dixie Chicks. Hey, okay. Yeah, there we Dixie go. Chicks. There we go. Well, see, but when you, this is the problem. Right? When we talk about cancel mm. culture, it's pretty obvious that people are talking about a situation where one side is very politically in favor of the person getting fired and the other side isn't. If you bring up Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby, yeah, it's not really like everyone. a controversy there. You know, people are not in favor of people committing actual crimes or things. Of that well, I don't know. Ryan Kennel made some videos kind of like oh. shitting on that movie, like uh, talking about Harvey yeah. Weinstein as if like, they, they, I don't know, it was a cringe movie. It shouldn't exist and, and so on. So I, I don't know, man. Maybe not everybody is. OK. We, OK. <laughs> Reasonable people that are not, you know, completely crazy. I I so you're saying Ryan Kennel not reasonable about. and he's crazy. I don't know what individual you're talking about. I assume you believe that uh, Harvey Weinstein deserves to be incarcerated for you know, after he's proven guilty in a court of law and, and all of that for, yeah. which is, uh, absolutely I, that's under the category of sexism, right? Uh, well, sex, so, you know, so society, is... so society responding well, to listen, criminal activity by sexual uh, assault investigating is... and incarcerating yeah. people is, is good. Well, I, well, I feel like you're trivializing what Harvey Weinstein did. He did sexual assault. He required Women to have sexual act was to how, them, how, to how hire I, them. Look, how am I trivial? Trivial. You're, you're just, you just, you're, just that, you're just clumping everything he did with sexism. And it's like, is, yeah, technically so, sexism. Okay, but, but I'm doing it. I'm doing worse. it for a reason, though. Is, so is sexism a crime? I mean, obviously, rape is no, a crime. Man, sexual assault is a crime. <laughs> is racism is racism a crime? Is transphobia a crime? Like, no. I'm, I'm, the question itself, is how. No. The, okay, no. so the question okay, is so, so we so we agree. I didn't say legal right. consequences. So we agree. Social Harvey Weinstein, sexual assaulter, should yeah, be fired. Yeah, is a piece right? of shit and go to jail. That's suffer totally the fine, consequences right? Of yeah, I don't. I don't think actions. that's really like when people are talking about cancel culture. I'm not talking about that. Yes. I mean, they're talking about like you know you know Gina Carano had her tweets or whatever that people said that she was uh, you know being too. Uh, uh, anti-Semitic, which I didn't, as a Jew, I didn't find her tweet anti-Semitic at all, and she was fired from well, the Mandalorian for for the well, tweet. That's there, there's layers culture. to the Gina Carano thing, and I'll right. go ahead and tell you my take on it. Mm -hmm. um, so the Gina Carano thing, like you know, the, the public story is that she had bad tweets. She was warned not to do bad tweets. She continued to do bad tweets, and she was fired. Now I, I'm going to assume she's probably in the actors' union, so she probably had some good defense to not get fired, meaning they had to have good contractual reasons to be able to fire her, which they did. Mm -hmm. um, putting all that aside, I don't think somebody should get fired just for bad tweets. I also think there's probably something going on behind the scenes because there's nobody that came to defend her. Nobody. Well, first of all, lots of I don't know what you mean by nobody. Lots of people on the Twitter line, and YouTube did specific current YouTube her, the crap Well, her. yeah, I'm, I'm talking is, about co-workers. Is right, Gina I don't Carano know. guilty of racism? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, Dude, you use a lot of loaded language, Adam, when you what ask these it? questions, like guilty did, of racism. Did, did, did you like, call her anti-Semitic? Did you call her raci racist? Did you do videos on Gina Carano when she got canceled? I was no. more upset about the, uh, just mm -hmm. the fucking, some of the misinformation and just like the hyperbolic way she was describing, you know, vaccines and stuff as, as being mm -hmm. like, yeah, just yeah, that's so, so both, me, but... Do you both agree that you think she should not have been fired? Mm. No, I don't agree. Oh, well, that well that's the thing. Me. That's why I'm saying I don't know the full context. Can I, can I, I think tell you my take on we this? We don't know. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> not not if you don't know the full context. We don't want to hear your well, take I'll if you don't you know, know the full context. Nobody knows the full context of people who work there. I'll tell Look, you the, what I think. The question what I think based is how what should society wait, 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 respond wait, 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 wait. to racism? Okay, I want to hear. I want to hear Dane's explanation of. So, yeah, what I think based on what I know is that, and I I have a friend who works in Hollywood. Uh, and, and, you know, he doesn't know the situation personally, but he knows Hollywood movie sets and, or like filming sets and stuff. And he said that there's almost certainly, uh, considerations that went into that outside of what we saw, uh, in regards to like, if she's doing, you know, uh, vaccine denial or whatever, then that means mm -hmm. she's not getting vaccinated and therefore she's going to be on set with other actors who are very, you know, uh, we're very concerned with like, we don't want to fucking get COVID. Uh, and, and so like there's there, and they, they would have to shut down the set. Uh, at, at certain points to, you know, kind of like give, if she got sick, they'd have to uh, put a, you know, a, throw a wrench in filming, throw a wrench in production. And she was about to start on a, a show that she was going to be the lead of. Why wouldn't they there just say that? There are other considerations to be uh, made than just like she said something that they don't like and therefore but the, but she's got to well, go. Okay. So if, if the reason she was fired was because they wanted everyone to be vaccinated, 
Um, why didn't they just say that? They didn't say that. They said they fired her because she made social media posts denigrating people based on their culture and religious identities. And well, that's, that's important it, yeah. and unacceptable. Well, I mean, and, and I respect the fact that you're Jewish and, and, you know, but I mean, also, I don't think that any group is a monolith. So just you not agreeing that it was uh, something harmful is, you know, so, not necessarily. Okay, but the so the original question was, so is this an example of cancel culture? She put social media posts. They said they fired her for the no, social media posts. No, I think it's, a, it's think it's the Burger King example. You know, uh, she was so representing. I, I, how, okay, how she then was, you're defining was, cancel I'm, culture there, in a very strange way that I don't think aligns with. Well, I, I am also getting a correction in chat where she technically wasn't fired; just her contract wasn't resigned. Oh well. Or there you go. So she like, wasn't resigned. Yeah, do you feel like she was entitled to have a contract renewed? You, well, if mm -hmm. she's a main character in a show, and it's very unlike, and they said that they didn't resign it for this specific reason. I mean, yeah. I don't. What is the contention exactly? The I mean, they're, they're she no, wasn't no owed anything, and they, it. they, yeah, they're a corporate. Are you guys capitalists? I'm not saying you corporations well, should be able to do what they want, or sure. Well, to some extent, obviously, I, I'm I don't think corporations um, should be able to like sterilize not, people. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not one of these. <laughs> Who's being ultra, sterilized? Jesus, neo libertarians. Yeah. Um, uh, but no. So again, the quite Disney specifically said. You know, oh, we found her social media posts, you know, bad, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. They didn't just say, oh, we just decided not to resign her because the show is going in a new direction. So this is an example of cancel culture. It's an example of them literally right. saying they didn't do it because of her social media posts. Okay. I, unless, I mean, so, I, so what so did they, how are you defining cancel culture? What did they culture? owe her? Prior to, what prior did they to, owe her? That's irrelevant to the question I'm asking. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's the implication the question is, is does cancel culture exist, her... not what is anyone owed? No, the... <laughs> That's they're one and the same, man. Like it does seem to be a sense of entitlement with this stuff. Like I didn't get the show that I wanted, or I didn't get the job that I wanted because I said something and I was entitled well, to you, it, no wait, matter what my behavior and actions. How do you guys um, yeah. identify politically? I really don't. I, I'm, I'm essentially I'm a, I'm center a, left. Center left. I, I'm a humanist and a pragmatist, and everything stems from that. Yeah. From you know. All well, my do you, okay? Do you identify more as liberal or more as leftist? I really don't. I think I don't because you know leftists Why? will call like, me leftists will call me a liberal. Liberals will call mm -hmm. me a leftist. I just think yeah, it's kind he of means yeah. socialist. Uh, by there's no good leftist. answer. Mm. So, so you're not socialist, at least not openly socialist. I, we're, none of us are socialists. We're all living in this fucking capitalist shit. That doesn't you mean you're. Well, what do you mean? Hassan Piker's a socialist. He still lives. In right. I know. I, I just. I just mm -hmm. don't see. I don't see utility in of signing labels like that to things that we. I don't well, live so like that. Explain what someone's so ideology is. That's the utility. What do you mean? Do it. It's to explain what someone's ideological beliefs are. Like yeah. someone I, says they're, you know, and my ideological beliefs are that Christian, we should improve Jewish. society based on, yeah. you know, the way things are at this point, and and that just having aspirational goals toward an mm -hmm. ultimate, you mm -hmm. know, whatever our ultimate ideal world is, is kind of, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, fucking usually pretty pointless and creates some needless division. Okay, I just, I just I thought mean, it was interesting. I'll tell you, mm -hmm. I'll tell you exactly where my ideology stems from, just from the root of it. It's that. Everybody should be allowed to pursue whatever happiness they want as long as they don't harm themselves or others. Okay. I mean, it's a very libertarian approach to things. Sure. Yeah. Well, it um, depends upon how you're defining I mean, harm there, Sitch, because he would well, define harm as making a video critical of the MCU. <laughs> right. I guess that's true. Whoa, um, whoa. So, so wait, so wait, wait. Okay. So, wait, you said you're fine with anyone doing whatever they want as long as they're not committing harm to themselves or others. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So I guess we'll have to bring up. So because I know that um, that you, Dane, and I assume uh, Bob is involved in this. That you guys said, you know, you put out like a. Uh, uh, you wanted people who have been, you know, harassed or abused by EFAP to contact you, right? Well, it was EFAP and others? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So what was what is the intention of doing that? Uh, just to call because lots of people get bullied these by these groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these cultures that, that that have sprung up around that stuff. It's like, uh, you know, I've talked to countless people, man. In three years, I've been making content, and I've talked to a lot of people who I've seen, you know, seen the reports, so to speak. And and like, it it it's not healthy, man. It's not a healthy way to engage in fandom. I think a lot of how we engage with fandom, uh, generally, mm -hmm. we as as uh, fans, I suppose, um, is not great. You know, <laughs> so so is the, is the intention just to say, listen, we're like a support group against you know people who have feel like they've suffered abuse by angry fan bases, or is the no, intention more, more like 
you know, we want these people to get in trouble. We want these people no, to I don't, look, you know, I don't change want, their behaviors. What exactly is the intention? I don't want any, the, my ideal outcome, which I know, you know, it's kind of a pipe dream is that we could get uh, some uh, accounts together and, and say, get some attention from these folks and say, look, man, maybe you don't realize the, uh, the impact that what you're doing has on, on certain people or a lot of people uh, over time. Uh, and that they will go, oh shit, we didn't consider that. You know, we'll try to foster a fucking better uh, culture. Well, what are they doing? What is the, the what is the behavior that's causing this strife? Uh, so EFAP in particular will uh, very often uh, cover content creators who have not made any kind of video. You know, they don't ever make videos about other content creators. They'll be talking about a movie they like. Mm -hmm. And EFAP will, you know, cover them and, and uh, you know, call them retards and tell them to kill themselves and all kinds of other shit and essentializing them as bad people because they like a thing or whatever. And then uh, inevitably, EFAP's audience loves to go after that person, uh, you know, and like sh show up in their comments, downvoting their videos. It really kind of looks a lot, you know, oh, like that what you might call cancel culture. Your video here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for um, me today. I mean, if anything, that's more like cancel culture, or at least it fits the terms and way the way you describe it, I think. Um, they, they're they're wanting this person to pay consequences for having an opinion on a movie. Yeah, like, well, if, you know, I'm not familiar, as familiar with the other people that you were listing, but if, like, if the EFAP people, you know, we've talked to Rags and Mahler and Frank, we've been on EFAP a couple times, you know, I've never heard them say something like, you know, you should go to this person's page and you should attack them and you should harass them. I mean, if they were doing that, I would agree with you. That is of an course immoral not. action. I'd I would agree that that would be some. In, I'd, I'd agree they, that would be sort of be. in line with cancel culture. But I've heard them explicitly sure. say the opposite. To say you know don't harass these people, don't mm -hmm. you know uh, attack these people. Okay, so mm -hmm. when, when and you know to kind of turn it back to the cancel culture thing, when have mm -hmm. when has anybody told uh, leftists to go uh, harass uh, and report someone being racist or whatever? And oh, like, uh, like it's not just people literally like, advocated for physical violence. I mean, that's the, the whole. <laughs> Boycott well, the J.K. Rowling. Did you know game, that we aren't boycott Bosch? people playing yeah, the J.K. Rowling? Well, game. he asked me for an example of when leftists have done this. I gave right. the example of Vosh. Yeah. yeah, but that's not a culture, is it? That's you know, that's just a guy. Yeah. Wait, wait. I, well, here's a, a lot the of culture. Like. The, the Harry Potter game. That's a perfect example. There was this huge thing about you need to boycott this game, and then it became you need to mm -hmm. boycott anyone playing the game. That yeah, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. that's stupid. That's stupid. Yeah, man. I agree. Yeah, stupid, but that's you know your my take on that. The culture. But who? But what word did you take on that? From? Did it come that from specific content yeah. creators telling their audiences? I'm sure it did to some degree. But yeah, like, it came it, from. It yes, it came from that specific. The difference being, being uh, we're talking ideology, about yeah. a video game made by a corporation that mm -hmm. is a part of a huge IP, as opposed to uh, EFAP's audience, which will go after much smaller creators. Sometimes, recently, it was Pillar of Garbage. Who made a video critical of Critical Drinkers video, mm -hmm. and then EFAP covered that, and then you know Pillar of Garbage got a whole lot of fucking shit uh, for it. They made a post about it, described it really well, and then it also it's kind of where part of what spawned me to want to address it because Pillar of Garbage described their their mo so well that I was like, shit, mm -hmm. this is it. You know, it's the, he's able to zero in on how they operate, um, and, and uh, it's like doing content at other people is the yeah, thing but, that I kind of mm -hmm. think is pointless. But, but here, okay, but here's the prompt. So the, the question that was asked was, well, you're saying, you know, is EFAP engaging in this quote cancel culture? And I said, no, they're explicitly telling people from what I've heard, they've never told people to attack people and they've explicitly told them to do the opposite. And then you asked, well, who is telling people to attack them? That's not how cancel culture works. And I said, well, no, I mean, you, generally okay. when we're talking about believe... kind of the left attacking things, there is an explicit, uh, attack and saying go cancel something go boycott something you know write a bunch a of emails a to, yeah, you know like you know, it's a stupid disney boycott. to try to get these people it. fired etc yeah. etc it's very explicit uh, so i don't i don't agree with this sort of reframing okay uh fair enough uh so i mean i guess do you believe that uh content creators people with a platform have any uh you know even implicit uh sway over their audience i mean we, we call them influencers for a reason mm -hmm. right uh, do you well, that's why that? they tell them not to go attack people. Oh. Yes, of course they well, have they tell them not to. influence. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you think that should just be that would be enough, right? Like, do they constantly say that? Have they said it a few times here and there? Do they say it every single time they call somebody retarded and tell them to kill themselves? Or well, uh, I, I you know, just, I was on really... e, I've been on EFAP I think three times, and I don't once in the thirty hours that I've been on EFAP. <laughs> Recall somebody telling somebody to kill themselves. That's well, okay. I mean, it's it's been, there's a whole. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a collection of them, man. Rags likes to do that a lot. Um, 
you know, so okay. it really is like about so, no. So they're Rag, not giving Rags instructions. has said this. They're not this, giving. So Rags, they're not giving. Inst- okay. They're not giving instruction. I never said that. But what I do believe that content creators with a platform have a response. Like I know my mm-hmm. my you know I got a small audience, but like I don't believe that any of them, or at least any more than maybe one fringe one here and there, would go do any kind of shit to, you know. And if I found out someone did, I would fucking call them out directly, and I would you know, make a big deal of it, man, because I think that I do have a responsibility for well, having I even think, a small platform. I think chances are the way the internet works, if you made a big deal out of it, you'd get a lot more people doing the thing that you were making a big deal out of. So I don't know, because a lot of my content's kind of built on, you know, built around my explicit ethics of, of things. And I think that I kind of am lucky to have an audience like I do. But um, mm-hmm. did, did even you get still, a- it's... Did you get a good answer on EFAP? Such, can I go back to how should society Well, I mean, I, I'm curious. I'm curious if this. Um, I mean, because you're talking about like you know, do do content creators have responsibility for their message, um, and, and attacking others? And I, I do agree to some extent. You know, they they explicitly, you know, they explicitly tell people not to do these things. And I'm just, it's interesting to me that then. You know, when it comes to like, you know, Disney Plus and they have a message of, you know, all men are, you know, part of some patriarchy and it's all bad. That's kind of, you know, brushed aside as what? not having some sort of societal impact or harm. Uh, uh, that was a pretty wild claim right there. Yeah, that's, I that's a she, I'm going back to the but... She-Hulk example we talked about. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that that's just kind of a, a really false kind of comparison mm-hmm. because. We're talking about um, a, a YouTube channel that has, what do they have, like hundreds of thousands of subscribers, right? I think more people um, watch mm-hmm. the She-Hulk than watch EFAP, I would guess. But, uh, but that's not what wrong. we're talking about. Yeah, I'd definitely what say that. Oh, okay, okay. So, the, 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 uh, and, and then they're covering a channel like I think Pillar of Garbage has 50,000 subs. They're calling a specific person, mm. right? Versus mm-hmm. a show making a, a commentary, whether you want to call it political or feminist or whatever it is, just commentary, which shows and movies have always done. Um, and, and that about general uh, attitudes in society, right? I think those are two very different things, and that comparing them, conflating them is well. They, is they're just a little of, different in terms of, as you're saying, like you know, they're, they're, they're very critiquing different. a specific individual. I'm assuming I haven't watched this pillar of garbage video. I'm assuming they're critiquing their opinion on a movie or a TV show versus you know She-Hulk critiquing an entire class of people based on their gender. It's not, I don't think, it's not, hold on, it's not, we didn't ever agree that it was uh, critiquing a class of people based on gender. It wasn't, it wasn't people. We talked about it. You, you described feminism yourself. You described, and if you, we agree, if we agree that that was a feminist view, then it was a system of uh, thought, a mode of, yeah, but the, you know, the, um, the problem, I, I don't think that's an entire class of, of people. I don't right. think that most men would, uh, uh, yeah. The, but the, the problem with, with the way that you're saying that is that, so the, the ideology is basically structured so that, well, even though it's part of this system, if you don't actively fight against the system, if you're neutral in it or you're or, or you're not fighting against it, you are participating in the system. You are advocating for the system. Did the show say so, that? No, but that's part of the broader ideology. I, I don't think that just having an what? expressing a, a view like that is inherently means that you have you get to tie that uh, entire ideology and whatever. Well, I mean, they're using the same ideology language. I don't know. It show. seems pretty apparent to me, but. I guess so. Um, I'm, I, I mean, I think agree. you might be unique in that. In what? Well, the, that whole ideology you just said seemed like a very bold claim. That, that's I, literally, wait, that's literally Ibram X. Kendi, who was like one of the biggest names during BLM. That's his entire thing. You, you're either you're either anti-racist or you're racist. There's no neutral. Oh, he wrote she Hulk though. But but yeah, I, yes, that's we're exactly about what She-Hulk. I said. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm, it's kind of you know smart ass answer, but like seriously, like you're you're kind of just reaching a little bit there, you man. Know no, the because that idea, that, that has idea, read, uh, that, Ibram that X. Kendi, you know, she has the the binary of you're either promoting the you know anti racist or racist narrative is the same thing that applies to the the sexist narrative. You're either promoting the anti sexism or you're sexist. So I, that's that's the connection. Okay. I think it's a stretch. To, I don't, uh, I, do you so disagree the, with that? Do you believe in a world where why, you why, can why? only the, be the, racist the or anti-racist? Here, I think the disconnect here is the essentializing mm-hmm. and the, the think and not distinguishing between um, you know kind of just being part nobody, of a, nobody nobody essentialized that, anything. What are you talking about? We, yeah, you're I mean, not. You, these aren't. The, well, I mean, inborn we're, we're traits. You don't do this. You are racist. 
you are sexist. I mean, like, yeah, if you're not uh, actively speaking on, you know, like do, whenever there's a possibility or you're, you have a chance mm -hmm. to, you know, push back against harmful, shitty ideas and you're kind of just taking a neutral position, I don't think that you're like a terrible person, really, but I think it's kind of sucks and that, you know, okay, it's so not somebody agree. I'm going to want to. Sounds like you do agree with it. So you Kendi. agree. I, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what we're arguing about. I, I mean, to a degree, I don't know why but Kendi like, we're talking it, about like... She-Hulk right now. Yeah, <laughs> we're not. Well, no, You're I just, like, we the way, still the haven't got an answer way, on okay, the I'll question. I'll tell you how Kenny came Like, I it, don't but... think you need to be speaking out against anti-woke people on YouTube, but, mm -hmm. like, this is just a thing that, like, we've kind of chosen because it's a serious problem. Listen, I stumbled into it simply because I like uh, criticizing movies. I like, you know, mm -hmm. looking in and looking into themes, looking into ideas behind movies, and then I find this YouTube platform absolutely dominated by these anti-woke guys. Absolutely dominated. And that's a problem. Do you do you believe with it? Uh, wait, 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 you... wait, wait. Why is that a problem? Well, because it's not representative because of it's actual not a fans. Good, it's not remotely good critique. It's terrible. And it's not representative of, of fandom. There's you know there's far more people who aren't yeah. anti woke that are fans of these things, as evidenced by the the success of them, uh, than there are that that. But YouTube, by the way the algorithm works, and and mm -hmm. and, and incentivizes sensationalism and incentivizes uh, you benefit from repetitive uh you know like kind of thin content that uses you know stock talking points and stuff like that and, and so you get channels that are cranking out everything is woke this is woke it's all woke and it's bad uh meanwhile people that are you know making nuanced uh critique it takes longer you have to take time to think and to write and to not say the same thing over and over again and I just mean, by virtue it of sounds those like facts. you just don't understand what the critique is you said that you were against communism like if uh you know covertly <laughs> people were placing communist ideology into popular movies like captain america uh would you be against that yeah i'm not going to argue a fucking fantasy man you well, know, no, like it look, sounds like you're you're just ha you're kind of just creating a uh, no you no. Know, no. I, I'm, look, I'm wow. I'm saying I'm saying, are you against people subversively placing their ideology into some fictional work? And I tried to pick an ideology I that you disagree with. Premise. I think that's a false premise because you're you're subversively implanting narrative and media has always had perspectives of the people creating it. So, so, so you don't think propaganda exists then is what you're saying i know i think everything is basically propaganda we, you guys make it we make it you so know propaganda is inherently always a negative thing like propaganda is just you know it's it's everybody's got opinions and perspectives that's what we're doing here and it sounds like you guys want to create a cancel culture for you know woke stuff well so i think i think maybe you misunderstood what adam meant he was saying when he means subversive he means that it's not it's not really it's dishonest well, yeah, it's not it's not exactly apparent that the person is advocating for in his hypo in hypothetical that the person's advocating for communism, right? That would be the right, subversive yeah. element. I, and I think the word subversive really kind of gives away that it's like you're reaching for something that maybe isn't meant in the way that you're taking it. And you don't think it, there's been any subversive political propaganda in media ever? No, I don't think I didn't say that. No, there definitely no, has. I don't been. understand the problem with the hypothetical. There, the 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 communist well, it's, one. It's, it's such yeah. It's just bizarre. Well, I, this, I, this is the accusation it's a really that people are, hypothetical. Look, this is the accusation that people are making. This is the conversation that I we're mean, having. This yeah. is the critique that you have a problem with. Like oh, you're wait, saying, what's... listen, the critique mm -hmm. so is, wait, not, wait, what... is not good, but you don't, so... the, the critique you don't necessarily even really understand. No, I, I think right now you're kind what? of just Are... reaching for a way to shut down, you know, the stuff that we've already said. Yeah, you're, 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 you're bringing up the hypothetical and saying it's real critique. What? What? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. So Dane refused to answer a hypothetical, and you and now you're saying that the hypothetical is ridiculous, Bob. And I, I guess I don't yeah. understand why it's a ridiculous hypothetical. Because then you're because obviously Adam's going to take that and extrapolate that to mean that we don't understand the critique, and it, it's it's fucking nonsensical. Well, no, you could say faith. either that you could no. I mean, you'd say that you're either against or in favor or neutral to whether someone is putting you know political messages that are subversive and not exactly uh, obvious to the audience in the media. Yeah, what I is disagree that that's, that's, that's what's happening, question. and also the audience is not a monolith. So, and like, we're maybe not, some we're people not don't asking you it, if okay. you think that's what's happening. We're asking you, is that okay if it was happening? 
Well, communism is a weird example. Well, but how about smoking? Uh, how about pro smoking? How about fascism? If, whatever you want to put. Yeah. Just, how about fascism? Well, whatever. I mean, there's actually lots of pro smoking in movies. Lots of people look cool. Hold, hold on, and that's a very common that? thing. Bob, but, give me a second. Okay. The, the way that you, the way that you just extrapolated and or like connected. Uh, uh, Ibrahim Kendi to uh, feminism and like by these weird, you know, connective threads that like, and you're just kind of, it's bizarre. That's why I'm getting hesitant to answer stuff now because it seems like no matter what, you're going to find some way it's to connect not, it to well, some weird he, position. I think, I think, well, here's the problem. I, it's not really that bizarre. I don't think, now you can tell me I'm wrong here. I'm not sure what you guys' background is. I, I don't think that you guys have really done any sort of deep dive into reading, you know, any of the literature uh, related to you know the origins of CRT or queer theory or radical feminism. And no, I have. Really familiar. You don't have, have like a good academic theoretical understanding of these. I, uh, I have read it. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. really I've looked into it for sure. Yeah. Okay. What what is like what is the source? What is one of the primary sources that you read for this? Or like, well, what did, what have you read into? I well, what what question. like. So wait, I understand this is this like a giant battle, side but... quest, Sitch. We're two, we're well, no, an hour and that's 44 the promise, minutes he, he in. He said he doesn't understand how I'm connecting Ibram X. Hen Kendi to this. Mm. When you were directly asking okay. me, how does it say that you're either with us or against us? And I brought up, that's literally Ibram X. Kendi's position. And you don't, you're saying you don't understand how that's connected. So I just, yeah. it doesn't seem like you don't have a good theoretical that's a understanding racist, of- racist, anti-racist guy. Of kind of like where the quote unquote woke academic uh, ideas come from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know well, what the, the ideas that Chris Rufo has popularized, and as mm -hmm. he's admitted that it was all, you know, kind of done intentionally to create this moral panic about CRT, which doesn't uh, exist. Like it's not mm -hmm. being taught to anybody that hasn't chosen to teach it. It's not being put mm -hmm. into, you know, elementary schools or whatever. Um, right. So I'm know, not so asking. I, mean, if you've I, read... I guess I need to know, like, what you right. mean by CRT. Well, okay. So I'm you... not asking if you've read Chris Rufo or an article complained by Chris Rufo. I'm asking, have you read? academics who are crt academics who are yes i have man i've okay, read like, i've re read through some papers i don't remember names you know what i mean okay. like if you're asking me to, to cite you know citations i can look for them uh, and see what i see if i can find what i read but uh what, what are you asking yeah i, I yeah we're, we're getting off in the weeds but uh, well, we are getting off the weeds and we can go back just uh, to me i don't i don't i don't think there's a good if, if you if you have read these things and understood them you would very clearly see the connection well tell me no see i think you're you're shifting the burden here because yeah uh, yeah not. you're not comfortable with me calling out the fact that you you connected things that really are tenuous it's at best. totally now pertinent what they, are you wait, talking wait, wait, about wait 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 they literally weren't tenuous at best okay it's they, totally you forgot pertinent. you forgot the original line of the question the original line of the question that got us onto the sidetrack with the she hulk even like anything is i said how is this not uh different then we were talking about cancel culture and audiences. And I said, how is this not different than if she's making these broad sweeping claims against men in society? And basically, is that not levying and I hatred that. towards men? And then I your response that. was, well, it's different because she's not attacking individual people. Right. I and she's not that. talking yes. in, and she's not talking about intentional behaviors. She's talking about systems. And right. then I said, well, wait a minute. Implicit in and, and explicit in those ideologies about the systemic racism and systemic sexism is the idea that you either have to uh, fight against it or you participated participate right. in it. And then you said, "Who's saying that?" And then I said, "Ibram, Ibram X. Kendi, Kendi, who's one of the most no, famous." No, I was people saying in the show. In, who's in saying thing. that in the show? Yeah. in the show. Okay, who's well, saying that? obviously, no. The show said those exact words. Obviously. Look, I got. Let but me that make was your this... like attention. You should have said that. Well, who, who even who even implied well, you... that in the show? We... Look, that's let's, implicit let's in back. the. I... Let's well, reel okay. it in. We can here. get back. Get I'm back saying that's implicit question. in the ideology that she was talking Look, about. Is it is it but... okay? <laughs> like I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what society should do about racism. Like, is it okay to be friends with a racist or a transphobe or we would like, have we to should decide, just like, shun who's... them? Yeah. Okay, so listen, I am friends I, with I am friends with racists, right? Okay. I'll put it that way. How dare you? Right, mm -hmm. you cancel okay. me, right? You guys gonna yeah. cancel me? Or, I'm no? going okay. to. Well, I'm not. In, I'm not in but favor what I mean of cancel by that culture, is... and I've heard you don't even think cancel culture exists. So I don't see how we would cancel you. I think it doesn't exist to the degree like it's. It's just so ne like nebulous that it, it's the just like woke. The term has become a catch-all for you know basically like oh you you fucking said something that criticized me and now you're like that's it's a way to avoid criticism in a lot of cases well no i, I uh, was asking specifically about um how to deal how how should society deal with the problem of racism you're saying it's okay to be friends with racists so 
shunning them, uh, you know, saying nobody yeah. should be friends with them is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Like, well, what? Let, me let me give you a couple of examples, please. Okay. Uh, if I, I am friends with people who hold some racist notions, right? Mm -hmm. If they said them to me, uh, it, and sometimes it comes out, I would be like, dude, no, here's why that's, you know, and then we're friends. So they will listen sometimes a couple of, you know, every once in a while they'll learn something and try to work on it. Uh, because it's the essentializing is the main difference. Like I'm not going to, I'm not calling them racist as in like they're evil, terrible okay. people. I'm saying they hold some racist notions. Uh, I do think, like I said at the beginning that a lot of the ways that people go about, you know, just essentializing it on both sides is, is unproductive to say the least. Uh, and so, creates a lot of fucking so discord we, that doesn't so, exist. So but, shunning, shunning them is not something you're in favor of. So what? Well, is I was going to give you another example. Okay. So if I have a friend who just comes out and says, you know, I, I think whatever race or whatever is just genetically inferior, and, and yeah, man, I'm going to fucking not be friends with that guy because mm -hmm. that's like just for one thing, it's not rooted in anything factual. Um, you know, it's it's scientifically bunk, and and uh, yeah. Okay, so, and it's morally bunk as well. <laughs> so you're so you're saying uh, the level of racism determines whether or not you're going to shun somebody. So I, I guess like some mild racism you're tolerant of, but if I, somebody I think, I disagree is with a, the, the ways you're describing it, it's yeah, not a level no, this, of racism. It is a, a how deeply rooted, how worth my time is it to be friends with this person? Can what? I maybe get them to understand things in a different way? And and are they just committed to being a fucking ignorant piece of shit? And in that case shun them is also another loaded word because you know no there's plenty of places that guy can go to have buddies and, and good friends you you pick uh, so you shunning pick your from words. society isn't really look you what? you pick your i'm i'm the question i'm asking question three how should society respond to racism sexism and transphobia you mm -hmm. i mean i'm just i'm throwing words out because you're not really giving us anything to go off of like it you, is a broad you are, question that, that you are making you are making so, videos and you are accusing people of being sexist. You are accusing people of being racist. You are you, like you just did a debate with Eric July and you accused him of being a racist. I'm yeah. trying to figure out if you call somebody a racist, what am I supposed to infer that you mean by that? Do you mean that that person should be ostracized from society, that they should lose their job? Do you think they should get a slap on the wrist? Do you think so, they should get yeah. a, a, a stern talking to by their mother? I will give you a 100% optimal best answer. So racism, sexism, transphobia, these are largely just like behaviors. Mm -hmm. like, uh, like you could argue maybe a person would qualify under those things if they have a lot of these behaviors. But in general, you're just talking about random behaviors a person might have. The optimal situation, if somebody like, you know, says something racist, you know, somebody pulls aside and said, hey, you know, maybe you should think about this. Chris goes, yeah, I think you're right. That's it. Well, what if they disagree with you? What if what they've done? I mean, we can they have don't a, a, perceive a debate as or discussion. I mean, it, it kind of depends. Like if if they're really like, it, it all depends on the infraction too. These are all very nuanced things. The, the, like the main goal is just to point out, hey, this is a problem. Okay, so you you don't think any harsher punishment should be levied? Just a friend should take them aside and say. Look, it's not cool well, for you to do that. That's what that's what you're. Well, I mean, there, there's you're lots jumping of around, man. You're layers. jumping back and forth between mm -hmm. how would you handle it versus how what you know punishment well, look, society I, handle it. Like, which mm -hmm. what are we talking about? Give us well, an example. Wait, wait a second here. I can ask you your opinion about how society should handle it. I mean, I'm sure you could give me both, right? I'm not going to say that I'm an expert on how exactly all of the ways society should handle it. I so don't you think don't any one have person a, should you, so you don't have I don't think any on one it, person though. should answer that in, in any kind of like just, you know, in a debate format mm -hmm. where it's like, here's a quick answer on how yeah, this is how we solve it, well, guys. I think that's yeah, it doesn't have to be a quick answer. You can talk as long as you want. Yeah, I think it, it's going to take a lot of time. And, and there's there's we're still in the process of learning how to communicate these mm -hmm. ideas of like trying to get people to understand that, you know, this is, uh, you know, Actually, do, do you think okay, well, maybe wrong. maybe here's a way to to, to phrase it because we're trying to get specifics and I, I feel like we're not getting them. I know so you like, are. You're if, trying to get specics so that you can kind of create a, a point to argue against. Yeah, it's a very broad that. question. No, I'm you're just trying we're to trying to, to understand. To, we're, you we're trying do this to, all the time in videos. Well, we just you know, want to understand it. It's interesting that so much of this is about you know what is a cancel culture versus accountability culture, and I guess that's really what we're oh. trying to hone in on here. Like for example. Like if you, you know, if, if both of you, if either of you, you know, you say, oh, you know, 
uh, rags is a horrible racist sexist, right? You make a video, you know, accusing him of being a racist sexist. And then someone at YouTube says, oh my God, I watched, you know, uh, Dane and Bob's video. And I think this dog is very racist and sexist and he gets booted from YouTube. Is that like, is that a good thing? Or you say, wow, I didn't mean for that to happen. That's a bad thing. Yeah. It's a great question. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I'd have to think about it, honestly. It is a good question. Yeah. Well, I, you, I have... you, so why let, don't you think about me... it before you make the video? Why are you thinking about it now? Well, I... <laughs> because it should be called out when it happens. But let me, let me, let me throw have, an hold example on, Hold on, Bob, real Let's quick. Say... People have been kicked off of YouTube for way fucking less, so honestly, I wouldn't feel that yeah. bad about it. Okay. I really wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay, let me throw an example at you. Because mm -hmm. I, I know there's a specific YouTuber. Uh, there's probably more than one, but I, I can name you one specifically who will go out of his way mm -hmm. to comment negatively anytime a woman does something in anything, whether it's a writer or a character, they will call out that woman, think of some way to make fun of them. Now, when a person constantly does that over and over again, what would you call that person? Well, it depends upon the, the criticism. I would have to look specifically at the criticism. No, they're always calling out a woman. They're always calling out a woman. Just a woman existing, man. Just a yeah, woman existing. All well, this the, time. Well, look, I... Yeah, obviously, if under so the I don't know who the YouTuber is that you're talking about. If 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 I was watching YouTuber, matter? well, I'm just answering your question because yeah. I could I could say yes or no, and then they're going to say, well, I was talking about this person, so you're saying they're sexist. That's what I'm trying to address here. So if I saw a YouTuber and it's like, hmm, this is really weird. All they do whenever a woman enters the screen, they go, oh, boo, hiss, woman. You know, they they start shaking a little rattle thing whenever a woman appears. Like I'd be like, hmm, that guy seems pretty sexist, right? That'd be so, pretty entertaining, really. Yeah. But yeah. Oh yeah, I, I don't understand. So, what is the, the the deeper question here, and related to how you think that uh, YouTube or society should respond to this stuff? Yeah, and how do we know you're not just cherry picking, and they have you know great criticism that you know of movies that involve female protagonists well, you just have never seen them? Well, you know uh, that that's exactly how we've been feeling with a lot of the questions you've given us, by the way. So you're welcome. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, it, it really is a case by case basis, and I can't mm -hmm. tell. YouTube does a lot of shit that I wish it wouldn't. A lot of companies, corporations mm -hmm. do a lot of shit that I wish they wouldn't, man. And like, I'm not going to sit here and go to bat for them. Um, but I, I think that it well, generally I'm not a lot of that. stuff. I'm asking you if you guys put out content that got rags canceled from YouTube, would you say that that's a just thing to happen to him? I mean, we would have to look at. But honestly, I won't be crying any rivers for him. Be frank. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't okay. feel bad. I don't. I don't think mm -hmm. that. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen because I when, think that when YouTube, we're dealing that's not with what somebody I'm asking. who that's frequently tells asking. people to kill, when we're dealing with somebody yeah. who on the regular with that's a massive true. platform tells people to kill themselves, mm -hmm. I'm not yeah, trying to river burn. I think that's okay. So up. okay, I actually so think if, that's the most fucked up that he so, repeatedly has said, uh, if, and I, I think it's not good. So but. if you, hypothetically, I know we have some issues with hypotheticals, but hypothetically, if you are Susan Wojcicki or you're you too are in charge of YouTube and you have a button that says I'm going to cancel this person. And it's going to cancel rags. Would you say I'm pressing the button? No, I'd cancel the the first. I'd uh, press I'd press the uh, yeah. reprimand button. The like, here's why you shouldn't do this, man. Like, we really appreciate yeah. you not fucking using you know this kind of language because mm -hmm. it, it's just just shitty. You what know, do, what does the a reprimand button do? Is it like a public lashing or? Mm, no, well, I, I mean, don't think. Most of the time, these social media control, sites. No. If it was me in control, Most I don't time, think calling people out publicly ever, very rarely contributes to, you know, productively, honestly. I mean, uh, a public I, lashing of rags could actually be pretty funny, but. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, it would be something like a, a you know, it, it, honestly, any kind of system that would let him know that, hey, this isn't ideal would be great if YouTube had that, <laughs> you know, but the, mm -hmm. it's. Well, they do. I mean, they give people warnings and strikes eh, and stuff. Not for a lot of shit, though. Um, yeah, no, of... they let people get away with a lot. Yeah, like most social media companies, like uh, Twitter, for example, essentially, you know, say, hey, your account's suspended for 30 months or 30 months, 30 days for mm -hmm. X violation done on this tweet or whatever. You know, that's that's a standard thing. Yeah, I mean, I agree that I think YouTube should be more. I think there's a huge problem with YouTube that their terms of service are very vague. And if you violate them, they give you like this generic form letter. You don't specifically say like you said this, and this is violates our terms of service. You know, blah 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 blah. So I agree so with all that. Uh, yeah, it's very frustrating. But so it sounds like what you're saying is so okay. So you're in charge of YouTube. You're gonna press the reprimand button. You're gonna say rags. We're reprimanding you for whatever. Here's a reprimand. And then mm -hmm. if rags continues to behave the way he's behaving currently right now, 
do you press the well, cancel if button? it's just an email I mean, why he's not going to do anything what do you, well i mean uh, let, me, let, me, let me answer because i think something. that there should be a series of things like mm -hmm. you know potentially uh warning then then maybe demonetization or you know something like that just i don't know i don't think that people should just you said some shitty things and now you're gone i don't agree with that um and uh and also it's well, it's, if it's you're a, if you're reprimanding him, though, you are in the censorship position because you're the one saying that what he said is so egregious that he should be reprimanded, and you're uh, yeah, and you're trying to stop him from saying that in the you, future, which is I thought, uh, the whole point of doing I mean, I'm sorry, Sitch well, wait, said earlier wait, wait. he's not a free speech are, are you, absolutist, are you? Yeah. Well, no, yeah, but, but I thought you said okay. you said you weren't trying to censor them. I thought you just said no. Or did well, I it's a form of censorship, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but we're, it's, it's, uh, we're ta he, Sitch talked about censoring things like pedophilia and necrophilia and bestiality. Well, in, in the example you're we talking brought about, up, he was just talking about uh, Jen Walters talking about her feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that there should be uh, what I call subversive political message in popular mainstream media. Well, then, see, that so, creates a whole fucking problem uh, because then, then it's like you and I don't agree on that being a subversive I, I understand message. that, so, right. We, so we, then, we, then we you've got there. a specific group of people deciding just kind of nebulously based on, on, yeah. uh, on criteria that I don't agree with and that a lot of people wouldn't agree with that something could be. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a fucking slippery slope, man. Like, that is not yeah. a, a great way to go. Um, so, it, yeah, but, I, but here's the problem is that when I look at my reading of the situation, of, of the scene and of She-Hulk in general, and it basically seems to conform with everyone, even people that agree with its uh, view. And I'm not not familiar with your specifically, Dane, but with it definitely contradicts uh, Bob's point of view. Then I think I'm definitely right in my more right in my interpretation of of She-Hulk as a series and of that scene particularly. I mean, especially when like the main villain of the entire series is you know toxic males on the internet. Like it's just. I don't see how you could say that that scene was supposed to be like do, Jen do you in the wrong. That, it just seems so. Do you think there's there. not any like so, toxic males on the internet that just yeah, kind of, of go course after are. women? Of course, of course. Yeah. What, like, yeah. let's get. So you're arguing that the you know She Hulk shouldn't have toxic males on the internet being the villain. So yeah, I'm saying uh, it's, it's, that's it's, not what he was arguing. That's not what he was arguing. Yeah, about. He I'm was saying, saying that, that there's that, a specific that's context he's applying to his read of the of that. First yeah, scene I'm saying there's specific. You know, there's a specific political message in the show. Uh, that I don't think should be in these kinds of shows. You know, just as well, I, it, I don't want, I don't want fascism. It, you know, I don't want Disney kind of hidden though. You yes, and yeah. in, in terms of this is the well, this is the problem, and I, you know, because the the whole concept. And this is maybe this will be. I'm sure you guys won't agree with this because you have a you don't agree with sort of wokeness or cancel culture. I mean, the whole problem that I see right now is that essentially, you know, the left is basically being subverted by wokeness and wokeness is as i said in the beginning how i define it is to wake up to the idea that liberalism can't solve societal problems and so to me that's an incredibly dangerous idea for our society and so no i don't think things that kind of parrot that or that well, hearken to that should be in you know mainstream television shows um you know i i think that talking in these conceptual terms really doesn't get us anywhere in most cases mm -hmm. and, and that's why you know kind of connecting what is said in the show to you know, more conceptual, abstract ideas is where the problem comes in for me. Um, you know, as opposed to, you know, just what was said in the show. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, well, we weird. just we just tipped into like the two hour mark. So I want oh, to give you guys a chance to like um, basically, you know, wrap up your thoughts and have somewhat of a closing statement if you like. Sitch, I think we should mm -hmm. read like the twenty dollar and up super chats and any super chats that are relevant to the debate. So if you want to look at those, or okay. Sitch, did you do you have any closing no. thoughts that you want to say no. before we move on? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you want to, Dan? You want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. And then I need to feed my cat. Um, so, uh, what should I? I guess uh, a lot of the problems that I see with online discourse, we kind of touched on them today. And this isn't saying anything about you and uh, Adam and Sitch in particular. Just more that this is the result of the the culture uh, that we're approaching ideas uh, from kind of different angles. A lot of times um, the the words that we use, the language we use are very specific in a person's mind, but kind of different from what other people think of it as. Uh, and that's why it's important, I think, to get into, you know, defining terms and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, and, and that's, you know, maybe frustrating that that's why we didn't, I don't know, cover too much today. I don't know how much you guys wanted to talk about, but 
yeah, I do think it's important that we understand the the words that we're operating from and the uh, the definitions and stuff, so that we can actually kind of get to the core of it. Um, well, so this is actually, in a way, some one of the more productive discussions I've had. Well, we we um, kind of jumped into the the middle here, but if you you know want to think it through and maybe you know for, formulate uh, some arguments or whatever, we're happy to do it again. So, uh, Bob, uh, you want to do some closing or? I don't have any arguments, well, I, by the way. I, 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 just, I was curious what you guys think. <laughs> That's normally what my position is. You explain why I should take any of the stuff you say seriously. But, yeah, I still don't. Well, I, 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 I do have a closing, but there, there's one question I really want to ask you guys, and Little Movie Perp gave it to me. It's, it's a great question. Uh, what is your thought about the political messaging in the movie Starship Troopers? Starship Troopers. Uh, well, well, it's hard to say because it's, like it's like a parody. Well, I know it's weird because now, like, it was well, obviously so parody. Like, it was there, the guy who uh, did Robocop, lots right? There's lots of messaging in that, though. He, he's no, like, I, like, yeah, no. It's the same guy that did Robocop, it. right? That yeah. did Starship Troopers? Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think his intention was obviously to to satirize sort of this, you know, overly militaristic, jingoistic, soci- you know, society or potential society. Now, obviously, some people have sort of tried to uh, reinterpret it like being pro those uh, pro those things. But I don't think that was the intention of the movie. You no, think it was? It was you think it's all tongue and cheek? You think it's? Things. Yeah. I think it was a hundred percent tongue and cheek. Yeah. So, so that, do you think that should be allowed? Sure. Yeah. Well, hold hold on a second. That doesn't no. violate uh, liberalism. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm your not, only issue I'm not is against politic politicized movies. I'm against people who categorize criticizing politicized movies as sexism, racism, or transphobia. Mm-hmm. You you make as political a movie as you so, want, but people should be able to criticize it, especially if you're, uh, pu- you know, pushing some ideology subversively into the movie. I, like I, I should be able to criticize that. Like if you're well, and sneaking you, you Christianity into <laughs> yeah. the movie, well, not and people a, not, can criticize you. you for criticizing that. Why do you think your criticism yeah. is, should be yeah, like? But, you know, well, it's not fair though well, to I call think, somebody the... sexist, racist, or transphobic because right. they're criticizing the ideology. Well, yeah, it's not fair. It, because it, the well, problem is that, like, so if I say, oh, I don't like Starship Troopers because I'm very favorable towards, you know, jingoism or whatever the movie's trying to, whatever the movie's parroting, you know, it's like, okay, that's fine. You know, you're presumably, you're not going to receive, and if someone criticizes you mm-hmm. for having that opinion, and they just say, I think, you know, I think Sitch had a bad take on this. He's wrong about that's what the movie's about. It's like, okay, fine. You know, maybe people in the comments mm-hmm. harass me or whatever. But the difference when you start loving these accusations of like this person's racist, this person's sexist, this person's transphobic, yeah. because that has a way of materializing into into getting people canceled into getting them you know barred from okay. speaking. Okay, have you guys? And been I think canceled that's really before? Adam and my contention yeah. here. Have Have you guys been canceled before? Uh, I mean, uh, not no, not yet. No. So. Well, I mean, you know, I've seen some of the associations you've got. Uh, at least Adam, I don't know much about you, Sish. I would I would think that some of the people Adam's and uh, you know. Positions I, I'm sure you've defended, or at least you know advocated. You know nothing not about against. any of our positions. Come well, I know on. that you. I know you that you know at one point. I, mean, cool. I know that at one point. I know <laughs> you that at one point know you were cool with comp- Look, what's my I, yeah, position on voting? Well, one position. What's my position that's not on what I'm voting? Saying. You hey, can't ask that you question. Want, no one understands. You want to let me talk? Voting. Voting. Are you afraid of letting me talk? No. Huh? Go ahead. You have the floor. I know you that have the you talking early stick. on in my Look, channel, I promise whenever I, won't I had interrupt. like a couple of hundred subscribers and I made a video about Ethan Van Skyver, you showed up to fucking talk shit in my comments about that. So Ethan Van Skyver, who has, you know, let's just say a few problematic views, you were willing to defend him. Uh, well, and Ethan, you Van, been Ethan for Van Skyver that? is like a sexist and I don't think there's anything wrong with being a sexist. There's far because... more going on with Wait, Ethan Wait, there's nothing wrong with being a sexist? No, of course there's, not. So, so you why think you've been fine? canceled, Adam? Oh, why haven't God. you been canceled? <laughs> why haven't I been canceled? I, right. I guess. You just said I there's mean, nothing wrong with sexism. Why haven't you been canceled, Adam? Luck. We're not popular enough to be canceled. I think oh, that's yeah. the okay. answer to the gotcha. question. Mm-hmm. Ethan, okay. Ethan has Ethan has very much been canceled. Has he not? He's making Ethan, a lot of money. He's got a whole. Ethan, thing he's making going on millions. Where he's making on comics, yeah, but he lost. He's he made lost money his for comics that he hasn't even gotten out yet. He lost <laughs> like, his job at Marvel though because he. You think he was entitled he's... to keep that job? Wait, 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 wait. Stop. Okay, no yeah, one is. We're supposed okay, to be listen. doing closing statements. So uh, first of all, wait, wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. We have to address this. Okay, unless you're suddenly going to say I'm a super conservative libertarian, 
No one is suggesting that anyone's entitled to a job anywhere. That's not what anyone is talking about. The question is, should social pressure be levied against people to get them fired for, from I their jobs? I think that each okay? is a case-by-case case basis. It's not a question basis. of being entitled to have a job I think that each is a case-by-by-case case basis. Ethan and was case, fired for voting several, for Trump. Several, several, several times that he had said some really wow, funny Ethan no was way. fired was for fired voting for, for Trump. Trump. No, he That's wasn't. That's a story. fucking bullshit. He was That's fired bullshit, for being dude. an asshole. That's was... complete bullshit. You can look at the track record of the things that he said uh, and was probably reprimanded for. Do you privately think people should be fired for voting for Trump? Fired him. What? No, of course not. Okay. No, he wasn't fired for voting for Bob, Trump. There's lots of fucking Trump Bob, I interrupted. Uh, voters and Republicans that work in comics, man. There's Bob, lots I inter- of them. I, Dan and I both interrupted your closing statement. So, uh, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. <laughs> we'll give it back to you. Well, you know, I, essentially, my my point is to like, you know, and it, it it started out very simply, you know, these guys are very bad critics. They're pushing the wrong ideas, uh, and I don't like the idea that when people want to look up nerd culture stuff, they get these ideas. Um, and obviously, you know, we're not going to agree because obviously, you seem to be thinking that you know, sexism and racism and transphobia now are fine. I said then, sexism, you, know, you piece of fucking shit. <laughs> You so, piece so, what, of sexism, fucking shit. So sex, so sexism is fine, but the other stuff isn't. Why are you so now, triggered, Adam? Look, was I it listen. something I said, Adam? Don't take it out on Bob, listen, dude. I'm the one that said it. Uh, yeah. You right. know, when I have liars on the show, when I have oh. bad faith people <laughs> oh. on the show, I tend to get a little triggered. Okay. Projecting okay, much. So huh? you project. Look, so you're look cool with sexism, I said in the very beginning cool of the day. Adam, look, your okay. entire fucking online presence is bad faith, dude. That you're all of it, and I knew that going into it. We knew that going into it. And and honestly, how is, wait, how is how is his we, presence bad faith online? We we had we had a simple disagreement. Count it all. Just trust okay. me that I've looked into I'll, it. Man. I'll, like, I it's will, pretty obvious. I will listen, we, believe, obviously, of yours, what obviously, we believe you. Okay, we Anybody had a very a we had a very vocal about, disagreement Adam. at the beginning of the show. Why have you been canceled? Me calling something evil. What did I call evil? If you're Look, sexist, why why haven't you been canceled? Please, please, okay. turn your brains on. We've had a two-hour discussion. Obviously, I said in the beginning of the thing, in the very beginning of the debate, I said, please, anyone remember? Uh, You said racism was evil. Racism is evil, right? That's what you said, yeah. Yes. So, Bob. But you think sexism is uh, fine? Well, Bob, are you a groomer? What the do you, hell? Do what you the groom? Fuck does that mean? Man, you what know that's fuck? honestly a sign of desperation. You like, no, no, wait, 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 around, man. Okay. It's a sign of desperation. Wait, wait, why did you just get angry? Wait, why did you? Wait, why did you? Wait, why did you because both because just get you angry? know what that signals to your audience, and it's complete bullshit. Oh, oh so maybe that's why oh, Adam got angry. Oh, <laughs> you said he was like a racist. Someone gets it. Who said he was a racist? Dude, dude, he just said he said he was racist. He literally you just said, said Bob, sexism. Bob, that's what Bob said. Bob no, just said he was totally fine with racism. Cool sexism. Literally. No, you said I was fine with uh, sexism, racism, and transphobia. You said you were fine with racism. Usually all goes together. It's reasonable to assume that Does if you're it? anti-woke and sexism is considered oh a thing God. that's, you okay. know, then you would... You're Bob, so bad Bob, faith, it's Bob, disgusting, dude. Bob, you were you like... You guys are fucking trash. Bob, thank you. can fuck off, you... You're fucking disgusting. Would you like to finish your, uh, your closing? You're yeah. almost with, worse without, than anti woke people. Like the, you're without almost worse calling than anyone because you at least, racist, at least would they're you like open. to finish your uh, closing? Wait, 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 statement. wait. Why are you? I, I'm so confused as to why you're so incredibly triggered, Dane. I'm because wait, because he's fucking triggered? Adam called my friend Have a you piece heard of Adam? shit, dude. I mean, That's why I got okay. mad when Adam enough. called my friend. Yeah, he calls you. Okay, I understand. That's fine. Okay. It, Do you want to finish? It, it, it triggers people. Closing. I know. Like, right. I understand. So look, you want to finish like, your, Racism uh, is evil. Let me just make that clear here. I don't like racism. racism. Is evil. I don't like being called a racist. I don't like racists. Okay. Right. I don't mm-hmm. like racists on the show. I don't like to debate racists. Okay. So uh, please finish your closing statement, Bob. Okay. But, but let me just get you on the record right now. You're okay with sexism? Mm-hmm. I, sexism is fine. Yes. I'm, I have no problem with sexism. Okay, I, I uh, and you hold yeah. on. You were equating so, uh, geez. earlier. Harvey Weinstein was equated with being sexist, right? Look, mm-hmm. look. Just, now, just you're, now you're going to say, uh, are you, are because you, I, I are you because I what's happening with this sexism thing? Well, I just I feel like you know mm-hmm. uh, what when these guys say sexist, what they mean right. is like sexist jokes. 
Like, mm. make oh, sexist what we mean? jokes. Is that on what we mean? Yeah, no, that's not what is I that mean what at all. We mean specifically because okay, you know so that early in this conversation, you asked both of us. You said, "Do we believe that men and women should be treated the same and not be judged based on their gender?" And we both said, "Yes." Yes, totally. So, so when you're so your contention is that you think that when people are calling uh, Ethan Van Skyver, because that was kind of what brought up this whole thing. I'm not super familiar with him whatsoever. That he's just that he's he's levying sexist jokes. Yeah, all he's that are, doing that is that are just jokes. But and that's, that is, but that's all what he's Adam doing says. is making. And apparently, sexist he doesn't jokes. know about or is playing blind to the look, many other examples look, of things. Look, I've watched. Okay, well, that's what, wait, okay, according so that's to She Hulk, if you don't like the show, you're a sexist. So right, guilty. Okay. I'm guilty as charged. Did She Hulk say that? When was that? Yeah, said I, show? I, I, yeah, Did I missed Disney that. Say line. that? Did Marvel say that? No, the show. Be good faith, Adam. Can you please? Kevin Feige called me up and he said, "Listen, Sitch. Yes, I don't want Doctor Strange to show up in WandaVision or She Hulk because he's a white male." Well, what role would Doctor Strange even have in WandaVision? Just to be a white male. What do you mean? That would be his role. So there's white males in that show. Vision's in that show. Oh my! We need to. We're closing statements here. Sitch, are there any? Bob, I'm going to assume you're done with your closing statement. Do we have any? I, super we, we've gotten a lot from y'all already. So, uh, Goro Saro for ten months says, "Thank you for the thank you for being a free will seeker." Says, "I just want to let organized chaos know that I am a racist reactionary, and I owe my political transformation to Sitch and Adam." Thank you, Goro. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Which wh hold on? <laughs> which way? Which way have you gone? Are you like we, less we've racist? Made, he's saying we made racist. him racist. We've oh. made him racist. Dang. That's what he's saying. Yeah. All right, we need to work on Gorosero. Let's get our. I know. Act I'm together. so sorry. Um, a lot of people were asking, could you explain the arc? I don't know if you have time for this. Can you explain the arc of Jen learning to control her anger in the TV show? You really didn't. That's the point. That's probably oh, going to be yeah. you know something explored further. This arc was that part of her overall arc was that she was overconfident and she was proven wrong at the very end of the. Basically, the end of the season, and I imagine season two or whatever. Well, you know, it's the Hulk didn't overcome his anger in the first movie or second movie or third movie. So, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Andrew Clyde for five hours says, um, "How can you judge YouTubers by a pattern of behavior, but then not uh, judge? But those YouTubers cannot then judge the patterns of behavior from you know specific production companies in terms of their media." Oh, that's a good question. Well, I mean, uh, the the patterns behavior of essentially uh, women are equal to men. Um, I don't have an, any issue or towards that pattern behavior. Do you? No. So they're saying is how can you judge YouTubers by saying, oh, you know, they're sexist because they have a pattern of behavior where they make jokes about you know women or whatever. But then if if a bunch of Marvel movies seem to having similar patterns, only you know levied against men. Why is it not okay for well, them then to call out Disney for having, you know, that kind of it's, behavior? It's, I mean, I haven't seen them levy anything against men. Well, all yeah, I've I mean, seen is essentially the idea that women and men are equal. And guess what? I don't have a problem with that. Right. So you just you just disagree with the the perspective, essentially. That yeah, doing. I okay. disagree. If somebody is going to always point out when women, you know, always make fun of women whenever they're on screen or whenever they're part of the staff, then yeah, I might have a problem with that. Gotcha. Um, someone asked, uh, Sitch, please ask Chaos why he skipped through Mahler's video to see if he said anything about the parents in Doctor Strange 2. I'm not sure. What is that about? So, okay. So it's the six hour video. I was just curious because he hangs out with lots of sexist and racist people. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just wondering, you know, if you'd mention it. And to his credit, he didn't. Do you think... Mahler is sexist and racist, or he just hangs out with sexist. And wait, wait, people. wait! Why are you? I don't know why his are you ideology. Why are you to explain his ideology? With racism, Sitch. Uh, the war of the sexes goes on forever. They do go together a lot. I, racism uh, and sexism. Sure, do? I necessarily agree yeah. with that, but it doesn't yeah. really matter. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else? Um. Someone want to know why you called Eric July a chunky monkey? Oh, that's me. Ooh, that um, sounds well oh, because it man. was a. That sounds. I was referencing. I was actually sexism. Refer, uh, quoting Iron Man three uh, whenever I said it. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean the the presumption there is that it's a racist term, and it's not. You can look it up. Uh, so, you, mean, so you're, you're saying you're saying calling a a black person 
a monkey is not racist? No, Adam, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not okay. saying that just call, blanket calling a, a black person a monkey is okay. I'm saying that that particular uh, context matters, right? Yeah. You, I would, you guys well, agree with in that? What, so, what, I, so, okay, I don't so, understand. What is the context where it's okay to do that? The context is that, uh, you know, it wasn't a racial remark. It, we, we, I was very clearly talking about he used to be a little bit thicker in the middle, mm -hmm. and he'd been talking shit on Bob's, uh, you know, uh, shape that he really doesn't know anything about. Uh, the bigger question with the chunky monkey thing is that why are the people that are bringing well, well, this up I'm, so I'm desperate confused. to mention? Hold on, why are the people that bring this up so desperate to mention that, but they won't point out the very obviously fucking racist and bigoted shit that Eric July says and said for I don't know half hour tantrum after his debate with Bob? Well, no, I, I just want to get this know, straight because it sounds like you're saying it's okay as long as the black person is fat. No, well, that's not what all, I'm saying. We need, we need Adam, to specify. Adam, you're a bad faith fucking piece of shit, dude, and you know you are. You're a fucking so, idiot or you're a bad faith piece of shit. I, One I of the think, two. What did you just say? You said I think the, the context issue, was that he's fat. That's I, I, exactly okay. what you said. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. let me let me try to let me try to defend you a little bit better. <laughs> Dang. Um I think what you're what you're trying to say is, you know, you when you call him a chunky monkey, you literally just meant he was fat. You were referencing Iron Man three. You didn't mean it to have a racial implication. And in in, in the moment it happened, anybody that saw mm -hmm. it and it's still available to watch, you can tell what it's about, right? right. Okay. I have okay. talked I understand. about listen, yeah, I understand. I understand it. Yeah, I don't think mm -hmm. I agree. I don't think you meant it in a racial uh And also either. why am I being canceled for that, right? You know what I mean? Well, but see, well, but let me let me cancel cancel culture. Am I let right? me explain why I think people uh, fixate on it. I think people fixate on it because they feel like that uh, you do the same thing where you see someone say something that's a joke or they make a comment and you well, assume a sort of negative racist I'll sexist put it this attention. Way. No, you're, you're okay. That's one. fair enough. But yeah, that's being charitable. I'll, I'll tell you this. Once it was said, well, the first person, the person that brought it up in my chat is my friend. And I hate to do the I have a black friend thing, but <laughs> he was jokingly <laughs> Please, no. pointing it out because mm -hmm. he knew that it's not racist. He said, oh, uh -huh. you better not. And I said, ah, dude. And then I was like later, right. I was like, I bet somebody's going to fucking... Anyway, whenever As I, they did, I yes. when yeah. someone did mention it in like a accusatory way, I looked it up. If I had found that that was a racial uh, trope, I would have fucking apologized for it. That's not what I found. Well, wait, 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 wait. I mean, what, calling a black on, person a you... monkey is a racist trope. I mean, right. not the combination of chunky monkey. Right. And if I had found out that chunky monkey, if I somehow misunderstood my yeah. understanding of where I'd heard it and that it wasn't as much about weight as it was race or something, I would have said, I shouldn't have fucking said this. I was ignorant, and, and now I learned, and I'm going to do better, which is well, what I, how I think okay. generally society should handle these things. I'm Wait, mm -hmm. I'm really confused by what you're saying. You're so, Okay, so wait, you, you didn't say that in regards to the Chunky Monkey comment, and you're saying you didn't say that because Chunky Monkey specifically doesn't have a historical... Those two words combined doesn't have a specific historical racist. Listen, uh, listen, the term chunky you're... monkey is used to describe somebody who's mildly obese or an ice cream flavor. Okay, I, I, I'm okay, but I'm asking, yeah. I'm confused by Dane's answer now. I'm confused by why you're confused by it. Please. Okay, explain. you said, you said if you looked up the term chunky monkey and it turned out that you didn't, obviously, I'm, and I ascribe, you didn't mean it in a racist context, but if you said it, and then you looked up and said, oh, this actually has some very specific racist connotation. You would have then apologized even though you didn't mean it in that way. Yes. Okay. But so. Why okay. is that confusing? Well, well no, it's confusing there's to me nothing because really like. wrong with that, is there? I mean, well, no, no. What's confusing to me is that. The, the, the thing that's confusing to me is because A, I would just say, well, listen, I obviously didn't mean it in a racist fashion. And that would be the all you'd have to do you wouldn't he, have to apologize for it and say that you're ignorant I, but I number mean, right. two it's not like a, making an apology is some like terrible thing it's wait, like wait 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 number two it was possible that somebody wait 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 let me finish here let me finish here number two it it doesn't even it makes even less sense to me because just because the combination of the word chunky and monkey doesn't have a specific racial connotation is irrelevant to just hearkening black people to a monkey is the racist trope regardless of whether you add a modifier to it or not um, I, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily know that that's the case. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you're, you, um, you're, okay. you, you wouldn't do it <laughs> so, again, so, right? I mean, well, let me, put, let me so, put it this way. So, so I, whenever I was looking it up and I did, I, I looked uh -huh. it up to see if I, if there isn't, because I like to look for learning experiences, whether that's mm -hmm. for me or I could have passed it on to my audience or whatever. If I, you know, the only thing that I found was a Reddit post with a woman who has a, a half black, half uh, white daughter. And she would call her daughter a uh, chunky monkey, you know, whatever. And she did that once in a public, in a grocery store. And the, the mother is white, by the way. 
Right. Uh, and uh, some, you know, fucking screeching liberal woman, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. came up. You can't say that. You can't. It's like it was a right. term of endearment. She called her kid that for a long time. Right. Then right, you look yeah. at the, the replies to that and. A lot of people seemingly liberals or woke or whatever are saying, mm -hmm. yeah, that's there's mm -hmm. that's not a problem. Like it's it's very clearly mm -hmm. uh, the context matters. You know, uh, I'm not mm -hmm. here to explain how language works or anything, but um, it matters. OK, mm -hmm. I, I, I yeah, doesn't I so, don't mean it doesn't make sense to me. Don't you? we I have mean, a have monkey you guys, emote? Have you guys heard of the expression grease monkey? Yes. Yeah. What does it mean? Uh, someone who works on cars or engines right. or something. to that. Yeah, a mechanic. Right. So what if but if have Eric mechanic, July was working on his car, term? I would not walk up and call. Yeah, him I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. try. Well, I would no, not call a black thing. mechanic. And, and if I had, well, if I had any thought of him being a black guy in my mind at the time, I no, I, I, I'm, not I'm not I, accusing you. I'm not accusing you of being racist. Right. I don't think you were. I'm just saying I would not call a black mechanic a grease monkey because of the connotation. Yeah, so. true. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Okay, we would avoid that. Yeah. If for no other reason than having to deal with well, shit like people bring now, if it was a if it was a woman yeah. working on a car, I'd say, "Listen, why don't you make me a sandwich and I'll fix this up for you." Agree. <laughs> there you go, uh, Britt Cormier for one hundred dollars. Thanks so much, Britt, for the hundred dollars. Says uh, EFAP reviewed Pillar of Garbage's video about critical drinkers. Video they claim if the the claim is if they claim is EFAP targeted a single creator. But garbage also targeted a single creator. Are we saying that just because the channel is small, you cannot criticize them? If criticism is valid, size should not matter. No, um, but, but the criticism isn't valid for one thing. The criticism that uh, Pillar, uh, way, you know, gave was spot on. I just watched the movie, and mm -hmm. then I hear about Drinker's take, and it's just like, and the the editing is so fucking deceptive or lazy. Mm -hmm. I don't know which. I don't. I'm not going to pretend to know what's in his head, but it was not. not what, good. what did he and review? I'm not familiar with it. Glass Onion. Just glass on you. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't think it's I like I'm not going to sit here and defend everything about the movie. There's stuff you could criticize, but the way that Drinker went mm -hmm. about it is just almost willfully, or mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. There's there's some right, but the, I think the the comment or the question that the that Brit was asking was about, and I, I don't remember exactly what you guys said, mm -hmm. but you were you were calling out EFAP for you know targeting uh, Pillar of Garbage, which would then because they're targeting a single creator, then you know some of their fans would go over and attack them. Well, but Pillar of Garbage well, is attacking this way. I don't cover channels that are fashion. smaller than me, and I'm just sick just because I don't. Th there's no point. Listen, I, 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 there's, I, there's so many people with larger platforms. I believe in, uh, you know, what they call punching up, so to speak. Right. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 there's there's so many people with more of a position of, you know, I guess insulation from criticism, whereas if my six thousand subscriber channel. Uh, mm -hmm. And I started talking shit on a channel with a hundred subscribers, uh, and, and you know I, I, I probably, yeah, I don't know. I, I would just what feel if, like an asshole. Dan, well, what be, if somebody, I mean, what if somebody fair, was overtly racist and they had a very small channel, but they were like a neo-Nazi? I don't, I don't cover them either. I don't cover channels. Yeah, would I, it be, I don't would call it, would it be, but would it be in general? Okay, so you, well, you think minute, you minute. think if somebody covered a, a, a literal neo-Nazi <laughs> and and. Uh, you know, addressed the issues that they were the racist ideology that they were spewing. Well, let me out explain. I guess let me explain what my goal bad. is when I cover stuff. Right, is not to go. You this comes back to earlier. You, you asked about what we want to happen to rags, as an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not worried about rags in particular. When I cover a mm -hmm. content creator who I think is saying some shitty things, my point is to look at the ideas and to explain why they're not good ideas. Not to say that, this that's person not should true. be the target that's of punishment. Yes, that's it plainly is true. not true. Whenever you it call somebody a racist, you are making them a target of punishment. You are well, not I, just I, criticizing I, their ideas. You are literally calling them racists and transphobes. When, you, when, when, is, when are transphobes or racists getting punished on YouTube? Mm -hmm. You know, you know that that makes them a target. We, we all agreed. Racism is what? What, what's wrong. happening to yeah. it's evil. It seems to be incentivized. It seems to be fucking, you know, rewarded. They're making a lot of money off this stuff. <laughs> You're just that oh, seems yeah. completely <laughs> dishonest. It's great with this. No, I, 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 yeah, I think you, you know that they are. It, man. Look, I think that's kind of your point, if, Adam. If, I think if you kind of normalize these look, ideas and if, you play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Whenever I would make video, you know, back when I used to make videos, uh, and I would make videos that were not. You know, that were going over gender dysphoria and the DSM-5 and just using, you know, very plain language about statistics and criticizing sort of the way in which it's been, you know, shifted into an identity and all these sorts of things. All those videos instantly demonetized by YouTube and instantly shoved down on the algorithm. 
And then you'd have, you know, people that were saying, you know, oh, you don't need gender dysphoria to be trans and they're getting hundreds of thousands of views and YouTube is promoting their content. So I don't think it's fair to say, to say that. Uh, well, and well, also, I, mean, I don't know, the fan of also, Menace is doing pretty well, man. You know, look, Eric we, yeah. is doing pretty well. We uh, would, fucking, we would not be having this debate right now, though, if you were just levying, you know, innocent criticism at other content creators. You were calling them racist, sexist, and transphobes. And I feel uh, unjustly. Dude. It's, I, it's I a pattern do, of behavior, dude. Well, and I, I want to go back because I, I looked up the Pillar of Garbage thing. Um, so, first of all, he's not like a small channel. He has 60,000 subs. So he's larger right. than our streaming channel. And this video he, he put out has... a lot smaller than EPAP. Sure, but his video has over 300,000 views. So oh, it's not like he's some like, you know, and a lot of those are from streamer. EFAP people should, because mm -hmm. any video that covers EFAP in any, any effectively is going to get a lot more views. Look I mean, at all the videos. comments are positive that I'm seeing at the top, so I don't unless he just well, prune them all, I don't know. I mean, Possible? good for him. What's I'm your just point? saying like to me when you say like you shouldn't go after smaller YouTubers cuz like yeah, if, if someone has a video and you know they have like 100 subs and 10 views you know mm -hmm. maybe i'm not going to cover it right but i think having a 60 000 subscribers and over 300 000 views i mean i think that's completely fair game to talk about but that, that that's only after the fact what were the views before do you know i i don't but i mean you don't either so like just say can assuming i look it up the social blade show like views, views for... and therefore it's okay i don't, to... I don't think it shows so of... well okay well so if it had a hundred thousand views before efab covered it would that be fine no, because look, even no. if a, one ex, hold on, even if one example is a certain thing, I just generally am saying that that my view on it, my criticism of that type of content is just that there's other ways to do it that aren't so uh, potentially uh, harmful, right? Like I'm not saying that every single example uh, results in harm. I'm just saying that there is a fucking culture on YouTube that mm -hmm. has become you know almost like a bully culture using audiences. Uh, so you are bullying it, people when you're calling them racist. No, I'm not. How, no, I'm yes, not. you are. No, I'm you not. You literally are. I'm not. Look, people get fired every day for being racist, okay? Good, I guess. I don't know. You know, like, what the fuck do you want me to do? To, like, just defend every single example of someone? Maybe. Look, you're, maybe it'd you're be nice if these your guys response actually to levied is good perfect. criticism and stuff, always complaining about women and and I was being glib, Adam, like you have been several times throughout this debate. So, no, you know. I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, you, wait, wait, wait. You, but that's the, but that's the problem. Exclaiming good is a perfect example of bully culture. But that's the problem is, well, first of all, I think I think Bob and Dane have different views on this. And I think, yeah. and as what Bob just said right there, you know, you're accusing these people as just basically being either explicit or secret uh, sexist racist. And that's sort of the genesis of their, you know, not liking I, media. So, I honestly don't care if it's secret or whatever they're constantly complaining about women or minorities or you know trans people in the media always every time it comes up every mm -hmm. time it comes up they don't analyze yep. it they just say oh this is bad oh there's a woman involved that's bad and even that's more than all that, they they're, do. they're lying some of them lie about the media lie about certain aspects of the production mm -hmm. they focus on the production instead of the media itself they start calling mm -hmm. it this and that before it even yeah. comes out like that's when it becomes very obvious to me. There's a lot of content creators that are saying and doing shit I really disagree with that I will probably never cover because mm -hmm. the ones mm -hmm. that I tend to cover are the ones that are just so obviously cartoonishly doing it in bad faith. And whether or not they are using racism and sexism and bigotry because they are that or they're just using it because it gets some clicks, I don't fucking care. The effect is what mm -hmm. matters and right. they're doing it. So I'm not, I guess I'm not familiar with, with the YouTubers you're talking about. I'm just really familiar with EFAP and I know that the very first episode of EFAP that I was on, we covered a uh, no BS. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. Uh, yeah, no BS. Yeah, no bullshit. Yeah, yeah, a no bullshit video where he was, uh, you know, criticizing Avengers for being too woke. And when I was on EFAP, all we were doing was making fun of and criticizing no BS for overly being overly critical of what is woke. And saying how ridiculous it was that you know he was mm -hmm. seem, seeming to levy all these complaints. So I, to me, mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair to to paint e EFAP, who I'm familiar with, with this brush of like whenever a woman's on screen, you know, they're just criticizing I don't think women. We, I don't think either one of us have done that. Well, or would well that, do that I'm not That's, even talking about. We do EFAP have very different criticisms of EFAP than we do mm -hmm. of like the Phantom Menace largely. I see. But, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um. Let's see if anyone. Any other one? Any other questions here? <laughs> I'm not asking that question. <laughs> so these questions are okay. 
So, so when let me ask you guys something. When yeah. Ryan Kennell's in his car and complaining about Commissioner Gordon and Catwoman being black, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Who who's Ryan Kennell? Right. Ryan Kennell. Right. Yeah. RK Outpost. He's a uh, yeah. You know, the... I mean, I've been on a show. I was on Friday mm -hmm. Night Tights with Ryan Kennell, but that's really the only time. What I... was his? I'd have to see. I'd have to see what he specifically said. He said, "Yeah, we, we know, would we would need to." He see said, the "They context. made Commissioner Gordon black, and I don't like black people." Like, what would, what did he say? Well, if he said of. that, that would be pretty it, bad. It did he really did he call Commissioner Gordon a, a monkey? That would be pretty bad. <laughs> that he would be pretty that. bad. Yeah. That'd wow, you guys bad. are outrageously bad faith. This is ridiculous, man. Yeah. I asked what, you what he hold, said. Hold what do you second. mean? They're joking. They're joking. Bob, they're look, just joking. Look, we've already we have already look, Dan. We don't believe Dane is a racist. The Batman. Like, whether or not I'm you guys don't Batman. believe we're racist, that's like an open question. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of think it's a... No, I don't. I wouldn't Ryan lump you Kendall in with just a racist. I think that, that some Batman. of the ways that you uh, go about analyzing this stuff and, and your, I guess your conclusions about it, uh, they can be beneficial to people that are openly raci racist. Yeah. Uh, that they might use those arguments, you know, your arguments or some of your, you know, uh, well, reasonable people might doubt use arguments. your arguments to like groom school children too. Whoa, hold on, what? Yeah, uh, Jesus Christ, what, what the fuck? The... Where's that coming uh, from, dude? Wait, what are you talking about? Well, what, you're what you're you you're about? promoting an ideology that's being uh, put into these movies surreptitiously. What? Okay, so well, wait. Where does that? Where, hold on. Whoa, you whoa, what, what wait. Does grooming what? mean to you? What do you think grooming? Yeah, means? this is a huge jump. Oh, I should have been paying attention. I was totally watching. <laughs> you know what, man? I don't, even I don't know what you guys are talking about. I can tell about. that this is just fucking. It's getting absurd. It's been so, absurd, but it's getting beyond the pale now because. Um. I, I so I, I looked up this Ryan. Ken Someone clipped the the segment you're talking about of Ryan Kennel and the Batman thing, and I don't think you were being fair with um his complaint. He didn't say, "Oh, I don't like that Commissioner Gordon and Catwoman was black." He said, from his perspective, uh, that he thought that, th like, they had them that that there were too many characters that were white that were showed as like being immoral characters, and that the only characters that were shown moral that were white was Alfred and Batman, and all the other white characters were bad. And then he was saying that he thought all the black characters were portrayed as good, and he thought that had a racial a messaging to it. Yeah, now I don't necessarily agree with that messaging, but that was his. That was what he said. He didn't say was he was he in a car when he was saying that. Yes, he's in a car. a different video. There's no, a video where he talked about it has points against it. I don't know. This is he's in a car, so well he is, might have said it again at a different point. But no, I mean that's the one that I saw was the car yeah. one, and, and like that's the kind of thing that just you, you know obviously there's there's shades of things, right? There, mm -hmm. We're not just, and, and that's where it becomes a problem because you're saying that any criticism of some criticism being uh, uh having racist elements to it right and this is the problem with arguing in favor or against very broad general uh, Look, we, ideas we but... all we all ad admitted like you the the chunky monkey thing like we're just joking around with you but we don't think you're a racist like obviously we think you. you know it's just you know something said offhandedly you didn't quite understand the connotation people on the internet tend to be a-holes and they took the clip and ran with it okay but the, the same thing is going on with the Ryan Kennel thing. Like he's making a, a criticism that I mean, you can if agree you with it or disagree with it. Of me but making I, a comment kind of like the Chunky Monkey thing, then you could call me a racist, and you you know you might be right, or you said that I could be. Right. Yeah, but the, the, di the difference is the difference is Ryan Kennel's statement is like a criticism that's not racist. He didn't go out calling anyone Chunky Monkey, okay? So he's saying, well, okay, let me he, let me ask making, what, do, what do you propose that should whoa. be done that we should just ban calling people racists on the internet? No, oh please look. Well, how I, do you control for this? Is what I'm saying. How do you control for just do you, know, you uh, do so many you people care, online? Dane, do you care about making false accusations? Like if I if I got done with this live stream and I decided to have a change of heart and said, hmm, you know, I don't think Dane treated me fairly on that live stream, and now. I am going to go out and tell everyone he's a racist because of this chunky monkey comment that he made. I would say that that would be bad faith. I wouldn't sure. do that. That would be something things are different I than other would things. not do. Mm -hmm. Examples are different than other examples, But it appears to me that that's something mm -hmm. you might do. And I'm just no. trying to discern if it is. 
It's not. No, I would not go around making just false accusations. I mean, for one thing, false implies you're well, you talking about it in like legal terms. I Bob, can give my opinion Bob. the same way that I can say that you guys have a false uh, accusation towards Disney or whatever, and 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 that's but, but calling just my read somebody, of it, right? Calling somebody racist, sexist, or a homophobe is a is, is a based much on a pattern of behavior. Thing. Is based on a yeah, pattern it's a of pattern behavior. behavior yes. Dude. Okay. Okay. We're we're getting off in the weeds here. There, it's either a false accusation or an accurate accusation. I'm saying when you're doing it, it's a false accusation. I'm trying to figure out if you if you yourself. Well, that's the thing, Adam. We've already established you're okay accusation. with these behaviors. Okay, that's completely bad faith. But we can just let it go. Yeah, Since, are there any, that's what you said. Uh, are there any? I'm racist, Bob. He just. <laughs> He's gonna, he's gonna uh, get mad and tell everybody I'm racist. So don't do that. I'm not. Yeah, no, I, I'm Dane. Dane. It, even even if Bob goes straight to his Twitter and starts tweeting out Adam is a giant racist, racist piece. I'm not gonna. I wouldn't do that to you, Dane, because I have my own principles that I like to uphold. Well, that's good to know, man. And and you know, and I think that maybe uh, I don't know. I I would love to know examples of and i know you weren't weren't necessarily prepared for me to be here but like if if you knew of me just straight up calling somebody a racist uh you know with blindly like based on one example i would address that myself and okay correct myself okay and, and that's cool even that's take cool. it off okay. the internet because i believe we're in making progress I we're making progress Look okay at this. so this is okay this is prompt so you're saying the pattern of behavior is what get someone, you know, cl call their racist or not always. Or, or I, like I said earlier, I think a lot of people handle shit poorly, but I understand yeah. that. But so the example was Ryan Kennel. I went to his exact video. I don't agree with his criticism, but I don't think it gets him labeled a racist. Is was there another what is the pattern of behavior for him that gets him labeled a racist? Well, we'd have we'd have to be here wow. another hour, but like yeah. basically, I, my yes. question is: is so you have like you a you have like a notepad only... document somewhere of like the the racism <laughs> only... by Ryan Kendall? Well, let's <laughs> maybe we can make that a part two. Okay, it seems like I don't really want to. I mean, I don't want a part two where I have to defend other YouTubers. I'm just curious if this right. is sort of living. I mean, up to you the standard. are you're here defending other oh. YouTubers right now. Well, so the... well, no, I'm calling the question your standard that you're living. Yes, saying, are your you perception the of these other yes. YouTubers. We're not defending them. Obviously, we're prepared to discuss why I think Ryan Kendall is racist i would have prepared you know some notes on that but you well, know, maybe we can get Ra studying. ryan kennel involved in that debate since i don't really know <laughs> i don't really content. want to have that debate yeah. but maybe ryan kennel could have the debate with you if he yeah. wants to um so are, are we all like good i mean i see i don't know if you have a line into like jeremy griggs or anything they don't seem to want to talk yeah they don't seem into debates mm. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, that's their, that's their jam. I, I know Gary, I mean, Gary's like no drama. He doesn't like drama. So, and good on so him. One, like, one uh, question I'd like that's to, that's his I prerogative. Go, I gotta go feed my cat. But one question, like if, if, if so many people are calling Ryan Kennel racist and, and, you know, Jeremy Griggs and, and well, and a lot of people are, mm -hmm. why are they so successful on YouTube and have not been, you know, well, maybe they're their wrongly calling them racist because or maybe we live in a society so, where so racism people, is so I thought when being wrongly prevalent. called racism was a problem. If it's not a problem, then... Yeah, but, no, but this is... Okay, wait. This is this yeah. argument to me is, is not a good argument because you're basically saying, well, because the attack that tried to get them canceled failed, yeah, it doesn't work it, yeah then therefore it doesn't exist like well no it's been, it just means dude, it they've failed. been staff for at least three years that i know of that's I've like you know a lot of people daily calling these people racist you that's would like think i mean that's like it would stick that's like when people mm -hmm. say you know oh you know brett weinstein wasn't canceled because he ended up getting like a better career out of his canceling than being a teacher it's like well no he was no, still this canceled. Isn't like that this is like this is like it seems to be something. it seems to almost benefit them to be constantly called racist, you know. Well, uh, but what is that? Uh, then that tells you that there's a large contingent of people that feel the same way. That feel that wokeness is out of control in our society. No, I mean, it, yeah, okay, there is a contingent of it, but a lot mm -hmm. of it exists on YouTube specifically. There yeah. is a certain right because algorithmic and issue you know why? And, right. Well, here's the question: Why is it that YouTube, when you look at the political sphere of YouTube, it seems to be dominated not by sort of mainstream ideas? And the reason is because that's the only place you can go to get non-mainstream ideas. That's why it's on YouTube. That's why YouTube yep. is dominated it's a by these ideas. Self-perpetuating culture. It's yeah. created its own culture of of no, YouTube. No, no, it's because no, it's no. been canceled need, by the mainstream. Dude, do, no, have you not seen no. the studies that show that like right-wing radicalization, a lot of it happens on YouTube? So well, a lot. Well, okay. Well, first yeah, yeah, of all, wait, I, well, let me say. <laughs> let me let me say two things. First of all, <laughs> that's a complaint. I think I think you have the the. Well, I'll let you feed your cats because I don't want your cats to starve. Um, I think you have the the order of events incorrectly. It's that 
basically the not the, the voices that are saying things that are not acceptable to the mainstream get pushed into YouTube because that's the only place that people can say those things. And then people tune in and watch them because they say, hey, I feel this way. No one in mainstream television is saying this. So I'm, you know, attracted or, to watching the people on YouTube. And then the second or thing around 2016 or so, hold on, let me, let me just finish. Thing the second thing, this, this incent, the, incentivized let me just finish. The second like thing regarding, I'm just going to keep talking. The second thing and... regarding those studies that you talked about, a lot of those studies, I'm trying, I don't remember the lady who did the main one. I mean, her study was like completely batshit insane. And she basically just did six degrees of separation. I know that I was thrown mm -hmm. under the bus in that study, you know, for, for, for uh, radically uh, for radicalizing right wingers, and that when we had a, we had someone that actually did a a, a, new, a fairly neutral study named Mark Ledwich on, and he actually showed that if you actually do look at the where YouTube is routing people, it's routing them not to radicals on the left and right, but just to main whatever they considered mainstream, whether it be on the left and the right. So it's just pushing people into mainstream uh, networks. Content, now this was a couple yeah. years ago, so it's possible the algorithm has changed, but back then that's what it was doing. So are we uh, done with super chats? Can we say goodbye? I don't want the cat to um, have a look. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a cat person myself. He's so. mad at me. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah one, uh, you know, it was fun. You. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks. I'm gonna go. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thanks for coming on. Mm -hmm. um, take care, guys. Take care. Let's see. Is there another one? Oh, there's another one for you, Bob. If you're oh no, Bob's gone. <laughs> Well, let's see, I wanted to ask, how is clown person a racial slur? Clown person? Hmm. That's a racial slur? It doesn't seem like a racial slur. He said, I think, round, raz, rags. Rags called somebody a... Uh, clown person. A huh? clown person. And he said he thought that he wouldn't say that if he was white. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, clowns. That's like white face. So. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean. I don't know. It seems like it's the opposite, right? <laughs> A clown person means racist, right? Yes, yes. Anyway, let's read the rest of your guys' super chats. Thank you guys uh, for your generous donations. For sticking yeah, uh, let us know in the chat. How, uh, Actually, that was an interesting it. conversation. Yeah. Uh, PC for five dollars says, "I missed the donation train from the Sunday stream. Great, by the way. Here are my dues adjusted for inflation. Well, thank you, PC. <laughs> On Sunday, we watched. Thank you. We watched the uh, Vice News panel about uh, Asian whether Asians should assimilate." into American culture and we had surprise guest Vince who was the based Asian guy in the suit on the the panel and he he joined us. Yeah, he joined and us. He, he hung around for a long time, like three or four hours. Like three so. or four hours, yeah. And I actually even chaptered the live stream. So if you just want to check out his performance, you can. There's a link. Yep. So check it out. Andrew Clark for two dollars. Thank you so much as uh <laughs> Adam and Sitch show eighteen rates of free. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I someone I think it was Andrew told me that uh, Mahler and, and Gary were arguing over whether it should be called the Adam and Sis show or the Sitch and Adam show. What do you, nice. Gary? Come wow, on. Wow, was Gary taking the base S class position? No, he was taking the Adam and Sitch position. Oh. I was like, I thought he was no drama, Disgusting. but I mean, what's he doing? Disgusting. Why are you starting drama, Gary? Disgusting. Jeez. You need to chill out. Wow. Hurtful. We need to we need to get Sitch Listen, on Friday Night Tights. We got. I've been on Friday Night Tights once, and Sitch hasn't been on at all. So. We got to ban Mahler from the show. Okay, he's he's <laughs> crowding this A team supremacist propaganda. No, I don't think he should be no, allowed on the no. show. Anymore. Mahler's a cherished friend of the show. No, no, course. we have to get him get him out of here. A team supremacy is not allowed on this not allowed on this platform. God, I hope Mahler is a sexist too. I guess <laughs> I should I should have asked Dane that before he left. Right. Well, is he a sexist though? <laughs> No, he just hangs out with them. So. Rags is definitely a sexist. I'm confident. There you that. go. Confident in that. You can't say okay. You got to be careful because when you're saying that, you mean someone who's making edgy jokes, not someone who actually literally believes that like women should be treated as you know sex women, classes women should be should not be allowed to vote that kind of right. thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're not well, Kavar. I mean, listen. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the law has won me over a little bit on certain <laughs> issues that women should not be allowed to vote on. But okay, other other than that, no, obviously, look, everyone right. should be allowed to vote. That it, we never even got to that, but that's what he was pushing at when he was bringing up Starship Troopers. He's like, I don't think no. The, well, does the movie talk about 
Yeah, the no vote. Or is that Look, just every in the, time um... voting comes up, people bring up Starship Troopers because they're yeah, like, but they're no the voting book. without military service. Chat, is that in the movie or is that it only is in the, in the book? Movie. I don't remember. It is definitely. It's, it's like in the first fifteen minutes of the movie. Okay, they're it's been like, a long time since I've seen the movie. I just know that's Carl. Carl's in favor of that. <laughs> of course, I'm not in favor of that. I'd, but that's what they, that's why they brought it up. They were like, "Oh, you're right winger, so you probably love." Well, no, they were bringing up to see. Troopers. Is it, they were bringing up to ask us, "Is it okay for someone to criticize the political message of Starship Troopers?" Hell the yeah, or the book. And as I said, you know, um, when as you so we have two points, and I think the first point that you love is important, which is yes, of course you can criticize it. You someone criticizing the message of Starship Troopers is not going to get them, you know, canceled from society, you know, of course, essentially. Uh, so that's an important thing. And then the second thing is, and, and this is my point is that, you know, complaining about, you know, super like a, like an authoritarian jingoism or nationalism is totally fine. That's not, you're not advocating for a society outside the bounds of, you know, a classically liberal society that is the foundation of America's belief. They never got that point, Sedge, but I mean, it's obviously, so like, you, the argument would be Starship Troopers is in itself an illiberal society. Totally, so, yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, that, that's not going to be addressed. But. Uh, Boof Skim McGee, thanks so much for being a free seeker for four months, says, thank you for keeping me going and encouraging politi political literacy and discourse. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for sticking around for four yeah, months. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Gorosero, thank you for letting Ornaz Chaos know that we made you into a Nazi. Yeah. Thanks for getting us in trouble. There you go. Uh, let's see. Dutch for two euros is the one that wanted me to ask Dane about the chunky monkey question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, JD Bachamp for five dollars says <laughs> we didn't get to this. Says, can you ask organized chaos to do his best Texas accent, or at the very least a James T. Kirk impression? Yeah, we uh, should have asked. That would have been good. I was going to ask. Um, yeah, next time. Uh, we'll we'll that... see. Here's it, after these debates. The days after, sometimes people mull on how it went. They start right. reading the comments and they start feeling Changes like they, your beliefs and behaviors. Right. Yes. They start feeling like, I could have performed a little bit better. And then they go to Twitter and they start sniping at old Sitch and Adam. Right, and right. And it, it becomes like a completely rewrite of history. Like right now, it seems like they'd be down to come back. I felt like it was a good conversation. There, I mean, I I'm do, not sure we really got to the... well. I'm not really sure we got to the bottom of anything except... No, we, I don't think no. we did. <laughs> well, the one thing I think we did get to, which I found very fascinating, was that essentially uh, Bob agrees with the anti-woke interpretation of She-Hulk episode one, that, of her being uh, yes. bratty. She, he just thinks that that was... You're not supposed to think that that's a good thing. And to me, that's wild. Yeah. That's So that's a very fascinating read of that episode to me. But hmm. Yeah, I know. I don't know that any other other people saw it, uh, his way other than, you know, anti-woke critics. Yeah, that's what's so weird. That's why I thought that was so strange. Yeah. Very strange, but okay. Next time we'll have to ask them, what is their what is their favorite flavor of Freezy Pop? That was mm -hmm. another important question. Oh, yeah. We get to. Definitely. So, obviously, orange supremacy for Freezy Pops. Mm -hmm. Bubble gum. There's not a Freezy Pop flavor at <laughs> There is a Freezy Pop flavor that's bubble gum, but it is no. actually called banana. Okay. Now you're gaslighting me. <laughs> Adam is trying to groomer me into believing that <laughs> bubble gum and banana taste the same. Look, I've done the side-by-side -side blindfolded taste test, and yeah. there's you can't tell the difference. Banana uh -huh. and bubble gum taste the same. I think I think there's something wrong with your taste buds. Mm -hmm. uh, Glib facsimile. Hey, Glib for two dollars says ankle biting, clout chasing, leftist sophistry. Time. Mm -hmm. There you go. Damn it! I didn't get to call him sophist. Shit. That's true. You should have asked him about MMT. So, there was a super chat. What is it, Kerm? Who said? Who I, sent the ten dollars super chat? I didn't see it, but somebody wanted me to ask about MMT. Uh, Luke W like, for five dollars. Thank you. <laughs> Says, happy Valentine's Day, guys. Remember, quote, nothing says I love you like a black man holding a gun. Rich Evans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Wow. 
Uh, Silence Unit for five dollars says now Sitchin Adam don't mention J Mac is actually Steve Bannon and this channel is his laundering account. Thanks and happy Valentine's, folks. That's right. Nobody mentioned that J Mac right. is actually secretly allegedly Steve Bannon. Allegedly. No, secretly. Oh, you're right. Se I'm sorry. Secretly, allegedly Steve Bannon. Yes. Mm -hmm. We may be laundering money for Steve Bannon. I don't know how this would help, but mm -hmm. uh three X three Nilo for two dollars says, What is a woman? What is woke? What is evil? Geniuses. Well, that's I had to read it that way. They did the the capital lowercase text. So when we started going into um, the She Hulk stuff and the woman's experience, I almost said, "Well, we have to define terms here. <laughs> <laughs> what is a woman?" Yes, this wasn't this wasn't Sitch's law as much as it was mm. Sitch's ambiguity. It was like, well, we can't really define anything, so who knows. Oh, totally. Yes. What's, yeah, I don't, uh, it's obfuscation at, at yeah. some level, but I, agree. I mean, I, I give them props for, for sticking around and you know, yeah. plowing through. So For three hours. Uh, Kerm for $10 says, problem with woke media is simple. It's like a Christian pure flex movie. They put the message before anything else and in term create cringe media and then moral grandstand if you don't like it. And that's a great point. We didn't get to that. Um, Mm -hmm. But that's a fantastic point, and I think that's a lot of people's feeling is that by having the hyper fixation on a political message very often detracts from the quality of the writing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I have a, the show, so. I have a good friend of mine. I've talked about him before. He's written about 10 or 15 of these Christian movies. He's straight to video Christian movies. He's Jewish, mm -hmm. by the way. but Makes um, sense. So he, he, Wait, he writes them. Yeah, he writes That's them. Hilarious. And I, uh, you know, I. That's we, so funny. Yeah. So we, you know, we used to do, when I was doing Deadline Junkies, we'd do a weekly dinner together, just a bunch of screenwriter guys and, you know, talk stuff. And I, I was always asking him, you know, do these movies have to suck? Like, is that a prerequisite? Like, why can't they just make one that's good? And I thought, I'm going to put like 10 log lines together that are actually going to be like good Christian movies <laughs> that are something you would, you know, you'd, you'd cheer at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, I, none of them ever got picked up by him or got pushed forward. So I changed the poll. What did it change to? Did you like the stream? Yes. Mm -hmm. I am based in alpha. No, I drink soy straight. Wait a second. Why you gotta so throw you go. soy under the bus, man? There Just you go. A little what do you mean you threw soy under the bus? The first poll question was Captain Marvel. Soy. <laughs> yeah, but drinking soy is okay. Oh watching it on the screen is terrible. I see. It's it's okay. So Adam's position is it's okay to imbibe soy through the mouth, but not through the eyes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this this was actually a lot of fun, man. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, libertarian Sass... Oh, Andrew Clark for $5 says, She-Hulk had a moment of weakness. Hulk was completely unstable. It's not this unstable. It's not the same at all. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. Like, there, that interpretation... Like day, yeah. That interpretation that that is Jen's arc. To me, I've never heard that before. That is not... There is no evidence of that. And, and, like, you would need... You would, at all. You'd, like, need the scenes peppered in where, you know, she's bratty but trying to dial it back you know the tangible well, progress on that that's you know that's how an arc works you would need a scene where it's very clearly showing her bratty very clearly showing her egotistical yes um and the show is very clearly showing that she is wrong to have this thought and opinion and behavior right which that doesn't happen i don't Even, remember at least i don't remember it happening at any point in the show even maybe um, going as far as a secondary character coming in and saying, you're very bratty and egotistical. You need to work on that. Which the best friend ever does. She just raw raws every time she does bratty and egotistical shit. Right. I'm trying to remember, because I, obviously I try to block She-Hulk out of my mind as much as possible. I'm trying to remember their interaction with, with her, with Daredevil. Because I remember Daredevil kept trying to tell her to like not help. And then she ends up helping. And I think in one instance she makes it worse, but on the other instance she makes it way better. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think at the end he's like, "Don't come in and, and help," you know. And then she proves him wrong by you know, helping and and kicking ass. So, yeah, I don't think the show never points out her being egotistical or angry 
or anything is that is like an issue. And that's why, you know, uh, Dane had to say, well, maybe they're setting it up for season two because it's not in season one. <laughs> so, so I don't know. That's a very interesting read to me. I completely disagree with that read. Oh my, this is interesting. Uh, capital O opinions says you've, uh, Adam, you vastly underestimated how long it would take actual fandom to snipe on Twitter. He did it during the stream. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, what do you say? I don't know. I wasn't paying. I was okay. trying to, trying to pay, trying attention to pay attention. To the attention. Date, That's debate. Yeah. Uh, Libertarian Sasquatch for five dollars says, "Quote: I'm just a white guy, so what do I know?" End quote. So you can't have an opinion or understanding of a situation because of your skin color. Yeah, it's. I uh, I was annoyed because I forget who said that. I don't remember if Bob or Dane. One of them said that I'm just a white guy, so what do I know? And I wanted to jump on that, but then we got distracted by something else because that right there, and this is what I'm talking about. You know, they don't identify as socialist. They don't identify as leftist, and yet that comment is a complete adherence to the to um, standpoint epistemology, which is the idea that you can only derive true objective claims of reality. Well, actually, no. It's that there are no true objective claims of reality. No one has access to them. However, if you're white, since we live in this, you know, white, hetero, patriarchy, blah, 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 and culture and society is supposedly created for us, our perception of reality is false or far more false than someone who has, uh, you know, minority status. They can see a truer picture of reality than we can see, because of the because of their identity, and that's what he's hearkening to without even realizing it. So, to me, that was very fascinating that he said that. Uh, Kanyx one two two, thanks so much for bringing Fruit Seeker for two months. Says organized chaos is making up excuses. Nothing suggesting gamma doses made her different. How two people experience trauma doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I didn't find any of their She-Hulk uh, explanations particularly convincing. Uh, I, like as I said, you know, if they had a scene where she made her like very woke feminist, I'm able to control my powers because I'm a woman and we are subjugated, subjugated in society. And then Bruce fired back with like, and I even said this in my original She-Hulk video. You know, and then Bruce fires back with like, well, no, I just looked at the data and actually, you know, it's because X, Y, Z. It's because you have lower dose of gamma or whatever. That would have been a great scene. That would have been a hilarious scene. I feel like that's what the scene would have been like 10 years ago. <laughs> but obviously not anymore. Uh, rotisserie protocol for $20 says S-Class has the best ass. Thank you. And A-Team makes me cream. Oh, and our tards send their regards. Speaking of our tards, chaos. Will you debate Mahler and Rags next? Well, I'm not sure if they're interested in that conversation, but you can ask them. Uh, Grendel Vivat for five dollars says, "So actual fandom's definition of anti woke necessarily involves anti women forces." Yeah, I feel like we couldn't really pin down definitions for really anything in this conversation I or didn't... rather we couldn't pin down their definitions for anything in this conversation that's what i missed too i wanted to say okay well you know we had three questions and you answered one of them our birds owls so <laughs> <laughs> thank you for playing right right so i why is it i guess you know maybe if they had well they're gonna think about it now that we've had this discussion so maybe mm -hmm. they will answer those questions later in a video or something i don't know hey i sent sure. the little platoon the link so we're i don't think we're going to stream too much longer but if he wants to pop in and say hello i saw him in the chat earlier so cool who did you send a link to i didn't hear what he said the little platoon oh gotcha yeah um yeah i think we're just gonna do super chats um but you know you know you brought up something that i thought was very important uh, which was when I asked him the question, you know, if you're in charge of YouTube, what do you do to rags? And they were both kind of like, well, I don't know. We'd have to think about it. And you were like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Shouldn't you think about this before you try to get them in trouble? <laughs> when when did you? Yeah, totally. I said that. And I was when... like, I was like, yeah, that's a really good point. Shouldn't, I mean, like, you have to be, you know, if you're talking about like platform yeah. responsibility, I mean. Well, yeah, not only that, like, uh it's their their whole brand is that you should you know think before you do things because you could inadvertently hurt marginalized people right right <laughs> like okay so uh but they wouldn't obviously conceptualize uh 
you know, smaller rags is marginalized. So sure. you, Sitch uh, messaged me privately, lull, chill. When did you, when did you message that? Uh, Was that when, when you the said, rumor came out? No, when you said like, you fucking motherfucking bad faith, you know, like that part of the conversation. Well, I, mean, I think it was that part of the conversation. I managed to, I managed to, I didn't read your lull chill until okay. right now. Okay, well, I'm glad you, you managed to pull back regardless. But I did manage to pull it back, but. That's good. That's, that's good. I just, it needed to be clear because this guy will make like 15 YouTube videos calling me a racist now because. Right. And if he wants to make a bunch of videos calling me a sexist, I mean, I'm, I'd look kind of like to see those videos, so. Mm-hmm. Me too. Just, how, um, how how could we have that whole well i guess he just wasn't paying attention to the beginning of the debate because i mean i clearly articulated in the beginning of the debate that racism was evil and we argued about it for like 15 minutes so well that was kind of the problem there was a lot of kathy newmaning going on in this conversation yeah. where you know i'd ask a question and it was i'll say it was mostly i think it was more a lot more bob than dane Mm -hmm. where Bob would very consistently reframe a question or a statement in a very, like, Kathy Newman-esque, like... Because, I mean, right in the beginning with the She-Hulk, you know, why do you think it's bad for for Marvel to have a woman's perspective? Yeah, like, what totally. kind of question is Like, what kind of question <laughs> is that? Like, that's... Totally. That's obviously... I and mean, that's why I said it's obviously a bad faith interpretation. I mean, that'd be like saying, you know, imagine if, if in She-Hulk, you know, Jen Walters started to spout, you know verbatim lines from Mein Kampf, right? Mm -hmm. Of and course, <laughs> yeah. It was pro-Nazism. And I'm like, you know, I don't think She-Hulk, I don't think Jen Walters should be saying, you know, pro-Nazi talking points. And then yeah. some some Nazi said, said, Sitch, you know, why do you have a problem with a woman expressing her perspective? <laughs> I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm not, that's, her being a woman isn't the issue here. It's what, it's the ideology that she's explaining. You could have had, you like, if that scene with Jen Walters happened, only instead of her saying it, it was Bruce saying, maybe, Jen, you know, the reason you can control being a Hulk is because you're a woman and you live in this you know, society where women are expected to always, you know, toe the line and be quiet and that blah, 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 Yeah, right. totally. Yeah, I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, I don't care if it's coming from a mouth puppet character or a female puppet character in a TV show. It's the idea that's the problem. Yeah. We so. never really... They never really played ball on the ideology stuff, which is all obviously the most interesting part of this whole discussion. So, well, I, I don't, I mean, I don't think, I don't believe Dane when I asked, I don't think they're very learned on any of the academic literature regarding no. any of the stuff. Of I, I think not. they're completely uh, ignorant of it. Mm -hmm. So, which is fine. Ooh, I think ouch. that's most people, but it's ignorant. just, it's a problem because that's, you know, Call people are talking ignorant. about these issues. God, I'd rather be called sexist than ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I think most people that talk about, you know, it's true on both sides. I think most people talk about wokeness or anti-wokeness. I think most of them are very ignorant of the mm -hmm. literature and what is actually being advocated, um, you know, with these ideologies. So, Not if they listen to the Sitch and Adam show, because listen, I never have true. read any of this boring shit. I know, shit, but you've but heard I me talk know about it all hours, of so. it because right. Sitch reads it all, yeah. Well, hey, listen, it was funny, you know, I was talking to my dad the other day, and I got him to buy Cynical Theories, so he's going to read no that. No way! So that'll oh. be interesting. That is awesome. Yeah. That, that book is amazing, yeah. Yep. Um, what? I read this one. Godal Vought for five dollars says, "So actual fandom's definition of anti woke necessarily involves anti women forces." Yes. Uh, Boxing Wolf for three months says it's called the MCU because every main character now has a female counterpart. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Lucius Cornelius Sullen for twenty dollars says, "What is your response to the argument about youth transgenderism and social contagion being no different to old people back in the day?" Saying rock, heavy metal, rap, comics, video games, Harry Potter, D and D would corrupt the youth. Well, I think the difference yeah. in my response to that would be that, you know, it, it depends what exactly you're at, where you're, how you conceptualize it. So like, obviously kids back in the day or even today, they will like things that are perceived of as going against their parents. Yeah. Like that's a natural Rebellious. tendency for kids. There's a, there's a reason that's literally the second story in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so like, obviously, you know, part of the appeal to rap and rock in video games and whatever 
you know, was that it was sort of, I mean, not Harry Potter. That's obviously like, that was a Christian fundamentalist thing. But for a lot of these things, the appeal was like, oh, I'm, I'm sticking it to my parents. I'm going to, you know, become super goth. And my parents don't like this. Like that was, you know, the rebellion mm -hmm. was a big appeal to it. I'm going to um, sterilize myself. Well, see, that's the difference. <laughs> I'm like, going to cut my wiener off. So to if you get at my parents, so, I mean, that's exactly it. Like if you don't like, um, I mean, if, if you like music or some kind of fashion or something else to that level to sort of rebel against your parents, like that's not going to have a lasting impact on your life <laughs> where taking hormone blockers, taking cross X hormones, getting surgery, those are going to have potential long lasting effects on you that you will not like you know go on, you what? know getting older. Look, so that's just, why you i cut would, your boobs off and you that's get a why boob i would job why that's why that's are you such why, a square sis? that's why What's i would advise deal? you whack your ding dong off you just get a new one you get the like, screw on kind listen, listen i still like lincoln park i still like papa roach okay but i understand and, you know, some cringy, I'm pretty sure some music I listened to when I was young, pretty cringy now by today's standard. Some System of Down songs, some, you mm -hmm. know, Papa Roach songs. Very, uh, you know, very emo, very dramatic. Weird so Al Yankovic. Okay, you're wrong about that. But So I, I get it, but that that's not going to have like a lasting harm on my life. So that's what I would say the difference is. Uh, 3x3 Nilo for $2 says these two comic dorks are out of their depth. Uh, J Mac for twenty dollars says I'm going to. <laughs> J Mac, our surrogate father says I'm going to oppress the heck out of my wife tonight. It's okay, she's into that. Sweet, nice. You, you got go. a good one, J Mac. I like that. There you go. Uh, Chachachi McSwag for ten dollars says, "Quote: Were power structures not built for and by white men?" End quote. Okay, so you support third wave feminism. Stop behind. Stop hiding behind the uncontroversial second wave definition, this is so spineless and dishonest. Yeah, so it would be interesting because, you know, when they would talk about, you know, when we're trying to press them to define racism or sexism, they would give very kind of liberal definitions. And then it would kind of, through the course of the conversation, the intersectional leftist definition would kind of poke out. And I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's intentional or not. I don't know if they, I would wager they don't realize that they're doing it and they don't really understand the difference. Fight the guess. So, but that's the big problem with the woke conversation. People don't really understand the difference between like woke and liberal and, you know, the mod, like the, you know, civil rights movement back in the day versus now. We got a lot of mop and bucket emojis going in the chat. There was lots of mop and bucketing. Uh, June Bug for $2 says Eric July 1. Thank you, June. JD Bichan for $2 says, can they define what a woman is? Yeah, we'll have to say that for next time. I'm very curious. <laughs> I'm very curious. Uh, Idiot Tosin for $5 says, I think the big smoking gun for WandaVision was Kevin Feige saying he didn't want Doctor Strange to show up because he's a white man. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, about I did that. allude to that. Um, so. Little Platoon joined the stream too, if you want to say hi. Or... Hello. No, I was just waiting for you to uh, go through the super chat. Well, Thank you for having me. Look at that dreamy voice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, no, cheers, honestly, cheers for having me on. I was, I was listening um, slightly shocked and flabbergasted to the uh, <laughs> to the, the debate, but uh, it, was, it was really interesting. But uh, I, I've been lurking on your channel for ages, so it's really oh, nice to be on. You gave me a, you. like a big shout out in one of your videos, so thanks. That was cool. Yeah, like, that, that would have some... been the She-Hulk one, I think. So yeah, I, had I did some tweets. And, like, yeah. like some Wait, you only gave Adam video. a shout out? You didn't give me a shout out? Well, he shouted out my <laughs> tweets. <laughs> wow. It's funny that you didn't. Wow. Even... You'll get one. Don't worry. It's, okay. on, it's <laughs> on its way. <laughs> Thank you. On the, the feminism thing you, you just raised, which I thought was mm -hmm. like one of the, the interesting things that came up throughout, um, obviously the, being absolutely impossible to pin them down on any definition right. what they did tend to fall back on was it's quite a common sleight of hand but it's like well i define this thing to mean good so are you opposed <laughs> to good right um right. well no obviously i mean I'm, I'm in line with good well okay then then you are the definition that i've chosen um that that's that's not actually how these things work but it does tend to be when people either aren't sure what they're talking about 
or are very deliberately tendentious. I think we should assume uh, more on them as opposed to malice. But yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm not. That was. I think that was the only thing that was kind of frustrating about the conversation was the hesitancy to really define anything. And it would be like you know, I would ask them a question. They'd say, "Give me a specific," and then I give them a specific, and then they would not want. They say, "This hypothetical is ridiculous," or something. <laughs> Or they would give me a specific and I would look into it and say, well, I think you're wrong about the specific. And then that would, and then I'd say, well, what, what, how do you, you know, like it was like the Ryan Kennell thing. You know, we how, don't do hypotheticals, racist? by the way, here is a hypothetical. What's your answer? Yeah, exactly. Um, like, can you choose one of those two things? That would be nice. Mm-hmm. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't know how you have a conversation. It's, it's very difficult to have a conversation if someone's not willing to engage in like a very standard hypothetical, but or just a, a, yeah, agreeing on definitions. The, the sinister thing, anyway, that it seemed to me is that if you're trying to create this this new YouTube ecosystem, which seems to be their, their driving goal, to mm-hmm. push back on what they perceive to be the, the predominant social view and attitude on YouTube, um, and the questions that you were asking them about what would you like to see happen to rags, for example, well, you're beginning from a harm principle based on, on a standard that you're not willing to define. And then you're saying that if we were given our way, anything that we so define to be harmful, which we're not going to tell you what it is, that will be the kind of thing that YouTube steps in to punish. I mean, that that's that's a really sinister thing, is that this mix of ignorance and certainty and vagueness, which oh allows God. them essentially like carte blanche just to go for whatever standard they happen to like. Criticism is valid if I agree with this criticism. Criticism mm-hmm. is harmful and dangerous if I don't agree with this criticism. That's no standard to, to conduct any kind of debate. It's not the standard they want to apply to themselves, as when you brought up the um the unfortunate monkey comment. It, right. it, ignorance right. and certainty is just like a deadly combination. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> right well yeah i mean it's exactly you know with them you know with actual fandom he has his like please email me if you've ever been harassed by evap or whoever like i you know what is the, te- well, the intention I mean, that's obviously harassed. they didn't like right, my like, take on wonder woman so well there yes <laughs> well rightfully deserved um but you know it's like it, i don't i don't believe for a second that this is like oh well we're just compiling this because we want you know the efap community to say listen don't harass people, right? Like it's like okay, if that's all you're gonna say, that's fine. I, I no, it's trying to get it's trying to get them in trouble, it's trying to get them canceled. Like let's be what realistic is, here. The about standard what's is what? It, it's a pattern of behavior. Well, like, what what are you defining as a pattern of behavior? Because if I were to take the, the strategy that I'm quite sure that they they will adopt, if I were to clip, for example, a, a man who says I have racist friends or I have some racist thoughts, and then clip him calling a black man a uh, chunky monkey, that's mm-hmm. a pattern of behavior which I could use in an equivalent video to say, this man is a racist. I don't think he is one. But that's the standard that these people seem to operate by is the one that they don't apply to themselves. It would be nice if they did, because then they wouldn't be making the videos that they're making. True. Very true. Uh, Become the Knight for Fidar says, you made a distinction between evil and immoral. Can you elaborate how you believe they are different? Thanks for coming on. I think he said he he interpreted the word evil to imply that someone is without change or po- possibility of redemption. So, which is mm. not how we were or how Adam was using the word evil, but, uh, Grendel Vivat for $5 says Jen has no arc in she Hulk. She remains the same. She even breaks the fourth wall to alter reality. So she has no consequences. True. Yeah. That's, I, yes. I, 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 that is their their interpretation of She-Hulk to me is so wild. I, I was just kind of floored. I don't know how to react to it. But well, it's another one that you can't quite pin down because the the defense originally was that she was bratty because it was her arc. But the defense of it by the end of the conversation was, well, it's just the beginning of the arc, so she doesn't have one yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't quite right. figure out which one of those they were going with. But, but her arc right. is, I am better than you because the like, you know, Bruce creates an entire guidebook for her because he thinks he has something to teach her and she proves to him that he has nothing to teach her because she's lived with stress and anger and you know she's had to put up with this all the time it's the default condition of being a woman Mm -hmm. which he accepts and tearing up the guidebook she has one setback which is where she lets anger take over her but her, she she fixes the problem she made for herself so she's reduced herself but she's the one who brings herself out of that she's the one who's been wronged as opposed to say tony stark who's the one who was wrong in his narcissism and she fixes it by breaking out of the universe and karening uh kevin feige into agreeing right. that the narrative wasn't doing her justice i don't think that's much of an art <laughs> personally no i mean that, that's a fantastic point like you know when 
Tony Stark has his problems. He's actually addressing them, changing as a person to fix them. You know, it's part of his ultimate sacrifice is, you know, to not be so egotistical, blah, 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 have a daughter and all, all that good stuff. With her, even if we were to grant, which I don't, that anger was some kind of character trait. I mean, she didn't, there was no acknowledgement by her or the show that, oh, I need to control my anger. And thus in episode 10, you know, she was able to resolve the conflict by controlling her anger. Like, it's actually the opposite. Her punching out of reality, I would argue, is the opposite of controlling your anger. Well, and she didn't take responsibility. She blamed the writers. She blamed the writers. Yeah, exactly. So... It's, it's like the inverse of Deus Ex Machina, as opposed to God breaking into the universe and fixing yeah. things. God yeah. breaks out of the universe and fixes things. It's it's a really right. really weird narrative device. That's a good. Yeah, I like that. Theory. It's reverse Deus. Well, not reverse because it's like inverse. Yeah, she Karen breaks X. out of the story to complain to God. Fix it, fix it for me. Uh, Stug for two dollars says, "Describe the arc in full." Yeah, no, listen, it's the beginning of the arc, Stug. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Kana X122 for five dollars says the She Hulk example is not an arc. There was no total loss of control like the Hulk. She only got pissed and punched something not remotely the same. True. Where is this um sitch gif you have? I've never seen this before. Who made this? Oh really? Oh no. You know how bad I am. <laughs> Ooh, uh, you have a me <laughs> kicking doing a, a jump kick through the air. It looks cool. Yeah, oh, I am smiling, cool. but it does look cool. Oh, you're right. They, they messed up? They made you smile? No, it looks beautiful. Uh, rotisserie Protocol for $5 says, can you manage to make the atomic structure of radium political? <laughs> there you go. When everything's political, or is the atom is the periodic table a political yeah. thing? Yeah. The, dis the distance of the sun from the earth, is that political? Is that political? Yeah. 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 I don't know. There you Maybe. go. Well, racism is baked into the structure of the universe, so I'm sure there's a way of doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. True. Uh, J.D. Bachant for $2 says, should we respect Hitler's lived experience? <laughs> I'm going to say no. We never I'm got to question no. four. Should we tell him what question four No, is? we shouldn't. <laughs> okay. We had a bonus question, just in case things were We really had a bonus question. I'm really interested. What is question I mean, four? Things, Am I allowed to ask that? Things, got, things did get kind of spicy. Where is, where's my notes here? I don't want to get it incorrect here. Uh-huh. Question, Question four. four. What is the difference between you and Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We didn't always get to ask good. that question. Always so good sad. to ask. Yes. We know we see we forgot. We were gonna ask him question five. We we're gonna ask them the uh Jesse Lee Peterson question. Do you well, love black people? We did actually I'm sure it's on his stream because I did mm -hmm. make I was making some killer jokes before we started our stream up. I said something True. to the effect of Now I saw your debate with Eric July and I know that you're afraid of black people. <laughs> so I just wanted to be clear that Sitch is not black, okay? So you can mm -hmm. be you can chill, you can relax. <laughs> it's gonna be a good faith debate. I like thought it was, question. I mean, it was relatively good faith until he called me racist, but mm. it, it was a really weird turn because the, the first two hours seemed really, you know, it was as pleasant as it could be. But then right. I think, I don't know what was, they seemed to want to pick a fight by the end or certainly well, um, actual fandom did. Mm -hmm. Well, I, he, I think in, in all seriousness, he inadvertently called me racist just because he's so used to calling people racist. Like if you're one of them, you're all of them, which no, not really. I mean. There's a, yeah, I, I I don't think racism and transphobia are linked or sexism and racism are linked. Mm -hmm. So right. that was totally unfair. But it does trip off the tongue, which is how these things usually work. So it's, yeah. it's, like, it's a racist, sexist, transphobe. It's, it's really easy to link those things. <laughs> so it, it's almost it just like comes you can naturally. chant it at a Black Lives Rally. At a Black <laughs> That's the thing, Lives it's like a prayer. Rally. That you commit to memory and you say the prayer racist yeah. sexist transpho it's an incantation yes it's a spell they're casting a spell on you adam they not me spell. not me i have i use the um adam uses use anger to deflect I, no i use the <laughs> Fuck you, you piece of shit. i'm so glad no i'm so glad that you called out the groomer thing because it was it's so perfect because it, as soon as i called them a groomer they totally got triggered and you were like well why is it okay for yeah, like, okay? exactly. That was the point. Yeah. So, yeah, that was awesome. 
Uh, Stuck for two hours says, ask them to describe how the arc proves Jen wrong. Well, no, no, no. Season two, Stuck. Season two. Uh, Def- Def- Someone in the chat two- knows who made this awesome gif. Speak up. I'm looking in my DMs, but I can't find the person. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I saw it, and I was like, this is badass. I'm going to say this. Uh, D528 for $2 says, everything equals politics. That's literally Mussolini. Yeah, that is literally like the fascistic ideology. Ouch. It's also the communist ideology. So, you know, they're, communism and fascism are far closer to each other than they are to liberalism. But they don't, no one ever wants to address that. It's also it's the fundamental mistake is is between you're conflating political art with the politics of art. I mean, you mm-hmm. can read the politics of art into anything. Great Star Wars is, is always political if you want it to be. But that's the, the Star Wars was not itself political art in the sense that, you know, 1980s, you could have Ronald Reagan invoking the Galactic Empire uh, as against mm-hmm. the Soviet Union. And you could have communists and socialists in the United States invoking the evil empire against the United States. And George Lucas didn't evince a position as to which of those two was right. Um, right. That's the politics of art. When people say, like, you, know, you get it all the time in Star Trek, if you criticize modern Star Trek, people will say, but Star Trek has always been political. Well, no, it's, it's like you can always read politics into Star Trek, but it has never actually preached at you the answers yeah, to specific exactly policy questions. Right. And that's what most modern art does. Mm-hmm. I think most, all the best movies for me are a debate over a point of view where both sides are given equal due. Like it, that, that's how the dilemma is really best exercised and the most conflict is created. So these, these movies that are just, you know, sp- propaganda, basically, you know, spoon feeding you some ideology, you know, they're boring because of that. They're just preaching at you. It feels like I'm in Sunday school. There's mm-hmm. nothing to disagree with them. If I did a, an Avatar video um, recently and it's like, you compare the, the villain motive in, in Avatar and the villain motive in like any great work of literature that sort of stands the test of time, and the, the big three dystopic works of literature that always come to mind is 1984, Brave New World, Darkness at Noon. And in each of those three, the villain is given an opportunity to expand on his worldview and to make the argument for what he thinks and believes. And the audience is supposed to weigh up the pros and the cons. And ideally, the audience sees the point that's being made, even yep. if they eventually disagree with that. Um, like Brave New World's the most compelling one because um, Mustafa Mond actually, you know, he's kind of right in the sense that his vision for the future has produced the harmonious and orderly society that he says is desirable. So the audience has to agree that that's the case, but then has to ask themselves what price they're willing to pay for giving up on freedom, art, beauty, goodness, God, and all the rest of that. But you compare it to something like Avatar or basically any modern movie, and it's just, well, the villain is there and he's just bad. Um, and that's all there is to say about it. That there's no actual question that you're asking your audience. So there's no real political reading into it. All the film is doing is telling you what is politically correct. And it's not inviting you to weigh up your own political preconceptions, desires, and to what the trade-offs for those happen to be. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the Star Wars, original Star Wars, is a really good example. Because um, it's, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's very generalized, you know, empire, rebellion, you know, fascism, authoritarianism is bad, I guess, essentially. Uh, but I think I think Star Trek is a little bit more specifically political, at least original Star Trek, because it was very pro individual liberalism and those kinds mm. of principles of like, you know, don't, you know, every like your skin color is irrelevant. I mean, that's why they had the you know first interracial kiss and all these sorts of things. You know, and we've moved beyond and our society has moved beyond these sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's liberal universalism is what they use. Yes, to sort of right. Preach. Yes, I, I was exactly. kind of interested in what you were saying during the debate though, Sitch, about, um, I, I couldn't quite work out whether or not, I think you said that you would rather that certain political ideas weren't being snuck into works of art. And the art Yeah, I don't, was. I mean, I, I don't think it's appropriate for like Disney movies to sneak in, you know, anti-liberal politics into their, their TV shows and movies. I don't think that's appropriate. I mean, if, if Disney was sneaking Nazi themes into their movies, I'd be like, that's a big, that's a bit of a problem. So the, th- the thing that interested me about that is because like, I agree with, I probably agree with you on, on the, the virtues and the merits of liberalism. Mm-hmm. Um, but in saying that you don't think a work of art should sneak political subtext and messaging into, uh, into itself, um, as long as, well, if it's not liberal, it shouldn't sneak illiberal things in. Mm-hmm. What's the basis? How are you differentiating that? I mean, is that you as a liberal saying you don't want illiberal things snuck into works of art? And if that is the case, what's to stop a, a socialist saying, well, as a socialist, I don't want liberal ideas snuck into works of art? Right. 
Well, I would say, well, there's, there's two. Well, I think my big problem with it and kind of my big problem with wokeness in general is that no, like, and I said this in the conversation, no one or very few people really understand the fight that's happening right now. It's mm -hmm. never, ever talked about in the mainstream that it's that the left is being divided between people that believe in liberal values and people that believe in socialist values, which is where all the woke stuff is all derived from socialist values. Mm -hmm. And that's my problem. Like if there was a Marvel movie where a character was openly like socialist and that was understood and you could have like a conversation about that, then I don't think I'd have a necessarily have a problem with that. I might not like mm -hmm. it, but I wouldn't really have a problem with it. I have a problem with it being like snuck in and people thinking that it has something to do with like liberalism when it actually is the opposite of it. Because mm -hmm. it's kind of like, tr this is my, like the, the big problem I have with wokeness is it's basically tricking the left into swallowing socialism without actually having a conversation about whether socialism is good or not. True. Yeah. It's, oh, hi it's yeah. hiding it. Yeah. Socialism is synonymous with all good things in the world. Um, that kind of idea. Right. Because I mean, like all like less wokeness is literally the, uh, as I said, is the idea that, you know, liberal values cannot solve, you know, cultural issues. And so I was like, well, what do you use to solve it then? Well, socialism, obviously. Right. So it's anyway. Um, D5528 for $2 says dismantling some abstract thing. Red guard vibes. There you go. Felicity for two Aussie bucks says she Hulk has layers like a glass onion. Ooh. True. Very true. Uh, the J I J P Mexican. Thanks so much for being a free sticker for six months. Says Marvel and other popular stuff. Uh, don't and other popular stuff. Tent don't to leave things up for interpretation. This is a massive cope. It ain't an art film. It's a borderline head cannon. Uh, I mean, yeah, I would agree. That's a good point. I don't think any of the, I mean, I like a lot of the Marvel stuff, but I don't think it's like particularly like super yeah. deep. It this isn't like David Lynch, okay. Analysis, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Lightning Ninja asked to bring up the chaos skipping to the, the parent part in Mahler's Doctor Strange video. Uh, J Mac for $20. Thank you so much. Says, if BK fires, if Birking fires you for making a distasteful joke about Jesus, then that's all fine and dandy. Supporting companies and firing employees for their off-time opinions is incredibly nearsighted and stupid. Very true. Yeah, totally. True. So it's uh, Sheepless Dreamer did the art. I labeled oh, it for you. Oh, nice. Thanks, Sheep. That's great. The, cor the corporate thing is is an interesting one. Um, in that I think people often misplace the blame for this. They say, well, mm -hmm. well corporations are, are the ones that are doing the counseling. The corporations are the ones who are saying, well, the, the opinion of my staff member is uh, intolerable. And so we're going to do away with it. The question usually then becomes, well, aren't you? I think it actually was, was raised in your debate, which is, you know, well, aren't you supposed to be a liberal free market capitalist who thinks that corporations should do whatever they want? <laughs> I, know, um, like, right. I, I don't tend, I don't mind necessarily the fact that corporations are responding to public pressure. I think the problem is that the public pressure exists in the first place and there are mechanisms that enable public pressure to sort of conglomerate and then to exert undue influence over corporate decisions the companies are just responding to what they see in the media they consume right. um and they are very very aware of their reputational risk and totally. that's what twitter happens to really put at the forefront of their minds the corporations i don't necessarily think are the problem with that the corporations are just responding to a social phenomenon the social phenomenon is the thing that we should be criticizing and that's where yep. the cancel culture comes from yeah yep. no that's a good point and that's i mean it's very bizarre to me when i hear people who are on the left that are saying things like well, said in that conversation, you know, no one desert, no one is, has a right to have a job <laughs> or something, which is so bizarre uh, to hear people love say things like that. But it yeah, I mean, it's to come from the, the same people who say that there is actually a right to work. Yeah, exactly. The same people who are arguing for universal basic income and, and yep. jobs for all. They're the same people yes. who say, well, well, are you telling me that the corporation doesn't have the right to fire its employees? It's well, so bizarre. Yeah, it feels very, very bad for you. And I mean, and obviously there's a difference between like, you know, Kanye who is supposed to be a spokesperson for like, you know, specific brand of clothing. And, you know, he makes his like very, you know, anti-Semitic comments and it's like, okay, sure. You know, get rid of him. He's, you know, the face of the label. And it's like, okay. But to equate that to like, you know, a Burger King employee who, you know, says some random political tweet, that's not like, mm. you know, anywhere near what Kanye said, that should get you fired. They're supposed to be representative of the entire company. It's, it's very weird to hear people on the left kind of make this kind of, right-wing argument that every person is like always the face of the company even in their off times it seems a very anti-left-wing position to have 
it, it's also the problem with the focus on celebrity as well, which is that, you know, I think this point has been made countless times elsewhere, but the, the real victims of, of cancel culture are not the celebrity class. Yes. The celebrity yeah, class totally. is the one that can rebound from that. But right. if it hadn't been for, say, J.K. Rowling getting involved, would Maya Forstater have got the job back? Well, probably not. Um, and the problem is that we, we have no very easy way of accounting for all the number of people who have been let go because of political opinions that have upset their colleagues or political opinions that the company doesn't like, who are not rich and famous and have names on Twitter who can get jobs in like the spectator and unheard afterwards. Uh, those are the real victims of cancel culture, um, which it's, yeah, it's hard to keep that in mind given we don't know their names, but the fact we don't know their names is proof of the problem. Right, exactly, right. Uh... RBGH fan for five dollars says, "Ask them if it was okay for the NFL to fire Colin Kaepernick from the NFL for harmful conduct to their company." That would have been an interesting question. I should have asked them that. Yeah. Uh, Salandre for for twenty dollars. Thank you so much. Says, "If cancel culture doesn't exist, how come these social media led by limited run games got fired for posting on her personal account? She was excited for Hogwarts Legacy." Good question. Good question. Uh, Idiot Tosin for $2 says, Lindsay Ellis, Lindsay Ellis, Lindsay Ellis. (laughs) Hostman uh, Socrates for $5 says, all Ryan Kennel said was that Hollywood doesn't get to moralize over Harvey Weinstein because they enabled him for years. Yeah, I I feel like their interpretation, at least from the the one that I looked up, them saying that he was against people being black in the Batman. That was not his critique. I'm so glad you looked it up. So... Yeah, that's when I, I called surprised. him uh, a groomer again. A groomer, were, yeah. You were watching the video. I, was I wasn't like, listening. I was. I had it muted. I was like, "What did I walk back into?" They don't. They don't know the definition of groomer. That you know, you're grooming someone for a position, for a job position. Like you're educating right. someone. They don't know that right. definition. Well, so. to be fair, well, I think that is, you know, that's a, that is a fair definition. I think that basically the groomer word has gone beyond that. I think it's completely divorced from that now. I mean, it worked. And I, I like the fact uh, that they brought it up first. So Right. I mean, right. I would have never said groomer in this debate if they hadn't brought it up. So mm-hmm. I also like the way that they said that you'd been triggered um, by you uh, by them calling you a racist after they had been so evidently triggered by you suggesting they were groomers. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I know. And Sitch pointed it out beautifully, too. He's like, yes. well, well, why are you getting so upset? Right. Uh, Grendel the Vat for five dollars says, "Quote: Harass and abused by EFAP, but cancel culture isn't real." There you go. Hmm. Uh, Stug for two dollars has a lot of mop and bucket emojis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stug. Uh, Can it, Kenya X one two two for two dollars says that EFAP accusation is BS. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. And they even and it was kind of frustrating because they're saying, "Well, we don't think EFAP is." you know, on the same level as some of these other people. It's like, but in your little emoji, in your little graphic you made about this, you put them all next to each other, you know? You I didn't think say... the tweet that came out as well was explicitly mentioned EFAP as being yes, someone that targets people on, like, for being, like, on grounds of, like, racism, transphobia, and homophobia as well, I think. Well, like, uh, anti-LGBTQ+, plus, I think was the phrase they yeah. used. So, well, yep. if EFAP is, is anti-LGBTQ+, plus, it's a slightly strange way of going about it to express that by inviting so many of us on. But, um, sure, sure. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, and they had um, uh, OC or Bob, I guess. He put out a video recently that was, you know, Rags being a toxic bigot for ten minutes. It wasn't him being mean. It wasn't him being toxic. It was him being a toxic bigot for ten minutes. So <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought uh, you watched that and said it was like no big deal. Yeah, I didn't really see. I mean, there were parts in it where he was being like an asshole, but I didn't see any bigotry at any point in that conversation. But that's the charm of Rags. What the that hell? That is the charm of Rags, that he's a lovable asshole. Yeah. It's <laughs> funny. Yes. Uh, Royal Raptor for $5 says, I thought this was supposed to be a debate between you guys and organized chaos. I want to hear him talk more. Yeah, actual fandom oh. did a lot of the talking, but, you know, whatever. It's the only person who I've ever heard who wants to hear more of his voice, but... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Oh, listen, we can't all have sexy British accents. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> Come on. I know. Some of us have been have not been blessed. Uh, Gene, the Angry Penguin for $5 says, the quote, it's okay when we do it meets the no true Scotsman giving birth to it's okay when no true Scotsman. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Stug for $5 says, EFAP is not able to criticize Pillar of Garbage, but Pillar of Garbage is able to criticize Critical Drinker? 
True. Yeah. It didn't really make a lot of sense. It's, it's punching up, so it's okay. You know, if, if EFAP was only allowed to criticize YouTubers who have more subscribers than them, I mean, first of all, you're <laughs> A, you're penalizing success, and then B, you know, that's very limiting what they can talk about. These are not also, exactly <laughs> fights to the death. Well, I that's mean, true, what too. what the hell? Right. But it's also, it's a really weird standard coming from someone, um, actual fandom, I think, quite often said that, well, you know, he's only, is it 6,000 subscribers he's got or something? It's like, well, my channel's only got this amount of money. Yet here he is appearing on your guys' stream, and mm -hmm. you guys between you have got pretty significant clout. Um, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure what his, his objection is. I feel like we're nobodies, but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, I'm just, well, I was just going to let it go. So shut up. Come on. Everyone, <laughs> we have every, the most clout. <laughs> everyone I watch watches you, so that counts as clout. Oh, but, based. Um, okay. In, including me. But, nice. but I'm just like, but okay, that's, well, even just for the sake of argument, you've got more clout than he does. So right. he's complaining about people taking on people who are smaller than them, yet you've got him on the stream. He's He must have agreed to be here for a reason. Mm-hmm. What is that reason? Is is True. it like, and how he does was, that reason? He was invited by his on? he was invited by his buddy. Organized Chaos was the one. Look, I was in their chat, uh, you know, trolling. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, that uh, that Southpaw guy was on, and I was just kind of stirring it up a little bit. And um, Organized Chaos said. Uh, you offered to have me on your channel and then you never emailed me. And I probably left like a comment on one of his videos or something and he responded, but I never saw it. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll email you right now. And I just emailed him. So mm -hmm. Organized Chaos agreed. And I mean, he called it a debate. I would, you know, if he wanted to have a discussion or whatever, I wouldn't have called it a debate, but he seemed cool with it. So listen. If, even oh. if we, you know how many of these we've said a discussion and it's always a debate anyway. It doesn't matter. Are we I sure just he knows the difference debate. between between those two words though, because it, it's not. He doesn't There's tend no to remember difference. what he said five minutes before he said it. So well, that's fair. Does he know the difference? <laughs> he did forget. What did he did? He <laughs> called me a racist and forgot it yes. immediately. Yeah. That's, that's not true. a good thing. Like if you're going well, no, around calling people groomer and then forgetting that you called them a groomer, it's not. It, that's the the Eric July thing as well. When he said, "Why are you so triggered?" and then literally, I think it was like two and a half minutes after Eric July said, "I don't like the fact you called me triggered," and he denied that he'd said that he was triggered. Right. Which... Oh, you're right. He did do that. I remember. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it shows how much of like what is being said is kind of like a rote response without mm -hmm. like an actual like really thinking slowly about it. And be like, well, maybe I shouldn't say this. Um, takes from the boomer side for five dollars says, Are they making the argument that a content creator is responsible for their audience's behavior when they explicitly state a non harassment stance? Yes, that is what their argument was. Uh, Butters for five dollars says, Ask them if they want synthetic man to join. He was bullied, but is that bullying okay? Well, does he have the right politics? If he has the right politics, oh, then I know, bullying is, is, is okay, acceptable, or wrong politics, bullying is acceptable. Uh, exactly slag lust for five Canadians says, I want to hear more from the guy who hold, who told Eric July that he hates his race. Yeah. I, if we had more time, I'm very curious. I didn't listen. I only listened to like 20 minutes of the conversation. I, I missed that part. I am curious as to why he levied that accusation to Eric about being racist. He wanted to bring on a, a friend because obviously Sitch and Adam are a team. So, you know, I, it's better that way. It really is. Yeah. But Do you, I, is that organized chaos who said that Eric July hates his own race? You supposedly in the conversation, yeah, he in the conversation he had, he said that Eric July is racist and hates his own race. According yeah. to this super chat. I don't know what exactly was that, but so it, did you well, did you all listen to the debate that they had? I only saw a bit of it, so I've not seen that bit either. Right. But right. It, it sort of according to mind, because you were you were having the conversation with them about whether they'd read any of the material that they are sort of unwittingly citing in terms of the origins of like structural no, institutional racism and all of that. I think no, yeah. <laughs> if you say if you say, have you read it? And he says yes, and then you say who? And then he doesn't answer that I question. Read Christopher Rufa. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly the same thing. But uh -huh. I don't I don't know because I, I didn't get the impression they had read it, but that kind of comment suggests that okay, they might not have read it at source, but they've certainly internalized the worldview. 
Mm -hmm. um, yes, they just don't yeah. really know where it comes from, which is an impression they gave quite often. Yeah. So when, when you were saying maybe you don't understand what your critics mean when they say woke, yeah. that's probably true because they just don't know the origins of their own belief system and they don't totally. believe it's a belief system either. So they can't spot it. It's just so they think science, it's just... dude. Just follow yeah. the science. <laughs> Interesting. Someone in chat I've said it was stuff. about his Miles Morales take. What was his Miles Morales take? Uh, I'm I, not sure. They, I think they said, you know, and keep in mind they're completely unreliable protagonists. So who knows if Eric <laughs> July believes this? Uh, it, this is his take, but he, evidently he doesn't like Miles Morales or Into the Spider Verse. But I, I think well, actually listen. in the debate he was trying mm -hmm. to say, "No, you misunderstood my take." Right. right. It was just some little point that he was. I say criticized. I mean, listen. I would agree. If you don't like Into the Spider Verse, you probably don't have a soul. Well, yeah, I love Into the Spider Verse. <laughs> well, that's so. a different question. Um, let's see. But I don't what? have a soul either, so I mean, that doesn't make any. Well, sense. you don't like Weird Al, so you know, pretty dangerously close. Uh, Lightning Ninja thirty six for five dollars says Mahler covered someone who went after his friend. How dare! Yeah. There you go. Eric July said that Miles Morales is not Spider Man and he called him a token. Oh. Okay. I mean, I don't think that makes you racist for saying that. Yeah. But, but they probably would think that. That that that's the the weird shifting standard they have. So they say it's patterns of behavior. Well, mm -hmm. okay. Is it acceptable to observe a pattern of behavior in studios, which is, for example, race swapping or elevating non-characters who are female as leads solely to address the representation gap isn't that a, a pattern of behavior which all which then valid, uh, validates the the criticism that these studios are only doing these things for representation and not doing it for story but according to them that is also a pattern of behavior which evidences racism and sexism in which case it's literally impossible to criticize a trend in media That's because by point. criticizing a trend in media you are criticizing a pattern of behavior yeah yeah. That's the point. Right, and I, that was kind of when we were talking about what questions to ask them, that's what we were trying to get at. Like, is it possible to criticize this without being labeled that? And they wouldn't even define any of the terms, so we could never get to the bottom of it. I think uh, we Andrew, did. I think we got I think we got a lot of interesting material here. Oh, so. no, yeah, we definitely. It was a, a good conversation or an interesting conversation. Yeah, you, you laid all of the rope on the floor, and they tied it around their own necks, which we... <laughs> In case they're watching this back, is not me telling you to go and kill yourself. It's not the same thing. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Clark for two dollars says so. Representation should be proportional. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, PC for two dollars says this hypothetical is too unusual for me to answer. See, I mean, I don't know. To me, whenever someone is unwilling to answer a hypothetical and they don't explain specifically what their problem with it is, I think that is bad faith. That means they're too worried that they're going to say something that's going to show some kind of inconsistency in their position. Yeah. 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 Uh, Cuomo's Revenge for $2 says, analyze the Proud Family clip in real time, guys. Now, that would be interesting. Oh, oh, oh no. If, 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 the, if we had them on and we watched that Proud Family clip, that'd be very fascinating. Maybe we'll do that next time if they come on again. I would be interested to watch that clip with the dialogue always. <laughs> the is it the white fragility one or the other one? The Abraham uh, all Lincoln of the white one. fragility one, the Abraham Lincoln didn't care about slaves uh, one. I keep trying to get dialogue always to come back on. Okay. He knows he's welcome on the show. He likes to super chat and and target me on Twitter. <laughs> As you should. Everyone should target. I mean, anonymous coward for five dollars. Says reframing the argument, not working from given definitions, moralizing interspersed into rebuttals, apex fallacy to dismiss cancel culture. I hit bingo. Nice. There you go. All right. What is apex fallacy? That sounds like it's something useful. You win free will at the Sigmund <laughs> Adam bingo game. Apex fallacy occurs when someone evaluates a group a group based on the performance of best group members, not a representative sample of the group members. Oh, oh okay. There you go. Yeah, so cancel culture doesn't exist because, because some of the people apex. Oh, yeah, because some people yeah. are successful, you know, complaining about cancel culture and wokeness. I always, I always say attempted murder is still a crime because it is obviously <laughs> trying to kill somebody. Jesus. 
Right. Attempted canceling is still attempted canceling. Yeah. Uh, rotisserie protocol for ten dollars says the question is what is the line at which you label someone an ist or a phobe? They wouldn't. We wouldn't get to answer that question. But mm -hmm. That was the question we were trying to get to. But their answer would be a pattern of behavior again, which is yeah, right. entirely undefinable because they're the ones defining it. It's do I agree with this criticism or not? That's the standard yeah. of of evidence they're using. Right, and it's it's it is like it, it's it's frivolous when it's coming from them because they are who they are but as a standard that might potentially be successful or that we do see being successful elsewhere in the world it's it's really it's, it is quite a dangerous standard I mean, he goes on about totally. the harm principle but you're yeah. giving people carte blanche to cancel people to destroy their livelihoods and their careers based on do i like what they happen to be saying and have i randomly drawn a bracket around what they're saying to define it as a pattern of behavior that i don't like that's that's not good. That that's a really quite a dangerous standard to operate by. For like, hypothetically, movie criticism. Criticism I know I know no that less. they don't like hypotheticals, but hypothetically they were successful, right? Mm -hmm. And in a year's time, two years' time, their anti EFAP campaign had taken off and had got more subscribers than EFAP had. Um, and they were using the same standard, they would be able to leverage this this bizarre approach to cancel basically anyone on YouTube who evinces any opinion that they in the moment decide is not right. That's all that's all it is. It's do I agree with you or not? And they are trying to advocate that they be given the right to decide what opinions other people are allowed to have and what opinions they're not allowed to have. Every mm -hmm. nasty movement in history has is, is, is tried to gain yes. these tools. And this is why we had uh, question number four: What is the difference between you and Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> because you literally spelled it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you know, going back to you know another good point uh, you brought up is like they they would answer the question by saying it. You know, it's this pattern of behavior, and I see this. This happens so often. It says you know Scott Adams talks about the laundry list fallacy, and it's like people say, oh, I can you know have ten shitty points. And if I put them together in a list, somehow that proves my point. It's right. like, well, wait, no, if you have 10 weak points, it doesn't make one good point. And so it's like, I feel like it's the same thing. And that's why I looked up the the, the uh, Ryan Kennel clip. Because it's like, okay, if you have a pattern of behavior, you know, what you call pattern of behavior could just be you misinterpreting someone 10 times and then assuming that that means they're racist or sexist. Uh, Glib Facsimile for $5 says they have zero answers to the problems they want to be praised for addressing while they seek to actively... Have you deplatformed and call you racist? That was pretty established. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ross the Ninja, thanks so much for being a fuel seeker for three months. Says the year is 2055. Elon has moved to Mars and these two clowns haven't answered a question. <laughs> <laughs> there you good. go. There That's you pretty go. good. Uh, Dennis for $20 says, how do they measure the fandom enjoyment when most of the show... Most of the shows are part of subscription services and movies make money outside the U.S. where they don't care as much or at all about lore or the crappy messaging. That's a, that's a fair point. Mm -hmm. uh, Felicity for 10 Aussie Bucks says, Ask OC about what he thinks of Obi-Wan's motivation and character when he dies and what he said about Rag's take. OC's media, media literacy is atrocious and he can't speak to common understanding. Let's ask him that next time. I haven't seen the Obi Wan show or Rags' take on it, so I think I saw both, but I'm trying to remember what. I think the question was one to do with sacrifice. I think it was. I, I I'd have to rewatch. What was them, Obi Wan's but... motivation and character when he dies? His motivation and character when he dies was that he was sacrificing himself in order that Luke could escape and right. he could he could win. Um, it, it's quite simple. I remember Organized Chaos did get it wrong. I'm just not quite sure exactly how he got it wrong I'd have i don't know what it. you get i mean yeah you're right it's, it's very straightforward i don't know how else you would interpret the scene but then again i wouldn't have interpreted the way he interprets she hulk as having an arc against you know controlling her anger so who knows <laughs> but, um i know he liked last jedi which was pretty surprising to me so maybe he just has contrary maybe he's like doomer he just has contrarian media takes mm -hmm. okay. yeah because like how much how much of that is an identity thing so they're big on, on attacking the fandom menace just mm -hmm. as an example like grouping random people together who all have well they have opinions about certain media properties which they can conveniently bunch together as as being the fandom menace right but 
how much of that works in the other way as well? Like, how much did he really like The Last Jedi? And how much did he like it because he has got his own equivalent of the fandom menace, which is whatever the anti-fandom menace is. Well, the anti-fandom menace is like the anti-woke mm-hmm. thing. How much of that is just him conforming to his own in-group as opposed to um, actually analysing the, the merit and the worth of that film? Given his ability to analyse other works of media, I'm not sure he likes The Last Jedi for its own sake because I don't think he could. I don't think he could. Um, it's it seems to be a bit of an identity movement again. It's like it's, it's worse just an anti, on their side, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's way it's, worse. It's a reactionary movement in its own way. Right. Well, I mean, that's always the question. You know, we're not liking Last Jedi. Like, yeah, Last Jedi had weak, had woke stuff in it, but it was really bad for reasons that had nothing to do with any like political under, you know, political messages whatsoever. Oh God! And, yeah. Yeah, and it seems like I mean, I don't know. From my perspective. And I, you know, I listen. I can't read his mind. Maybe he really likes the theme. I watched his video on it. Maybe he really likes the themes of, you know, failure, failure and redemption. You know, I didn't see any redemption in that movie. I saw just failure. Um, but maybe that's why he likes it, and maybe he just can't understand how people don't view the world in the same way, and so that's why he's like, oh, well, it must be because they're racist or sexist. I don't know what's going it's on there. Possible. But. I mean, it's the only thing I'd agree with him on, I think, from what I heard him say, is that. Like, I think if your only criticism of something like The Last Jedi is, well, it's woke or whammon, then yeah, I think those are both terrible criticisms. You should be more specific. I agree right. with him on that. Yeah. I just don't think he's actually upholding the stand that he's applying to other people. Yeah. Uh, Marco Gloria, Marco Glory in the chat says that he said he died to motivate Luke to kill Vader. That was uh, the I point. Yes, yeah, that. yeah. So. No, that's not what he did, but... um. <laughs> But that's what uh, Organized Chaos thought he did. So okay. make that really? Oh, wow. Interesting. That's a strange take. That is strange. Um, Glib Facsimile for $5 says they want you to be canceled for the things you say, but they don't want to make any kind of general principle because they want to be selective. True. Uh, Gene the Angry Payment for $5 says, Meanwhile, banging on the coffin lid as, de- as dirt is piled on top. Good faith Gary screams, yet no one hears. <laughs> There you yeah. go. Uh, anonymous scary. coward for two dollars says Uno reverse. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that was when I uh, when you called them a groomer and they got mad. <laughs> I would assume that's when that happened. Uh, forking around for five dollars says Hi Dane. I'm a Dane, but a better Dane though because I'm a forklift certified. There you go. True. Uh, PC for ten dollars says Based Adam asked them about MMT. <laughs> Oh, God, I wanted to so bad, but... You can ask him about MMT, Adam. Come on. Next time. Uh, Felicity, Felicity for two Aussie bucks says, Ask Bob how a clown person is a racial slur. We'll have to say that for next time. Uh, JD Pachant for $2 says, Can they define the word hypothetical? Probably not. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, the Justice 35 for $5 says, Why is it bad for EFAP to criticize content creators based on their published works? If you make media, aren't you putting yourself out there to criticism? True. That's a good point. You are. You're putting it out there for people to watch and to think about and like or dislike. Andrew Collect for $5 says, Bob said that YouTubers can't read into art as a pattern of behavior, even though the MCU is directed by Kevin Feige and others. True. Uh, the Justice 35 for $5 says, if you're making media on a pl- public platform, you can gain more from being critiqued and having your arguments broken down than by just being praised. Maybe, but it doesn't feel good. Justice, I want everyone to just praise me all the time. I'm never going to <laughs> Maybe I do wonder how much of that is in their minds, though. So, would anybody have heard of Organized Chaos if Rags hadn't, or if he hadn't attacked Rags and Rags hadn't responded? Um, like, how much of these? How much of this is effectively bottom feeding, and they are just really trying to inflate their numbers by, yes, yeah, sto- stoking up YouTube drama. Um, I, I'm. I'm kind of interested by by how much that's in the forefront of their mind. Like, I, I don't know how much they're really committed to these arguments and how much it's just, well, it's it's evidently been proven to be a way of gaining other people's attention. And th- that those people's attention is a really good way of driving numbers up. So we're going to carry on doing that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But well, again, we- hasten to um, ascribe nefarious motive to people who right. could otherwise be idiots. We sure. would never dig up drama. No, <laughs> I mean, well, it I seems like you're not going to get accused of that. <laughs> I think you can find success on YouTube by either being hyper woke or being hyper anti woke. So I don't really right. buy the narrative like one way or the other. Um, so, mm-hmm. but 
but yeah, I mean, I obviously digging up drama, criticizing big YouTubers. I mean, that's a pathway to success in the platform. And I think as long as you're honest with your your criticisms, nothing wrong with that. But you know, that's the key there. You have to be honest with your criticisms. But then yeah. you get that that weird double standard where is it pillar of garbage? I think it was. You know, he goes yeah. for critical drinker because he knows it will get him the numbers. But then EFAP responds, and that's bad. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, someone said said no rag said Obi Wan died to motivate Luke to kill Darth Vader. Oh, really? oh I, I stand corrected. In that well, case. I don't agree with that, but. Hmm. Um, JD Champ for two dollars says like they love. Better. <laughs> there you go. Uh, they love defining when it supports their position. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Todd Sullivan, thanks so much for the five dollars and the lemon playing a trumpet emoji. Thank wow. Uh, Monkey awesome. for ten dollars says, "Funny how these guys are willing to admit they had racist thoughts, and it should and it should just be a discussion, but they're ac- apoplectic at the mere insinuation that someone at something they said was racist." It's a pattern of behavior. That's what they said. So yeah. they are probably racist. Talk about just, the white fragility on these guys, there you too. Go. Jeez, <laughs> the chunky monkey thing. I, just, I just oh. understand that the, that chunky monkey argument made no sense to me. It's like, well, if that specific combination of words was a racist stereotype, I would have apologized for it. It's like, well, okay. I but mean, it's, oh, it's, it's weird. Also, it's an incredibly nitpicky way of getting out of it to say, well, I Googled whether specifically Chunky yes, Monkey was yes. a racist trope. Yes. And like everyone, including you guys, but everyone in chat as well, was saying, well, no, the Chunky part isn't the problem. You must yep. have known there yes. was a racist connotation in the Monkey yes. part. No? Right. But he yeah. he very studiously avoided that. Um, right. So props to him for his uh, dedication to getting himself out of trouble, but I'm there not sure go. it quite worked. Uh, the justice for five dollars says, "I'm glad A team finally got done to shatter their bad faith mass. A team reigns supreme, but S class is good faith Gary class." Well, listen, True. you have to good cop and a bad cop. So yeah, I think that's what we work. That's one we of our favorite together. things to do. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Flaccid Phoenix for five dollars says, "Please ask." <laughs> this is the one I wasn't going to ask. Please ask organized chaos how he's cl- how close he is to legally allowed to li- <laughs> legally allowed to live next to a school. So oh, no. there's your grammar <laughs> accusation. Uh, Sion Arkale for ten dollars says, "Did your guests know that EFAP criticized Synthetic Man for his racist and sexist takes about God of War Ragnarok?" No, they probably didn't know. That's why, yeah, I didn't. I wasn't familiar with that wow. either. Oh, well, actually, I was familiar. I do remember them talking about that. I didn't remember that it was Synthetic Man. Um, but yeah, that's why I brought up the first show I was on. They were criticizing no bullshit for his yeah. wacky, you know, hyper anti woke take on Avengers. Was they that call, the he, suspicious I mean, amount of women and the giant? That was it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a suspicious amount of women yes that was the quote That's and uh, the fact that vision was supposed to be some sort of trans allegory which was oh ridiculous. god yeah 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 because he had his um he had his thing removed so that must be a trans allegory He's trying to be a real uh, boy yeah i was like that oh, was okay. a fun episode yes uh john no graham bullshit. for 10 canadian says message uh, been me on... when you guys were doing that what uh no bullshit message me when you guys were doing that your friends are making fun of me on EFAP. I'm like, what do you want me to do about it? Jeez. Well, it's funny because they didn't tell me. We watched two videos. I forget whichever one we watched first was the only one I knew about. I didn't know we were watching a no BS video. But not that I care. Because Was that before we had the, the, the big debate yes, with no BS? Yes, of course it was. Yeah. Maybe that's what led to the debate with no BS. Uh, John Grant for 10 Canadians has been on EFAP numerous times, only ever had fair, enjoyable conversations about concrete mechanics functions of media been listening to wow adam has stitched for years <laughs> enjoy the discussion thanks for the show oh wow terrible terrible I threw you under you, the john. bus there i know but thank you john uh andrew clark for two dollars says fandom menace isn't their name only wcvs now they got rid of mean? fandom menace what i like fandom menace i assume there's some kind of meme there but i don't know what that means uh, bu- um, Britt Cormier for another hundred dollars. Thank you, Britt, for the two hundred dollars. Thank you so much. That's very generous of you. Uh, says if I had a channel, I would be ecstatic if a big channel came after one of my videos. People need thicker skin if they're going to put your thoughts out on the internet or just don't read the comments. You are in charge of your own feelings. Do not give that power to strangers. True. True. Yeah. yeah. Very true. Uh, it's interesting to me that they put such an emphasis on people leaving mean comments on someone's video. Mm-hmm. Ver- that like that has like a hyper emphasis oh you shouldn't do that but 
if you try to Welcome. get someone fired from their job <laughs> oh, canceled that's from a platform fine. You know, yeah that's not such a big deal it's like mm, it's a little suspicious also, welcome to the internet. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a mad standard. How long have you been online for if you think that people leaving mean comments constitutes bullying? True. It's mad. Uh, Black Hat for $2 says, remember to smash that like button. Thank you. Yeah, you know, thanks. I have a poll up. It says, did you like the stream? 883 mm. people have voted. 83% mm. said, yes, I am based in alpha. And but only they're 17% lying. said no, they're I jinxed my straight. Some of you yes people are lying because the <laughs> likes are only at 447. So some of you are some yeah. of you are lying about being based in alpha. You gotta fix that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they mean that they just liked it as in it was a good stream. Oh, I see. They liked it in their head. <laughs> you look, you made a bad poll. This poll should say, did you smash the like button? There you go. And well, and they smashed yes, it in their I'm head. Based in alpha. No, you look. You did the poll completely wrong. I'm just. I'm noticing this, so they don't even know. Here, I got to fix this poll. Wow. No, leave it. Leave it. Andrew okay. Clark for two dollars says, "Sitch, can you read out my five dollar super chat?" Well, I I did now. I didn't get to it then. <laughs> uh, Potato, thanks so much, our surrogate uncle, for being outside the simulation for wow. seven months. Wow. Oh my God, he's free, free of us all. Says Obama was president, therefore racism does not exist. Boom, drop the mic. Yeah, true, true, definitely. Uh, Butters for five dollars says I've run out of bingo squares on NPC dialogue bingo card. I'm crossing off the bingos now. <laughs> there you go, full board, full blackout board. bingo, blackout bingo. Well, is that I, is no. that racist? Let's say that's racist. <laughs> Don't just don't call it a chunky monkey thing. <laughs> it's not chunky monkey level of racism, but it is. Yes. It's getting up there. It's close. Uh, Flaccid Phoenix for five dollars says uh, AF had blocked. Actual fandom has blocked a black YouTuber named Abomination AJ and doesn't want to debate him. He is only clout chasing, trying to debate bigger YouTubers. He's bad faith. There you go. Well, if they uh, want JD... to come on here and debate on our platform, I'm down. There you go. There is a, there's actually a line in I think it's it's Veep. There's a Veep episode where the, mm -hmm. the press secretary gets really annoyed, and uh, he accidentally calls a civilian person a, a cow. Mm -hmm. And after that, he tries to say, "Oh no, but you know, when I was growing up, my mom always called me a cow. It's a term of affection." <laughs> um, <laughs> That's exactly what he did. It's kind of like the same thing. Yeah, like a chunky monkey. Yeah, listen, I always call all. I called my daughter chunky monkey. As did someone on Reddit, so it's acceptable. <laughs> uh, JD Bachamp, that's like in, uh, what was it? Was it Clerks 1 or 2? Where he's like, he's like, Porch Monkey, we're taking it back. Oh my God. No. <laughs> and he has like the shirt that says Porch Monkey, I'm taking it back. Uh, uh -huh. JD Bachamp for $5 says, if the accusation of racism didn't stick, then maybe it could possibly mean that they're innocent. Did AF ever think of that? Very bad. Faith. I know that's what I was thinking the whole time he was saying that. I'm like, of course it's not sticking because they're not actually racist, you doofus. Right. Uh, Bro, moment for five dollars says Adam, you did okay today, but please watch the sexism claim. They will run to their audience and peers and actually try to label you sexist and hateful. Okay. That's I think cool. they actually said that at one point. He said, "You've given us enough material." So <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you appeared in some kind of clip compilation, which was, of course, wildly out of context. But nevertheless, I can't, I can't wait. It's it's like it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Who's not? I mean, no one cares. Yeah, sexism. Adam Look. is sexist. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll probably uh, get stuck. more viewers because of that. To be honest, there you go. Uh, Stuck for $2 says, DM Rags and Mahler. Our tards and Mongos need them. <laughs> I'm sure they'll watch this at some point. I think I think Mahler was streaming when this was happening. Really? Like or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. They had their own stream. Uh, Xphobic76 for $2. Thank you so much for your very first super chat. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Fondue for $5 says, Great debate. I'm conflicted on who won this one. Sitch or Adam? Definitely not the two other guys. Well, we're it's a team effort. <laughs> Okay, yeah, the team effort. Thanks. Uh, Hayden Dill for seven months. Thanks so much. Says, I'm usually S class, but A, A team is killing it in this stream. Tell these monkeys how it is, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say it together S class is the best class. Got him. Okay, cool. Thank you, Hayden. 
Uh, Idiot Tosin for five dollars says, "Adam, you got to be careful with the groomer hypotheticals. Even if it's just rhetorical, it gets people riled up and makes it look like you're accusing." Well, I think they are groomers, to be honest with you. But yeah. I mean, by the definition of grooming people groomer. to their ideology, not yes. you know, I don't right. think they're pedos. Right. Uh, yeah. Moondocky, do, do they have a point in being? Um angry about that though given the, the colloquial definition is so clearly tied to the pedo accusation i mean i know what you were going for there but mm -hmm. given how many people only go by the colloquial sort of modern definition mm -hmm. are they justified in being angry about that well, sure i, I mean I, look, you would be yeah, angry they, if i think you they pedo, are right i think they are justified in being angry obviously but i did it you know it was like a tit for tat thing like he called me a racist well, yeah. so i called him a, a groomer <laughs> It was right. perfect because, and and Sitch even did a good job of pointing it out when I was getting like a little triggered and not clear headed. So, <laughs> what well, it's hard to say. Look, well, I don't like when people call me a racist. Those no. they know nothing about our content, and they come on our stream like we're Richard fucking Spencer. It's oh, but they that, do because they explicitly said that because Sitch has some friends they don't like, that means he's guilty. Yeah, see, so, I um, don't, that pisses me off so much. <laughs> guilt by association. It's a, it's a lovely, lovely standard by which to operate. Yeah, but he himself, this is why I asked the question, is it okay to be friends with racists? He says, sure. Look, I, he tells us he's got a bunch of friends that are, ra are racist. <laughs> so for <laughs> some reason, friend is racist. for some reason, it's okay <laughs> for him to be friends with Richard spencer but you know <laughs> right well he did say if they were an overt white nationalist that's where he drew the line to friendship look good faith gary comes in I, i'm just yeah. saying he's gonna he's gonna complain they're gonna clip this and say i said explicitly the other thing I... I mean they're probably more likely to clip the part where i call them a groomer again but well, i did true. define it it'll be uh, that and and I'm, I'm okay with sexism Th those will be the two clips they use right. and it will What's, go up what i mean it'll be what is the what is this? I don't understand the the sexism crime. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean? Well, I mean, it's we. I mean, we talk about the diff. You know, biological sex differences between men and women on the show all the time, and mm -hmm. we are generally, you know, team guy. But what I don't Wait, like. What, I, what are you talking about? I mean, I'm also generally team guy, but for entirely different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just wondering whether or not um... I don't know what what is what is team guy. I don't know what that means. Well, I just like um, we're raw, raw for you know guys. Guys are you know cool and do okay. great I mean, shit. I'm in favor of raw, raw for girls that are cool and do great shit. Like I, I don't understand what you mean. Well, by... I mean, but it's it's a different like, okay. type of cool. I mean, well, okay, well, I, okay. Here, I don't know. First of all, I've never heard. I don't know why we've got stuck on the sexist label because it's mm. never come up on the show ever. Yeah. Um, well, that it came up well, in this weird trying context. to define. What, came up I mean, I feel context. like sexist is just making sexist jokes and stuff. And right. See, see, when I heard you say that, I, I assumed this was kind of like, I don't mean this in a disparaging way, when Steve Bannon says you should be proud to own the label of fascist, mm. you should be proud to own the label of this because the other side is defining these things way too broadly. So if they call you that, it's almost a term of endearment. Mm -hmm. But... I wasn't sure if that actually was quite what you meant. Right. I don't think that's a good strategy. I'm going to have to dis... I mean, I know Steve... Well, I, it's a bad strategy show, with but... fascists. I'm not sure it's a bad strategy with sexists. I think it's though. a bad... Well, for, it's a bad strategy with sexists because when there are actual people that do believe that women should not have equal rights in society, you don't want to be lumped in with those people. Well, I'm not one of those people. Honestly. I understand. But if you say I'm a sexist, then you're... But look, there, there, is a, there is a range of sexism, obviously. Okay. I, and okay. they're, they're going to yes. judge anyone that, you know... May makes a sandwich joke as a sexist. Okay, and but so I am but, going to make that yeah. sandwich joke every single right. time. So, so here's what I would say. This is like the conversation we, I had with Vince where I said, don't throw away the science because you know people are using it improperly. Like, Don't throw away the term because people are using it properly. Just say, no, you can make jokes. People can make jokes that are, have sexist edge to them or racist mm -hmm. edge to them. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're sexist or racist. Mm -hmm. Like making a joke doesn't necessarily make you one of the isms. Yeah, the proper definition of feminism is that women should be able to take a joke just as well as men can. Exactly. So right. it's not really sexism. Yes. True. So if women can take jokes, really? You really gonna, <laughs> you really think, the, you really that's believe the, that? That's a, I've heard, I've heard that's it said. You you, you <laughs> must the not, thing is you must not be married. 
But see, here's <laughs> I want to relate back to what you said. You said we talk about the different, like the biological differences between men and women. And like, yes, there are, if you were to take the average, there are average differences between men's, men and women that is behavioral that I do think is biological, not cultural. However, neither of us have ever suggested on the show that society should impose behavioral restrictions on or cultural restrictions on men or women because of those averages or say that men and women can't behave in a specific way because of those, you know, behavioral average differences. And that's details, what sexism details, is. details. Oh so. my God. Anyway. Look, if, if you, if you're uncomfortable with me calling myself a sexist, I get it. Well, no, I just think it's done. I think, I think that you misspoke mm. in terms of, uh, saying that Gary, not Gary, uh, Ethan was sexist or something. He says it more than me. What are you okay, talking about? Okay. Well then about? I think that, I think that you're trying to create some kind of defense for him that you don't need to create for him. So. No, I think he makes sexist jokes too. Like I think you right, make but that doesn't make jokes. you sex. I think, that doesn't well, make you okay. sexist under my definition look, of sexism. Right. Yeah. But by their you... definition of sexism, you are definitely sexist. I understand that, but don't. I don't think it's right to accept their label. Okay. Reject them. I mean, it, it's like calling yourself a, a racist for making like jokes which are not themselves racist, but could right. be well, construed I, as being I, such. You are admitting the validity of the label, I suppose. Right. The 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 interesting thing that I think came out of it was how casually, you know, they think sexism, racism, and and homophobia and transphobia all together, are yes. all the exact same thing, which sure. I think mm -hmm. is completely ridiculous. Yeah. So well, it's, it's the it's the incantation. It's like the rote spell. They have to say them all together in like the in the code line. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they get into like an error. So racism, sexism, homophobia, Avada Kedavra. Look, you know they're goes. gonna they're gonna go through the streams and find all the places that I've made sexist jokes, and they're gonna be like, "Look, he's a sexist. He calls good." They have a hours of content to go through. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And it's just it's gonna help us. I don't like. I think it's gonna be a good yeah. thing. But there you go. Se sexism is not as disparate in society as as racism or transphobia. Or I don't disagree, but I don't yeah. doesn't mean you should support it. Well, I mean, how? What kind of sexism are you talking about? Okay, Just... Moondoggy for ten. <laughs> you're being awesome now. Moondoggy for ten dollars says they're clearly talking about uh, FNT. Is that Friday Night Tights? Friday Night Tights, yeah. And uh, geeks and gamers, but they don't want to say their names. Do they do edgy humor? Yes. Does it get too much? Yes. But I wouldn't call them sexist or racist. Also, it's not all of them. Well, I mean, that's kind of you know they are keep asking us for specifics, and yet they would be very generalized and vague in their answers. So. Uh, Ronaldo A. Ramirez for $10 says, I've never seen such obvious question dodging in my life. By the way, Ryan Kennel made makes edgy jokes all the time. He even said people he even said people think he's actually racist on Flashcast once. He just hates everyone. There you go. Yeah, he was um, being super edgy when I was on Friday Night Tights, so I can't remember what go. it was, though. Well, yeah, I mean, on, on the FNT point, I know it's an incredibly banal observation, but there is a, there's a really simple answer, which is that if you don't like what they're doing, you don't watch it. Yeah, turn it off. It, it's Jeez, not right. that difficult to do. Um, right. the, I, I, I met some of the guys from Friday Night Tights. I really like them. Sometimes they get together, and they, if they get off on a topic that I don't particularly like, um, I think episode three of The Last of Us, which was their coverage, was basically saying gay every other word. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, it's not really for me, but I'm not going to go and report them or try and get right. them banned from YouTube or copyright struck or any of the other methods that I don't doubt these people will go in for. It's just not content that I particularly need to hear or listen to. So I won't. Luckily, on YouTube, there's about a billion other creators I can go and listen to that of night. Course. So what's the problem? Ignore yeah. them and they're not going to be an issue for you. Right. And I think it's fair. Like if someone says, you know, they don't like gay people or they're against gay marriage, I think it's fine for you to make a video where you say, you know, this person, I disagree with this person, they don't like gay people mm -hmm. or against gay marriage, you know, whatever. It's just, it seems like so much of it is A, trying to get people booted from the platform and B, well, the person didn't explicitly say they don't like whatever insert group, but I'm going to, you know, do a bunch of line drawing like I'm on the conspiracy theory court board to show that they actually secretly don't like, you know, XYZ mm -hmm. group. Right. Yeah. Uh, Brick Nose for $20 says, Adam, with respect, you sometimes assume the worst in people. A false accusation and a valid accusation are not the only options. Someone can make an invalid ac accusation, one where they think it is valid, but they are wrong. Well, I think that's happening a lot. I do think it's yeah. just ignorance. But I believe that more pain and suffering has been levied in the world over ignorance than malice. So True. 
There's also uh, to, to, to coin a uh, phrase of theirs yeah. or to borrow a phrase of theirs. There's a pattern of ignorance, right? So if, if told, your immediate jump, um, if, you, if your jump is always to this thing, I'm going to interpret incorrectly in this specific way every single time. There is something underlying that. There's a reason they keep jumping to these particular buzzwords and uh, ists and phobics to mischaracterize their opponents. If it happens repeatedly, that is a pattern of behavior, as they themselves said. There is probably a reason underlying that, which is worth examining and criticizing, because there's currency in falsely labeling people. Um, and there's not very much comeuppance if you do falsely label someone and it's proven to be so. Like you can say to anyone else, I think what you said was racist. And someone can correct you and say, well, here's why it isn't. That person very rarely suffers any kind of social comeuppance for being uh, for falsely accusing somebody else of racism. Um, True. So they have no real disincentive to do it. The odds are always in their favor. They will always gain more capital from making the accusation than they will lose if the accusation is shown to be false. And mm -hmm. that's a problem at the moment because we've given yeah. immense currency value to certain terms in society. And that's not going away anytime soon. So when these people come along and say, EFAP, for example, is racist, sexist, transphobic, we can sit here now and say, well, look, here's the evidence that they're not. But there's a whole legion of people out there who are willing to say, well, yeah, that's that's what I'm taking my lead from. I don't need to correct it. And fine, if the evidence is against it, I'll move on. But I'm not going to then devalue the terms that have been thrown at EFAP. Um, that's, yeah, that, that's unpleasant and unfortunate. I'm not really sure how to get around that either. But it's it's dangerous and we probably should try. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great the the it's a great point. The idea that there's no penalty for false accusations. There's only a penalty if you're accused, and then society decides that you're that thing. So it's very dangerous. Uh, Stock for two dollars says Jen punched a TV. This proves she was wrong in episode one. True. Uh, Ostracy for ten dollars says someone gets fired for race based reasons. Me after watching the stream. Are you entitled to that job? <laughs> <laughs> what a weird way to frame the cancel culture topic. Yeah, that would have actually, I, I wish I should have brought that up. That would have been a very bizarre answer if you're like, you know, if you go back to like the pre-civil rights era and you're like, what, are you entitled to sit at the counter with the white people? <laughs> are you entitled to not have to sit in the back of the bus? Like, and these are just very, as very weird uh, ways of framing the conversation. That cancel culture miscommunication was hilarious. Oh my God, it was so funny. Mm -hmm. when he said you know he's not in favor of cancel culture and that he doesn't believe it exists yeah that was funny yeah uh some weird guy for two dollars says how to fix jen portray her as a league player lol there you go true uh fka322 for ten dollars says melanin is like <laughs> minichlorians there you go oh yeah true uh, Diego Madero for 65 Mega Man X dollars says they are so ideologically possessed and brainwashed, pure double think. Uh, Miller Gamer for $10 says OC was explained to by Ripa his problem with Miles Morales Spider Man six times and would Kathy Newman style accuse him of racism anyway? Highly recommend it. It's hilarious. Well, I'll definitely check it out now. So. Uh, Brick Nose for $10. Thank you, Brick Nose. Says, Sitch, the problem isn't that modern shows are depicting anti-liberal values. The problem is that they're heavy-handed with their messaging and off-putting to large audiences. Subtlety is key. Well, yeah, I think that is a problem. That's definitely a problem in terms of the pure story part. But I don't like the anti, anti-liberal anti messaging either. Uh, Literature Devil for $5 says, America media has been diverse for a long time. I remember back in 1951, we had a Cuban immigrant star in a legendary sitcom, His Culture on Display. That's a great point, Literature Devil. Yeah. Very true. Uh, of course, referring to I Love Lucy. Yeah. Was that controversial? I mean, is that technically the Would first you... uh, multi -eth inter ethnic romance on TV? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, takes from the Boomer side for $5 says... AF keeps accusing Adam of bad faith, but he meant you don't agree with him. There's no intent to deceive. He did a lot of that. Uh, JD Pachamp for $2 says, invite little platoon back on sometime. Yeah, we'll definitely have you on to talk about uh, something else that's not <laughs> that's not horribly, you know, uninteresting. Anytime you like. No, I found this very interesting. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Literature Double for $5 says, thank you, Literature Double. 
It says, woke media tells you how to think. It's very propagandistic. It can't allow you to make the wrong choices, so the desired POV is always correct. That yeah, is very true. Yeah, that's the problem right there. I think that's part of why the woke crowd doesn't like Velma, is because it's tr Velma is trying to be like this weird, edgy comedy where everyone's terrible, but also woke at the same time, and that's impossible because then you have the woke people also being terrible, and woke people see that, and their brains kind of say does not compute and melts in their heads. And I said that in, in my reviews of that show, which is that the reason that woke people are very keen to disown the show is that it presents their ideas without the usual gloss of baffling language. Yes. Um, it's so clear to everyone that you can't avoid how unreasoned and usually quite vindictive it is. Yes. And so it, it's unfashionable to like the thing. So it must be disowned. But actually, if you, if you really, really do boil down what it's saying, what messaging it's conveying, the subjects of its jokes, that they are all basically woke. Um, it's just that they are very clearly out in the open and no one can avoid how vindictive and nasty they are. So also, it, it, the, the, mo the biggest problem with Velma is it's not that it's woke. It's just that it's really painfully not funny. Yeah, and that course, always needs course. to be said. Like right. There are funny woke shows. That's fine. The real problem is that it tries to do comedy and it fails at it so badly. It's an excruciating Are there funny woke watch. shows? I mean... I'm saying that in a bit to be charitable. I'm sure there are. Hypothetically, some. there I just could can't be. Think of any. <laughs> Listen, I can engage in a hypothetical. I will. I will say that hypothetically, there could exist a show that is both woke and funny. <laughs> uh, uh, Andrew Clark Z way. Andrew Clark for two dollars says uh, little platoon joint video with Sitch on Milf Manor. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't think yeah. we're gonna do a Milf Manor video. I did watch Az's video on Milf Manor. Uh huh. How was and it? I, yeah. I was like, as what are you complaining about? This show is like <laughs> filled with conflict. I, I studiously avoided MILF Manor, but um, I did get into a conversation about like reality TV shows with, with someone, inconveniently an older woman, um, at a oh. party thing I was at oh, ages no. ago. And she was like, why don't you cover Love Island? And I said, well... Because everything's sort of moved on from Love Island now. There's, there's like a new meta in reality TV, which is worse even than Love Island is. There's a thing called Milf Manor, and then I suddenly realized, oh, shit, I don't want you to be taking the wrong impression from me explaining <laughs> to you the premise of Milf Manor. So um, <laughs> let's move away from this conversation as quickly as we possibly can. You're embarrassed to even know that you know that it exists, essentially. I know. How long yes. has it been out? I thought it was, like, brand new. It's... The Three weeks, I guess. Oh, okay. The Boondocks was pretty explicitly anti woke. I mean, can I mean if you remember, there's that episode. First of all, I love the Boondocks cartoon. I love the comic strip before the cartoon. I was an avid reader of the comic before the cartoon even came out. Um, you know, Huey, like part of part of the joke was, I think from I think Aaron McGregor's the guy's name, was that Huey was kind of like this very like. He was this avatar of like, you know, radical uh, black liberation. And very oftentimes the comic and the show would point, would poke fun at him being so, you know, horribly pessimistic and negative when he's like living in this upper middle class, you know, neighborhood where, you know, all these people are just trying to bend over backwards to be nice to him. And it was the like, same thing in the comic. And if you remember, there's that episode, I mean, there, you know, there's a couple episodes. There's an episode where like basically they let R. Kelly off of, uh, you know, for committing a crime just because, you know, Tom was married to a white woman. And then there's the episode where like MLK is really in a coma and he wakes up again and he's kind of disgusted with like the state of, you know, the, like some of the, <laughs> I don't want to say it, but like the black community in, in the boondocks. So I think, I think boondocks would be like heavily criticized if it came out now. I don't think it's woke at all. There's a lot of woke stuff in the boys. Um, but it balances it out. So it mm -hmm. does also show the pitfalls of that, of that movement, but anything with Seth Rogen as a, an executive producer will will lend in a certain direction. Um, I think The Boys is probably more woke than most people would give it credit for, but it, it achieves a balance because it's also funny. It also has a story to tell and characters to portray. Um, and it doesn't make that message its sole reason for being. So right. mitigations. But, but if you wanted to look into The Boys, The Boys is... Yeah, woker than I think people give it. So there you go. There's your example of a, a show that's maybe woke, that uh maybe is good. So I only watched the first Milf Manor. Milf, Milf Manor is obviously is very woke. And the boys. Isn't he? Isn't he? He's into the milf. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He was pretty MMT. hot in that show. He even likes MMT. He likes MMT. <laughs> <laughs> Our face got melted. El Calypso for five months says, Wokeness is the Anakin trap from Star Wars. The world is bad, so you need to protect people with you need to protect people with power. However, protection turns into control. It's a trap. Very true. Very true. Uh, J Mac for twenty dollars. Thank you. Says no bodies. You guys have not Steve Bannon money and not George Soros money. What do you mean? <laughs> there you go. Thank you, J Mac. Yeah, uh, totally. Our executive producer of the show. <laughs> yes. Uh, Felicity. Thanks so much for the two Aussie bucks says, please give wormy gentle pats for me. I did. Also always, take off the gift before everyone's brains melt. Why? You just... People can't. Okay. Oh, I, this I need gift you, I... is okay of you here. Look, I'm getting a good gift of the boys. Listen, I need you. I need your help here. Platoon. Okay. Is it Adam like thinks that you can just play a gift that repeats endlessly and it just won't like drive people crazy. I'm trying to tell him it just people don't like to look at it. Only you. <laughs> It only that, everyone in the chat crazy. was like freaking out at him. They're like, stop with the gif. No I mean, way. I, I was just looking at it and yeah. No. Like, it has to be really subtle. If it's repeating all the time, it can't just be really big movements. Yes. The Stitch one's good. Yeah, because it's, it's subtle. Now. And it looks yeah. like it could be continuous. Yes. Like I'm just flying through the air forever, essentially. God, everyone's a critic. Everyone's a critic. Are you wearing your I mean, baby Yoda sweater for the <laughs> We literally are critics, but yes. <laughs> true. That is true. What's the matter with baby Yoda? You don't like baby Yoda? Uh, no, you have baby Yoda's fine. Uh Grendel the Vat for ten dollars says Sitch and Adam debate started nowhere and went in a circle. Great job maintaining composure despite inane unsubstantiated arguments. Little Platoon's invasion of the body Santra's video is excellent. Holy shit, that's that's incredibly old before I knew what I was doing. So that's a positive thing. Well, Patu makes great videos. You guys should subscribe to his channel. I've dumped it in the <laughs> chat a couple of times. So thank I'll, you. I'll post it again. But yeah, that, that that's a video before I even knew what video editing software was. So um, avoid that one if you want something slickly produced. But anything in the last six months is good. His She Hulk video is amazing. That's Especially the one it. that shouts me out. <laughs> so be sure to check that one out. That uh, you just had that gift. Well, how many the boys. how many She Hulk uh, videos did you make? Because I think Sitch made like three or four. Too many. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say three. I think okay. it was three because I did one and I said I'm not gonna go back to this. And then but it then got, it got so like, insane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it got worse. It got and worse. I found that there was so much more to say. And also it got lots of views. And so I thought, you know what? I, yeah. I'm above the... money, but only to a certain extent. And then it, it right. drags me back in. So we're all um, fours here, okay? We don't have to. Basically, yes. If it, Three or if, four, I think, is the answer. Look, if it's interesting and it gets views, that's a dynamite co combination. So many times we do want to make videos about things that are interesting that don't get views. And we kind of do it anyway, so. Right. True. So if you can find something that is going to get views and is interesting, hey, jump on it. I did a uh, three and a half hour avatar video, which I found really interesting, but viewers do not find as interesting <laughs> as She-Hulk and Velma. So I'm going to have to go back to Velma, I guess. But, um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, didn't, I, I didn't see the new avatar. It's so little interesting. I mean, well, if you've seen the first one, you've also seen the second one. But if you've seen Dance of the Wolves, <laughs> you've seen them both. So, okay. To that. Listen, I've seen Fern Gully too. And Last <laughs> Samurai. I've seen all the movies. Uh, J Mac. Thank you so much, J Mac, for another $20. Says Adam doesn't know about Mother and Earthbound with a heavy heart and a crushed soul. I must declare that S class is the best class. Oh my God. Really? <laughs> My heart is broken, Adam. Oh. I've, I've seen the movie Mother. Which <laughs> which which mother are we talking about? I haven't. You signed about the video game. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that's class is best class. There you go. Wow, Adam doesn't know about Earthbound. How sad. J Mac had a picture. I think I remember looking at it where he was dressed as Ness. So Earthbound is a video game or a... the video game from the okay. SNES days. Go yes. check it out. 
Because remember, I said that guy, Vyad, he was dressed as an ass on stage and you didn't know what I was talking about. You outed yourself as a boomer. Well, I tried to there. I tried to play it off, but I didn't work out. So. I know. Sometimes that happens. It's okay. I always make sure to point it out. I know. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Postman Socrates for five hours says, all Ryan Kinnell said was that Hollywood doesn't get to preach to us about Harvey Weinstein when they enabled him for years. Well, that's a fair point. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Idiot Tosin for five dollars says She Hulk might not have been the best example to keep going back to since you OC and AF couldn't even agree on what She Hulk was fun foundationally. Well, I mean, to me that's very interesting, but I feel like that would be like any any example that we bring forward. That's going to be the disagreement. They're just going to disagree on what it's saying. I, I don't think we'd reach a movie where they agree and say yes, this is a. I mean, if they can even you know, sit by an example of what woke is. They're not going to agree like, yes, this is a woke movie, but we think it's good that it has this message. So it's useful as well, because you know, you are asking them questions about She-Hulk that they are either a refusing to answer or B answering objectively incorrectly about what the jokes in the show were, what the targets were, what the intended effect on the audience was. Um, that's a pretty good way of showing that they don't really know what they're talking about. And they're, trying to avoid acknowledging that i mean they're very very keen to say that she hulk was um not uh effectively kind of upper middle class urban metropolitan feminist please clap humor which is right. obviously what it was that's every single joke within it and they will willingly uh, mischaracterize the arc her storyline the jokes within it in a bid to maintain their own stance on that property um that that's just a way of showing where they stand and how they approach arguments it doesn't reflect very well on them but that doesn't mean it's useless true uh El electric elephant for five aussie books says really simple woke definition the cultural attitudes and world view derived from critical theory and it's all its derivations that's literally all it is that is the simplest definition of woke that is what i would agree with it but if you say critical theory like only you guys are going to know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> They're not going to know what that means. So. But that is true. The Chad Father. Thank you so much for $5. Says Susan Wojcicki should push the Whopper button. <laughs> As class and A team. <laughs> A great debate duo. There you go. Whopper, Whopper, Whopper. Nice. Uh, Risuno Kairu for five dollars says sitch team guy means you support the guy who trained Rock Lee and was recognized as Madara Uchiha as the strongest Taijutsu user. Duh. True. That is true. Based Rock Lee. Uh Spiro Floroplorus for 20 Canadian. Thanks so much. Says, can you criticize a show or movie for having injected ideologies without being called racist? As a Jehovah's Witness, can you criticize Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs without being judged as an apostate and shunned? Same answer for both. Hashtag cults. Wow. No, that's, a, that's a great point. That is a great point. I tried to make that clear, but it wasn't really coming through. No. I don't think we they really understood what ideology meant. No. Yeah. But they didn't. I don't. I mean, I don't, they were so afraid of being trapped in some kind of like, uh, like a some sort of a theoretical like trick or something that I feel like they were so defensive they wouldn't really engage with a lot of the ideas. But with that so, one though, I don't even know if it was they were afraid of being trapped. I think it was that. Well, again, you you had organized chaos say that his definition of feminism was that men and women should be equal, and yeah, that like, who, is who just, disagrees with that, right? That's, that's an a priori truth. So. Right. That's not an ideology to their mind. I think there are right. certain things which they take to be given about reality, which are in fact ideological. It's just that they're not really interrogating mm -hmm. the ways and the means and the why and the how you get there, which is where ideology comes in. If you take as your premise, men and women should be equal, that's what feminism is. You don't see feminism as an ideology. You just simply see it as a the way the world works. There are other well, examples where they well, definitely hold were on, very hold defensive. On. But are you, are you saying men and women should be treated equally or that they are equal? Because I Well <laughs> that's sort of my point, right? The ideology comes in when you ask why, how, and to what end. Mm -hmm. The premise right. isn't particularly ideological, unless totally. you're going to say that men and women should be fundamentally of their nature unequal. But the minute you say they should be equal, the ideology comes in when you say, well, what does equality mean? How do you yeah, achieve totally. equality? Yeah. And what are the connotations of equality? That's ideology. But I don't yep. 
in that part of the conversation, I didn't pick up the organized chaos in particular, but probably actual fandom as well, really spent any time asking those questions. I think they just thought, well, that's my premise. So that must be true. And yeah, that's it. Totally. Yeah. True. They're seeing, they're only seeing it from within the ideology and not actually able to ex step outside of the ideology and examine it clearly. Hmm. You know, I'd be very interested to see if someone should do like a psychological study on on gifts that don't loop well and why that triggers everybody. Mm -hmm. There's got to be something <laughs> happening there. People see like the jump cut and they and I feel it too. You go, ugh, like it's just the so jarring. The sign disappears in the middle of the street. What happened? No, it's the jarring jump cut that's like, ugh, like it just it hits you, hits your brain. Now I have and to you're take like, this oh, one God. down. Jeez. I'm just, I, maybe you're just autistic, Adam. Maybe you're the autistic one, not me. Wait, you're the one that is, look, I'm not stressed out about the jarring jump cut, okay? <laughs> That's you. Because you can't perceive it. Yeah, but that makes you autistic, not me. I don't know. But not if, ever, no, not if it's bothering more people than it's not bothering. Well, oh, maybe, chats, maybe our, autists, maybe our, <laughs> well, I didn't say it, thank goodness. Well, we're going to, we'll do a, we'll do a poll, okay? How many of you are <laughs> autistic? No. That's not what we the got, poll's going to say. Somebody, autism came up on our show. Somebody called maybe you an aut autist. It was Vince. Vince called me autistic. <laughs> no, nah, because it was somebody, somebody called themselves autistic or something like that. But there was a couple of comments that people left that were really upset because they were like, you're not autistic, I'm autistic. And like okay. I can like barely function. So mm -hmm. a lot of well, yeah, listen, autistic yeah. people really get angry when listen, people listen. have minor autism and they're like, I'm autistic. Listen, I understand yeah. that. Autism exists on a spectrum. Right. Okay. There's major, mm -hmm. you know, you can have major versions of it and minor versions of it. Sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dumb Money Media. Thank you so much, Dumb Money Media, for $50. Thank you so much. Oh, that's awesome. Says, I'm working on an interesting project right now where, where I somehow now have the most active silver coin reddit haha -ha. i would love to talk to you guys about i'd like to talk to you guys about with art mods and community business style i'll dm you a discord link if you have the time sure talk to adam adam is the smart guy mm -hmm. so yeah if you're on uh dm me on on uh twitter if you can i mean yeah. i guess you could send me a, a facebook uh a discord dm uh, some weird guy for two dollars says the boondocks canceled for the white gangsters. LOL. <laughs> exactly. Is that what happened? No, <laughs> it would be. Uh, and of course, the the episode with the teacher saying the n word is classic. Classic boondocks. I used that clip in a video like a long time ago. <laughs> I don't. Th I don't think you can use that anymore on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, non Vita Rex for five dollars says, according to EFAP, the boys hasn't been good since season one. There you go. I've only seen season one, so I think I watched the first episode of season two, and I don't know. Sometimes it just didn't didn't grab me. I kind of lost. I remember, like one was good, two was meh, three was bad. Or are there any three? Maybe one was two. One was good, two was bad, three was good. It, it recovered a little bit in the most recent one, whether that was three mm -hmm. or four, I don't remember. Um, in whichever one was the bad one, it did go way too far, I thought, down the quote unquote uh, woke route. Um, in the the whole premise is that your evil guys are essentially 4chan Nazis online and all the rest of that. Um, it was what the do you really route. expect from it? Oh, uh, no. Really? Yeah, kind, oh. kind of, yes. And then it semi recovered, I think, in the most recent series. It's still there, but it sort of remembered what had made it good to begin with. My my real problem with the boys, as it sort of went on, again, wasn't really the politics of it. It was that, well, what it's trying to do really is is shock value first, story a close second, and then politics in the right. most recent series a relatively distant third. The problem is with shock value stuff that, okay, the boys have shown in the most recent series that a, a miniaturized guy going up another guy's penis and then accidentally exploding. And then, like, how far can you go with that before it just becomes effectively snuff comedy? Um, right. And that's not really interesting anymore. And then, of course, you still have the all cops are bad stuff or ACAB, actually. Um, 
and you have the racism allegory. You have Homelander as very clearly a Trump uh, figure as mm-hmm. well. I think it just about survives because it's doing it in a way that does fit the story. But it is, it, yeah, it's still teetering on the edge of just becoming another political invective. Um, but I, it did semi recover in its most recent series. So I will watch the next series and hope that it will carry on recovering. But we'll see. Okay. Though, to be fair to the boys, I mean, it's a, based on a Garth Ennis comic, and he's kind of known for just being, you know, shock value, excessively mm. gross. So I guess that's keeping within the source material. <laughs> Look, Sitch, I'm playing a video game now. I'm driving no, down the road. A, you're playing a GIF. I'm driving down. No, look, I'm weaving down the road. It's a winding road. Well, listen, <laughs> when you give our <laughs> audience it? epileptic fits. There's one sign that goes by that I swear says GIF drugs. GIF is so but fast. It, but it goes by so fast. It says yes. drugs there, right? It does. How dare. How dare. <laughs> What's so, going on? messaging. What kind of game is this? I think I might like it. Earthbound? Yeah. Uh... It's hard to describe. <laughs> Looks awesome. It's like a it's kind of like a kind of like a parody of Charlie Brown mixed with like a JRPG. That's probably how you would describe it. JRPG. Japanese game. RPG, yeah. That means role play player game. That, that okay. means role playing game. It does. I got yes. that one. Uh JD Bachan for two dollars says new poll. Would Adam look good in a Kanye mask? <laughs> You should get the con. You should buy the Balencia mask, Adam. Go and should, pull I, Kanye. should I put the mask on next time we debate? Yes. I did the corn a couple times, and they didn't know because they. Oh, nice. They didn't turn their cameras on, so I didn't turn my camera on for them. When you called them a groomer, you should have brought up the corn first, and then called them a groomer. What's up, groomer? <laughs> that had a whole new level. <laughs> groomer. <laughs> Uh, Grendel the Vat for five dollars says, "I liked your Avatar two review, Little Platoon. Are you sure we can't get that Pokemon novel, a Magnum Opus? I'm sure." <laughs> okay, just before everybody disowns me, so like, I, I admitted in this this video when I was about six or seven, I wrote a seven hundred page, I think it was, Pokemon novel, and that's like eight oh, four pages. Wait, you how um, old were you? About seven, I think, eight maybe. I don't believe um, you. You wrote a seven hundred page thing when you were seven. I was I was weirdly obsessive. It, it happens, and so I admitted that I'd done this thing to compare. Like Avatar will allow writing devices that I would have been ashamed of as an eight year old writing Pokemon fan fiction, <laughs> um, and now people are insisting that I release it if I reach certain milestones. But it's like it's like my picture of Dorian Gray, in that if anybody else <laughs> sees it, I will die. Yeah. So it will never happen. My mom almost killed me she got it bound for my 18th birthday and oh presented it to me um as this huge that like, you could kill if you hit someone on the head with it they would die well, that um, sounds pretty I was given this, this bible thick uh embarrassing work of fiction mm-hmm. so um yeah no one's ever going to see that it's never going to happen but you can try pay me all you want but you're never going to see it listen we established that we're all whore here so there's a number there is a number <laughs> okay Honestly, what is the th- th- this might be beyond even my low standards for hoarding. I don't think. It's gonna <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna say, listen. Hashtag release the platoon cut. <laughs> it would also still be better than um Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League. So Ooh, yeah, but but no, nice. not gonna nice. happen. Yeah, you listen. If you did an audiobook version, you read it in your nice voice. It'd be great. <laughs> Uh, I would be dying of cringe. It's not going <laughs> Metalworks for eleven ninety for five dollars says Earthbound or Mother Two, as it's called in Japan, is a JRPG with a humorous Japanese take on American culture. True. Hostman Socrates for five dollars says also hail to the Lord Cord. You are a highlight of Mister of Mister Brown Alliance. Shameless plug. Yeah, that is my second channel is Lost Chord. I stream. There's a Sunday stream on over a channel called Mr. Brown Alliance Plug, um, and mm-hmm. apparently I'm called the Lord there because it's they like embarrassing me. So that's nice. where that comes from. But me and Adam are officially lords too. I don't know if you know. Them. Have oh, you got yeah. land in Scotland? We do. You can we buy have, it for a, yeah, uh, we're lords of Glendale or whatever the fuck it's called. Congratulations. Yes. So there you go. I've been thinking about doing that and setting up as a tax haven, but. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Oh, I'm a that's lord. That's a good idea. 
Uh, JD Bachan for two hours says, I love the gifts, Adam, only because Sitch doesn't. There good. Go. That's what I like to hear. It's a good way to conceptualize things. CT, stop it for $4. Says, okay, so I'm a woman, and I've also seen She-Hulk. Of course she. CT had to see She-Hulk because she had to edit those videos. Uh, mm -hmm. When she's talking to Bruce, she's belittling his experience when he tried to kill himself because she's been catcalled. Her words. When she loses control, we were supposed to be rooting for her because the evil internet men showed her a sex tape. I have seen so many people who have issues with the writing of the show being dismissed because they just hate women. True. Of Very course. True. Yeah. But CT, by editing my videos, you're engaged in self-hating uh, patriarchy. So <laughs> we have we have to not, you know, we have to ignore your lived experiences as a woman. That's it, and Adam. We love women. That's where all the sandwiches come I from. I love <laughs> women. See, that's all Kanye had to say. It would have been okay. Magor for $2 says, show art. I know there's at least one submission. If you don't comply, we'll have to spin the wheel. Where is there? Uh, is there an art that I'm supposed to show? I'll show. Uh, I'm pretty sure Magor sent us something. Okay. DM it that's to me, what he's Magor. Referring to. Um, I know Blaine's Escape Corner sent us had an, an Adam art. puppet. Oh, we can't I, we can't show the the naked Thor. It wasn't naked Thor. No. Oh well, Blaine's escape did send me naked Thor. Thank oh, you. Oh, did you? <laughs> you guys have to make sure you um, DM Adam the art because he's the one that has the ability. I can't actually put anything up on stream. It's all Adam has to be the one to get it up. So you're mm -hmm. gonna have to send it to him directly. Yeah. If you wanted to show it, but send it to yeah. So send it to Adam. But I do. I do get it up pretty easily, so. Thank you. Arithmus for $6 says, it's always amazing to me that leftists so clearly understand the concept of survivorship bias when they critique the bootstrap argument, but when it comes to the people who survive cancel culture, they've never heard of it. Well, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Arithmus for another $2 says, an odd example of cancel culture is the woman who was fired from limited run games last month because her employer was flooded with complaints by trans activists that she follows libs of TikTok and Blair White on Twitter. That's a great example, yeah. Arithmus for another two dollars says, quote, what EFAP does is bad because they attack other content creators who don't make videos about other YouTubers. Uh, end quote. The main thing that got me into this is when EFAP did a response to Pillar of Garbage's takedown to Critical Drinker. That's what actual fandom said. <laughs> hmm. Is that hypocritical? A little bit. A little bit. But remember, they're punching down, so it's different. Uh, CT for Char says, you got a problem with Adam being friends with Ethan for being sexist? Your friend said he was friends with a racist. So careful throwing those rocks in your glass house. Look, if That's I thought Ethan point. was a racist, I would just like disown right. him. Right. Well, I'd try but, and talk him out of it first. I'd say, listen, go. Ethan, why you gotta be such a racist? There you go. But I, I mean, I've never heard Ethan say anything racist. Uh, our good friend, academic agent. Thank you so much. Well, I've heard uh, him say some racist shit before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for two dollars, says Sitch. I'm here to ask you the real JQ. Will oh, you be oh. my Valentine? <laughs> Only together can you and I have our own great replacement theory. <laughs> we'll solve the dropping birth rate together without those tom with those tomboy abs. So please be my Valentine. Oh well, wow. We're going to have to yeah. explain to academic agent the birds and the bees, I think. Mm -hmm. Listen, men can can get pregnant too, Adam. I don't know if you've heard about this. Who does this art? Uh, 2023. Adam the Golden Muppet. Uh, that was um, uh, Blaine's Escape Corner did that. Oh, okay. Cool. I like it. Yeah. 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 I, don't know what, I don't know what the artist McCor, uh was supposed to send you, but... Uh, Solodoge for two dollars. I don't care that you change your name, Solodoge. I'm always gonna refer to you as Solodoge. Says uh, number one, I sent Sitch a tweet that got popular. I'm really curious on both your thoughts. And number two, it's so nice to see conspiracy theorists go crazy over an unfortunate accident that got mishandled in Ohio. And number three, favorite part of the stream is it ending <laughs> eight times. <laughs> there you go. Really? Uh, what well, uh, ended yet? No, it's still going. You sent me a tweet that got popular. All right, I oh. got the Magor art, but this is, I mean, something's going on in this art here. Lay down and put your hands behind your back. Stop resisting. 
Okay, it's like a illustration of a faceless man grunting. Mm-hmm. And then oh, this he... was um. Yeah, we talked about this in the Tyree Nichols stream. Okay. So the cop has someone. Uh, they're trying to get them to put their hands behind their back, right. and then the cop wheels out the wheel of uh, police brutality. <laughs> okay. And he says, yeah, uh, yeah, right old clobber. It's time to spin the wheel, I. Uh, and, th- and then he spins the he spins the wheel of police brutality. He says, bite Wait. down on this to pick a method for us to escalate the use of force. So they okay. gave him a little thing to bite on to, to stop the wheel. Okay. And then the wheel s- stopped on, I can't tell, but it says, it says here you're fucked. So there you okay. go. Well, it, so thank you, I think it stopped on the gun. Yeah, maybe the sniper rifle or something. The sniper rifle. There you go. So that was really? how, that's how they determine use of force. Mm-hmm. They start. They you're trying to arrest this you. They must give be you a little the thing Australian to bite down. Police department. I don't. Yeah. This is not how they do it in America. You bite on you bite on the button, and whatever it stops on, that's the amount of force they're going to use against you. Mm-hmm. We should have asked them if the Tyree Nichols uh, dying was because of racism. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, I, I, I can tell you what their answer would have been. Mm-hmm. Well, I that's guess. a really that's like a, a really that's complicated a really question. Broad question. <laughs> yes, and it's it's a hypothetical, and, and like we've gone on a wild tangent here, and we're, like mm-hmm. I thought we were talking about She Hulk, and and so on and so on. So there you go. You've got their answer to that question. There you go. Uh, the tweet Soto sent me was. I'm sorry you were deeply invested. This is a tweet from someone named Alan Elena Farrell. I'm sorry you were deeply invested in Wizard World as a child. I was deeply invested in the American Imperial War machine as an adult. So much so that I killed for it and will spend the rest of my life trying to make amends. You're not a kid anymore. It's time to grow. Wow. That's a weird tweet, but okay. Mm. I don't even know how to respond to that. It's very stupid. Um, playing a video game isn't the same as being in the army would be my starting point. I think oh, that of course. One. Yeah. Totally. I think, I think killing a person in a video game is exactly like killing a person in real life. No, <laughs> Sitch, don't say that. So, That's not. It's true. Look, well, we do now guys... live in a, uh, the age of drone warfare. It is slightly more similar than it used to be. But... Look, a lot of... <laughs> there you go. There you go. A lot of guys enlist in the military and don't really confront that idea of killing another person until they do it and it's it tears them up for the rest of their lives Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, let me keep very sad um anonymous for two dollars says i'm an ex-neo-nazi the Mm -hmm. people who were able to pull me out of their ideology were the people the william the people the guests decry as racist the arguments of the guest is what made it harder for me to break and only enforced my racist beliefs. True. Yeah, that's the problem. That is the problem. Yeah. Well, that's why, I mean, you know, that's why people like more of the Daryl Davis approach of befriend instead of, you know, beat over the head with a racist stick. Uh, Alpha Centauri for $5 says to any OC or fandom viewers sticking around, there's a friendly, unaffiliated fan Discord that accepts all with open arms to hate on our two boys here. <laughs> That's the chat room. <laughs> That's pretty funny. A uh, local Muslim for $2 says, what are those infidels talking about? Of course, you can be sexist, but not racist. Just look at us. We are very accepting of all those who see the teachings of the Quran as long as the women know their place. Mm-hmm. Anonymous for another, two do- not- for another $2 says, as the ex-neo-Nazi from before, the people who were able to pull me out of the ideology was uh, Sargon, Sitch and Adam, and a few others. Wow, really? It was ex- actually expressing the counterpoint to not being called evil is that one may. Well, listen, I'm happy Call that we it, could yeah. uh, help you there. Calling people evil is not a great way to win them over to your position. No. Yeah. No. So that's calling wonderful. them like, <laughs> wrongly calling them racist, sexist, homophobes is not a good way to do it either. There you go. But it presents the world, doesn't it, in, in the same binary mode that I assume people who are neo Nazis already view the world in. Uh, if you're going to call around, like, if you on on the left or in the center are going to call uh, everybody on the center right fascists, Nazis, and all the rest of that, you are essentially setting up the good versus evil paradigm that neo Nazis have to believe in to 
believe in anything anyway. Yeah. Whereas if you're point. saying somewhere in the middle, there exists this this grand ideal uh, idyllic realm where people are basically not mad. Um, that might be a way of de-radicalizing people. But it's always uh, kind of interesting that the number of people on the very far left who will say, for example, shoe on head is just a, a, a psyop who, who tricks people into believing liberal things because she's not 100 percent insane. Mm -hmm. um, they almost they, they create the enemy class that both sides need to subsist. And there is value and utility in saying actually I, i'm not particularly ideological i suppose or liberalism is is the counterpoint to ideology which can maybe de-radicalize people of the left and the right it certainly did i used to be on the very far left it de-radicalized me so um yeah i'm all, all for the center up the center incredibly boring take but um there you go are you saying that we de-radicalize you would be a nazi if it wasn't for such an <laughs> i'd be more of a communist but yes oh even better there you go uh, dialogue always. Oh, hey, there you go. Dialogue always for $2 says proud family isn't saying that Abraham Lincoln didn't want to free the slaves. It's saying that he didn't want people who were considered property to cease being owned by people. <laughs> so dishonest. Sitch. There you yeah, go. Thank you. A, that wasn't the real dialogue always. Of course that was the real dialogue. Always. Dialogue always does super chat quite frequently. That was the real so. one. I'm pretty sure that was the real one. Okay. So 1,100 people have voted in this poll, and 82% of them claim to have liked the stream. <laughs> but they didn't lying. press the like button. Look, why? <laughs> Somebody look. is lying here, okay? We need physical evidence that you yes. liked the the live stream. Well, maybe they, they liked the button. Them. They voted in the poll, but they didn't like the live stream because they didn't want to establish a pattern of behavior. So that might <laughs> there be There you go. No, it's the opposite. Listen. If you don't like the stream, it's because you are racist. That's the pattern of behavior. Only racist Nazis don't like the stream. True. Uh, Hostman Socrates for $5 says, they also said shrooming in schools, I assume you mean grooming, isn't happening, but this book is gay and lawn mower, lawn mower boy have been found in multiple school libraries. What's lawnmower boy? Well, someone who has boy. been shrooming in school, I can tell you that is going on. <laughs> Lawn boy, is that one of those like? Was that the? There was one of those books that was like had some very sus images in them. But also, wasn't the whole point of the the AP um, Black Studies thing that that Florida recently vetoed was that actually it was teaching effectively CRT in schools, but without the knowledge or admission of people who are actually teaching it. Um, well, it was weird because, like, yeah, if you look at the curriculum, there was a lot of CRT-related things. There was, I mean, they were literally, it was required reading or recommended reading to read uh, Kimberly Crenshaw's Mapping the Margins, which is where mm -hmm. the term intersectionality comes from. Um, there was a bunch of woke shit in it. There was uh, a queer theory section in it. They you say, okay, we have that was, black it was a queer black, theory. I think it was a black queer theory. It yeah, was even black queer specific. theory, yes, of course, right. Um, and then, so DeSantis complained. He was complaining to them, and then they changed a bunch of stuff. And then them changing a bunch of stuff got them flack from woke people. And then so they then said, they well, said that, yeah. we didn't change it because of DeSantis. We were going to change it anyway. So it's kind of like... Yeah, it was going to be changed way back last year. We just never quite got around to changing yes. it until the yes. political fallout came out. So it's pretty ridiculous, but a lot of posturing. Uh, and now, and now they call they basically called DeSantis's office uh, racist, and so now DeSantis is saying that he's looking for alternatives to the AP program, which I don't know if they exist, but we'll see, yeah. I guess. But it's the typical playbook. I mean, Ron DeSantis says we don't think that we should have unchallenged, effectively sort of black exclusionary Marxist ideology taught in schools, and so yes. the predictable response is he is trying to stop all teaching about black Americans and right. the history of slavery. Even though that's actually explicitly, as far as I understand, anyway, that's explicitly enshrined in the Stop Woke Act is that you still have to teach about slavery and the history of black Americans. Um, it's it's depressing to see organizations uh, effectively parrot democratic talking points. I don't think that legitimizes them. I think it goes quite the opposite. It delegitimizes organizations that we really need to trust in in order to have any faith that civic education is the right way forward. You can see why people are trying to take their kids out of public schools if that's the attitude taken by effectively state institutions um why should you trust them to be 
apolitically teaching of children. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as you said, I mean, it's it's very annoying because they always when they complain about the Stop Woke Act, none of them ever bring up that if you actually read it, not only is there things that like everything in it you wouldn't really disagree with, you know, usually, but then also it explicitly says that they do have to teach black history. It does specifically say that they do have to teach, talk about slavery and, you know, everything, blah, 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 blah. And they, they leave that all out to, you know, to kind of create the narrative of, you know, you just don't want to teach black, you just want to teach the history of, you know, slavery mm-hmm. in America. You want to cover it up. Like we're still in like 1960 and people are trying to do like the sort of historical revisionism of, you know, the Civil War or something. <laughs> Like What's the don't say gay bill thing over and over again? Yes, it's just, right. Nothing in the bill says don't say gay, but that's what the opponents uh, term it. And so yep. it becomes synonymous with the gay. And so Ron DeSantis gets labeled with this this unpleasant thing, which is not true, but will be held against him. But by extension, held against the gay people who don't actually support the bill either, um, because they've been co-opted into a fight that is not their own. And so when Ron DeSantis, you know, if he does continue to be as successful as he currently is being uh, by beating these people, unfortunately, there will be a constituency that votes for him on the basis that he is going against black Americans and the gay. But sure. That's being invited by the very people who are making these demographics coterminous with the, with their political ideology. It's it's a hiding to nowhere. But um, that's where they choose to try and go, apparently. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. And, it's, and this is like. And so much of this is being created by just how terribly political and lazy our journalists are right now. Because, you know, 99% of the people that complain about DeSantis, they've never read the Stop Woke Act, you know, yeah. legislation. Because who reads legislation, right? I mean, a bunch of nerd nerds on the internet. <laughs> like, <Me. laughs> yeah, like average people don't do that. And so they just see the article that says like, oh, it's, you know, it's racist, it's bad. And they just assume it's true. And that's you know that's the narrative that gets you know passed around yeah and then there's this polls done recently about you know is it important for journalists to to strive to objectivity and actually journalists rank amongst the lower demographics in terms of do we think it's important to be objective journalists are some of the people who think that it's least important to be objective certainly yeah. american journalists do which yeah. is yeah. And it's really really dangerous stuff i mean it, it sort of goes back to again the point of the stream you were doing earlier which is that these are people who believe that the harm principle as they define it is what determines what is right and not right to report report on you have the new york right. times saying that we're not covering uh, hate crimes against jews by a particular minority because that goes against the narrative that's that's really, really, really dangerous stuff. You've got no, um, you've got no bastion for objectivity anymore. The, the media has basically abandoned that standard. I was a journalist until four months ago. Um, and it, it's not fun to witness. It's one of the reasons I wanted to leave. But mm-hmm. it, it's sort of understated the knock-on impact of that, the declining trust in every other institution because there is no objective, impartial, trustworthy account of what the institutions are doing is not at all good for, for where sort of the standard of democracy is going. Um, but it goes back to what uh, uh, organized chaos and, and actual fandom were saying earlier, which is that well, we have we can't be objective because harm is being done, and so we have to call these people out for the harm that we've decided they're doing. No, um, you should let them speak, and you should let the audience who watches them decide whether they are harmful or not, and whether to watch them or not. But you shouldn't try to leverage the institutions and the the tools of the institutions against people you don't like, because you're just going to give the impression that the tools you're leveraging are politically bi- uh, biased and partisan. That's where YouTube's already gone, and they apparently want to see more of that. And uh, that's mad to me, but apparently it's sane to them. True. Very true. I think there's actually... It was interesting. I read there's like two Washington Post op-eds, one which was an older journalist who is complaining about how the younger journalists don't care about objectivity and remaining neutral. And then the other one was a younger journalist complaining about why do we need objectivity and neutrality in journalism? And I was like, oh, no, this is not good. It's not, but then I, I went because I went to um, there's a, a college in London. This, uh, it's called City University, which is it sort of sells itself as the Oxbridge, it's in Oxford and Cambridge of journalism. Mm-hmm. It's it's where it, they train all the new journalists coming up who will eventually go on to work for the BBC and ITV and all the rest of that. Um, so you get to go and and spend time with and learn with the next up and coming generation of people who will be your leading journalists and just listening to what they thought, believed, the arguments they would make. Um, 
that was kind of frightening, actually. It's not going to get better in media for a long time. It's the reason alternative media is rising so quickly. Yeah. But um, but as long as these people continue to come to the fore, there, there was a really um, there was one example where we were given like a, a sample story. It was back from the 1980s. Some in America, uh, a fire escape on a council property collapsed during a fire, and um, people who tried to use it fell off and died. Mm -hmm. And the question was, do you publish the pictures and do you publish the story? And I would say probably more than 50 percent of the journalists in this class said, "Wouldn't it be better if we just told the local council that there was a problem?" Um, and I thought, well, yeah, that, that's that's basically the client relationship that most journalists have with the state these days, which is that, well, if there's a problem with the state, we as journalists are probably friends with the state. So we'll go and tell them about the problem. Right. We won't report on it. Right. It's it's madness, but it does explain quite a lot of why coverage goes wrong. And the language of harm and dangerous opinions is what's bleeding into even minor YouTube content creators and coverers like Organized Chaos. Um, harm is bad we define what harm is and so we get to say what is allowed in terms of opinion and what isn't um, mm -hmm. yeah we, we especially for you over for there because the bbc is like a way larger than you know no one really cares about npr over in, in u.s land but mm -hmm. but you proto-americans gotta shake off the shackles <laughs> gain your freedom. Well, we're learning from the best so yeah true and based uh, speaking of the best, our surrogate father, J Mac, for another fifty dollars. Thank you so much, J Mac. Definitely not money laundering uh, for Steve Bannon. Says Adam, the game released in the United States with the tagline "This game stinks," and it had a bunch of smelly scratch and sniff coupled uh, stickers coupled with it with the strategy guide. Buying the game with the box manual strategy guide and the stickers goes for a ton of money. That's awesome. That's a great marketing ploy. I actually, it's God, funny. I knew someone. Sniff. I actually knew someone who had those. Uh, I remember that they had the scratch and sniffs that came in the game. We should do a scratch and sniff. Well, we should do. We could do yeah. bubble gum and banana, and oh, just God. pay for one scratch and sniff. Oh, it's disgusting. What's what's the best? What's the best flavor of freezy pop in platoon? You're gonna have to tell me what a freezy pop is. Uh, I don't know. Maybe do you not do you heathens not have them up in uh, Proto America? <laughs> it's like a it's like a little plastic tube, and it's got a colored ice, a flavored colored ice inside of it that oh, you put in the freezer. I think we do have those. I don't know what we call them. Mm -hmm. Um, Some, they're called best. ICs, maybe or something. Like, I mean, we have like ice lollies, but they're not quite the same thing. <laughs> ice lollies. Um, oh shit. That was a, wait, I gotta look at this. It's unironically lolly. what they are called. If they're on a stick, they are ice lollies. Oh, that's just like every best... popsicle you guys call them ice lollies. Yeah, no, you call them popsicles. Yeah, right. it's, yeah, we call them ice lollies, or at least we used to. I don't know if we still do. Ice best lollies. flavor, I don't know. It depends because, like, if they're on a stick, you can do so much more stuff with them. It's not an that a stick. applies it's to, to many tube, other things. You know. Yeah, plastic tube. I don't know. I'm gonna be boring and say like strawberry or something. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. It says they have Mister Freezes and. and... I think I think we do have Mr. Freezes. Okay. Yeah. Strawberry. All right. Better than bubble gum, I guess. You have snow cones, right? Um. No. No. No what's snow a, cones. What's a snow cone? Is that like ice cream? It's like uh, you, you get a little, you get like a little uh, upside down triangle that's paper, and it's just this kind of the same thing. It's just all this flavored ice. Oh no no we do have those but I don't think we call them snow cones but I don't them? know what we I don't know what we do call them I think they all come under the lolly subcategory well, That can't be a lolly everything there's, can't be a lolly There's no stick it's a most, it's like most a things are lollies Is it most called shaved are ice in this country Shaved ice? ice no 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 none of those I'm sure they're hmm. some kind of lolly or, or we know them by their brand name. So like there's Calippo, which is basically that, but it is a specific oh, okay. brand. It's like we call all Hoovers Hoovers, even though most of them are Dysons. So <laughs> like uh, you mean the vacuum cleaner? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we call them all Hoovers, but Hoover hasn't really been a big thing for about 50 like, yeah, years. Yeah, I get people call like Windex for everything over here. So I got you. I don't even know what Windex is, but it, oh, I'll take a word for that. <laughs> it's, a, it's like the little the spray you clean windows with. I think window we just call cleaner. that wind, window spray. But, um... yeah, window. <laughs> okay, there you go. Ice law. I'm going to call it shaved lollies. That's what we call it. Shaved, shaved lollies. Oh, no. That's, that feel like the connotation of that is very... That's so bad. You're going to get a grooming charge for the, if you start I, don't you, What's your favorite flavor of shaved lolly? <laughs> you're going to get... 
You're definitely going to get accused of grooming Ooh. for that one. Uh -huh. I, I think the the act of shaving the lolly is called a bris as well, but that, that might be something oh, else. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, Yoko Automata for $5 says, Adam should play Disco Elysium. It's an RPG where you can role play as a communist, a fascist, an ultra liberal, or a moralist centrist. Oh, man, that sounds awesome. So I'm going to play some played games. Disco. As soon as I get the comic done, I'm going to rest for like a month and just play video games. Like a games year. And, yeah. Drink Newcastle. Just chill. <laughs> Look, I made uh, some art, Sitch. I did I've seen it. What is happening on screen here exactly? This is my art now. Are you are you trying to assassinate Platoon? Are you saluting him? Because <laughs> he has a military name? <laughs> like, what's Sorry, happening? Platoon. I didn't realize. <laughs> I'm being Looks shot like from 15 different directions. Here, it's look, like... I'll I'll turn him around. That's that's very rude. Here, sorry about that. <laughs> no, because then, then then they'll be shooting at chat. That's even worse. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm used to it. I have a YouTube comment section. I'm used to being oh, fired. Oh, okay, okay. The there you go. Based, based. Uh, Stuck for five dollars says, "I just hope they come out with an openly Marxist, Marxian collectivist superhero named We Hulk." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, JD Bachant for $5 says, I respect you so much, Sitch, for not playing the, quote, I'm Jewish card during debate as a fellow Jew. I approve. Thank you. You I did it. play it. What are you talking about? I played it once only to explain the Gina Carano situation. So I should have not played it. I should have said, I don't think she said anything anti-Semitic. And then I could have sprung it on them like a Yu-Gi-Oh trap card. Uh, Yoko Amada. Thank you so much, Yoko Otto Amada, for joining the Free Will Seekers. Fast and Bulbous for five dollars says, "What did the Buddhist say to the hot dog vendor? Make me one. Make with me everything. one with everything. Oh, there you go. One. Damn it! Not fast enough. Doesn't it go on when he says, um, can I have my change?' And the vendor says, "Change comes from within.' I think that's. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, Bad faith, Gary. I like that. <laughs> Bad faith, Gary, for five dollars says, quote, what's wrong with being sexy?'" <laughs> yeah, I agree. There what's wrong with that? Yeah. You think it's okay to be sexist? Yeah, what's wrong with being sexy? Good point. Uh, Rico Zoro for $5 says, Sitch, you have the greatest impersonation of George W. Jr. doing the most horrific impression of Hank Hill. Well, thank you very much, Rico Zoro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fondu, I'm not even going to try. Fondu for $5 says, it's like every Hispanic parent calling every game Nintendo... Or every cereal cornflakes. There you go. I have I have experienced that. I've experienced that not just from Hispanic parents. I've, like very old people. Like my grandparents would call everything Nintendo or, or something. Or actually my grandma, she would call every video game Yoshi for some reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's like, are you playing Yoshi? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I mean, it's God of War, but also it's kind of Yoshi. It's kind of like Yoshi if you think about it uh let's see and that's it we're done that's everything we're done. Oh my that's goodness. everything so uh thank you for coming on platoon it was great talking to you we'll have to have you on again thank you for having me anytime you like of course cool what are you uh, doing on sunday <laughs> <laughs> he has his own stream oh yeah he said he How did dare. oh dare. no no I stream, I stream with a friend but i, I can ditch my friend it's all good Oh, <laughs> I mean, based, based, very lordly. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh wait, Demon Bunny for seven months says, "Fun fact: the word cock comes from the word cockerel, which mean which means to refer to male birds, typically domesticated, except geese, which are referred to as ganders, and turkeys, which are referred to as toms." Well, there you go. Anyways. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your incredibly generous donation. Uh, thank you, Organized Chaos and Actual Fandom, for coming on. It's an interesting conversation. And uh, thank you, Metalworks41190, for $2 saying, Adam, looking like the Unabomber, I see you. And you, you who made it to the end of the stream, you are the true heroes. Hope you all had a happy Valentine's Day. What's a better way to spend than listening to your favorite sexy boys, Sitch and Adam? And we'll see you all on Sunday. Bye bye. There you go. Awesome.